is, right? This is what we're doing, brother. Crazy smokes. Yeah, these snowballs and pizza. Opening soon, and mama tried. Good be hoping he's winning. Should be this is your boy N A O N A A. What up? It's DJ E F N. This is Entertainment Crazy Raw Radio. Drink chance with the fucking yappy hour. Make, Make some noise! And when me and E F N started this show, we started and we said we want to give people, you know, they flowers that is season that is legends. And when we talk about legends, we talk about real people who create, who paint, paved the way for both of us to be here. These dudes have toured all over the world. They toured like wrestlers. Mm. I feel like they was the WWE. These guys has transitioned, has stayed who they are, but crossed over it, but stayed who they are. The first people to light up in anywhere on stage, especially Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Holy moly guacamole. I had to rewatch that. I watched the documentary. These guys are legends of legends. They paved the way. If you are Latino, if you are a smoke man, if you are a person who loves music, if you're a person who loves raving, all this, that, all that, that shit is just all combined together for the most selling Latino group of all times. I seen it in the documentary. I had to Google it myself. <laughs> In case you don't know who the fuck we talking about, we talking about our homies, our family. Motherfucking Safe is here! Now, one thing watching the documentary is one of the first things I, I noticed is it was Cypress Ave. Yeah. It's not Cypress Hill. Right. So, why did y'all name it Cypress Hills if, if it was all Cypress Ave? Okay, so like. Before we really got on, we were called DVX, right? Wow. Devastating vocal excellence. As corny as it might be, that's <laughs> right. what it was. But right. when we got on, mm -hmm. we had to change our name to something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Muggs was constantly bringing East Coast music over to, to Send Dog and myself. And one of, the, one, of those, uh, one of those albums was Wild Style. It was the mm -hmm. soundtrack for the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in one of those joints... Um, Ram LZ references Cypress Hill. Mm. He lived, Sendog lived on Cypress Ave, so we thought Cypress Hill. And, but there is a hill. Mm. Yeah, no, we don't have no. a hill. No, but I'm saying there, no, there's a street. There's <laughs> right. another street down. I lived on Dearborn. Yeah. Ave. Yeah. Okay. Really? Did That's you, right. Did, <laughs> you, did, you, did you ever see Lollipop Lane, the, the preschool? Yeah. <laughs> I went to that school. Oh, no, yeah, no yeah. shit. Goddamn, That's like, crazy. Like, okay. 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 So, yeah, you know, that just seemed like the natural way to go. So that's why a lot of people thought we were from the East Coast in the beginning right, because right. of that little flip right there, right. you know. Otherwise, right. we would have been called Cypress Avenue or some other shit. It but, fits. It fits. I, yeah. I, I was, when I looked, I said, damn, it's Cypress Ave. I said, how do they get Cypress mm. Hill? So it, it, it never dawned on me. Yeah. But, Muggs, let's go straight to you. These guys come in the dressing room. They tell you not to stop smoking because you were smoking. No, I was rolling At up. Saturday Night Live. I was I'm sorry. Rolling. You were rolling like yeah, a motherfucker. But also, <laughs> but also didn't see the documentary. It, it, it was rehearsal. Okay. And I was rolling up a rehearsal. Okay. Just rolling up in the This is not the day before. This is the day this of. This is the day of. Okay. You know, okay. earlier. Okay. And I was like, don't smoke. Okay. I ain't going to smoke. But were you smoking? Not yet. Okay. So they just smelled it on you and they, that was like... Well, they knew we were, were infamous for that shit. They knew something was going to happen because we, we'd be in Sony, Columbia, smoking. <laughs> Nobody could smoke in Columbia Records but right. us. Right. Donny Ano would be like, that's Cypress Hill, leave him alone. Wherever we went, we was, we was blazing, getting kicked mm -hmm. out of hotels, everything. Right. So I'm just rolling up and, you know... They was like, don't smoke, don't smoke, don't smoke. Was like, in the right. dressing room. They're in the dressing room. They yeah. ain't even okay. stage yet. Right. And um, they said, don't light up on stage. Nice. All right, cool. 
after a while, I was like, man, fuck them. You know what I mean? Because you, we, we're young and aggressive. We just really didn't give a fuck. We're trying to figure this whole music shit out and be fucking courteous, you know what I mean? And be nice and try to fit in and act right. But still, we're young and still aggressive. And we're like, man, man, fuck these motherfuckers. I'm going to light up. All right. And what's Saturday Night Live in New York at this time? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's always Yeah, it's always, yeah. Yeah, it's always, yeah. It always you, is. I'm just saying. Because you know what's crazy now? New York passed the bill where you could actually, like, I swear to God, the last six months that I've been going back home, I've been smoking right in front of the police. Yeah. It's the weirdest fucking yeah. feeling in the world. <laughs> that's why they should have us back now. That's, that's, oh, that's my point. That's my point. That's my point. That's my You know what the original plan was to that, uh -huh. you know, but because they kept antagonizing him with right. not smoking, we were gonna, like, we had been doing shows at that time where we were destroying our set at the like end some of, rock and roll of our shit. show, like some yeah, rock and roll shit. Smashing the turntables, okay. all that the shit. turntables, uh -huh. burning bobos, congas on fire, <laughs> like, this is how Cypress Hill ends a show, uh -huh. right. right? And we were ending tours like that, and then we started doing it every show. We bought these shitty turntables, mugs would unplug them, I'd swap them out at the end, and we'd fucking smash the set. So the plan was to do this on Saturday Night Live, smoke at the end. But they kept fucking with him, and he said, fuck it. He went So, so did you tell the group, the or rip. you just did this on your own? No, I just did it. I he knew, went off I, the I rip. Knew <laughs> we had to do it at the beginning because um, right. I knew they might cut the TV off. Right. So we right. didn't want to do it the first song. Oh, this is live. It this was live. The second oh, song. Oh, I, you know, I know okay. Rage Against the Machine was on there, and they was talking right. they was going to do something, and they cut them off before their second song. So I was like, we got to mm. do it at the second song so they don't cut us off live. Right. Mm. So when I lit up, they so said, everybody knew then already that you was gonna do that. that pretty the much, plan, yeah. The plan was, the plan was we, were, we all had joints ready, so that when we wrecked the set, we were gonna stand over the aftermath of it right. and make that statement. But they kept fucking with them. Right. You know what I mean? And I, I could relate to that because you know we we come from that punk rock state of mind where mm. like if you tell us not to, we're going to. Right. right. And fuck now, fuck the plan. I'm gonna really show you that we're going to. And he did it off the rip. And, right. and you know what? For as much shit as we got for it and we got banned, is one of the most reran fucking episodes. Mm. And they don't cut his part out. And the one That's thing about it, you didn't pass. You, just, well. kept, you yeah. just kept the blunt. Just kept smoking. <laughs> you didn't pass for nobody. I was looking like, motherfuckers is he just pass? calling in, the phone just ringing, going off <laughs> yeah. the hook. We was like, fuck but it. But I think that adds to our fucking myth, you know, right. in, in our legend, I think, you know, that we would do some shit like that. You know, and, and that he would take that risk right there. And, uh, you know, it, it, it added to our story, man, in a, right. in, a, in a cool way as opposed to a fucking L we took. No, we fucking got a W off that. Right. Yeah, because at that time, and it says it in the documentary, were you guys actually the first people to light up on stage? I don't know if it's a hip-hop act. As, as, a, as, reggae as, artist, probably. Probably. I, as yeah, hip-hop as, as a hip-hop act, most likely. Right. Yeah, you know, because... Obviously, people were making references as we were, and, uh -huh. and we were speaking to it, you know, from the rip. But mm -hmm. I don't remember what was the first show, but someone threw a fucking joint on stage because that would happen to us. We'd get joints rained down. One day I picked uh -huh. one up uh -huh. and I lit it up, and people went fucking crazy for it because uh -huh. they hadn't seen someone light up on stage. So I started doing the shit everywhere uh -huh. I, it, with my own weed, though, because like. Yeah, because you're going to take a random. <laughs> That time right. hearing records, everybody was talking about don't smoke, like don't smoke. Right. I don't smoke weed because right. right. it gives yeah. a brother brain damage, well, and brain what, what damage on the mic said? doesn't matter. What did Dr. Dre say? It said, yeah, it was it was off expression. I don't smoke weed. It gives a brother brain damage. I saw that in the documentary. I was like, what? But I mean, he didn't come over with chronic after that. Yeah. Holy shit. But yeah, you know, because so, ma so many. By yeah, uh, I mean, so many people had the wrong information for so many years, right. and we fucking actually learned it and were like providing it, you know, and uh, it, it flipped people. It, it made people have a different outlook. Right. And I think that's why it went from that to now the chronic. Like, right. oh shit. Right. Maybe these dudes are onto something. Right. So I think we opened people's minds on that shit just because we were so blatantly up front with it. Because it was who we were. It was nothing planned. Right. We, you know, like, we got to be this because there's nothing there in, in that lane. This right. is just who we were. We smoked a lot of weed. Right. We loved to do music, and we didn't give a fuck. All right, let's make some noise for that, goddamn. <laughs> now, you used to be down with House of Pain. Oh, me? No, the yeah, Beastie, no, the Beastie no, no, Boys. Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys. Yeah. Boys. Yeah. Boys. That's where I first met Cypress. This was 92. Okay. They opened it up for the Check Your Head tour. Right. And uh, I was playing with them. And then uh, they came on the last couple of weeks on the tour. Right. And then uh, I first met Sen. Right. And then uh, before you know it, I started hanging out on their bus 
more than I was with the Beastie Boys. Right. So, you know, uh, they had the better weed. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, it, it just all came together like that. And then before right. you know it, you know, uh, they, they asked me to do the Soul Assassin tour in 93. And that was mm. with Funk Dubious, House of Pain, mm. Hooligans, you know. Mm. And it uh, it all started from there. Wow. That's the beat that's hat you got on? Yes, yeah. yes sir. That's, 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 that's the cycle mess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> When we went on that Beastie Boy tour, we was making 10, 20,000 a night. The Beastie Boys was like, you want to open up? We'll give you 500 a night. We looked at each other. We was like, fuck it. Let's go steal all their fans. We'll sell more records. Mm. We'll get Our publishing checks will get bigger. Let's go. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because your bride is the audience. It, exactly. You know, and, and, and salute to them for taking the chance and bringing us on because, I mean, you know, they, they had put us on a show with them in New York. Remember that? At the Octagon mm-hmm. Club or something? Right. And, uh, the building. That, it was the building. It was the building. That's yeah, right. It was the first album. Right. Right. Like, yeah. The first yeah. seminar time at the building. Yeah. Right. We're, we're, we're still, like, up and coming, but they're, we're on the bubble at this point, and the Beasties or someone in their camp says, we should have Cypress Hill open for you guys, blah, blah, blah. So we, right. we go, and this is the first time now, because this was before Lollapalooza and all that shit, right. we go and do this. And now people are moshing and stage diving and doing all that crazy shit to our music in the Beastie Bo- at the Beastie Boys show. And I think that's kind of, they saw that and that opened it up for us to open up for them on the Check Your Head tour, which Because I think to that. you guys kind of like invented like, like rappers other than Beastie Boys, rappers, you know, dominating these festivals. Right. Because back then, festivals was like, it, it was, it was just, the rock it was just right. like rock groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. rare for yeah. I think we, yeah. was, we was the first hip hop group to um, headline Reading, big wow. festival in, in England. Wow. Yeah, wow. that's one of their big historical. 150,000. Wow. It's mixed genre, you know, wow. and for hip hop to headline it, that was wow. big at the time. And just turntables, right? right? It wasn't You didn't have the band yet. Yeah, yeah right. no. Right, just turntables. Right. Dope. That's crazy. Right, no. That's crazy. Now, Muggs, you was born in Queens? I ain't gonna Queens, lie. Queens, yeah. When I watched the documentary, I claimed you immediately. I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not know that. Jamaica Hospital um, wow. between Jackson Heights and Flushing, where my wow. grandparents and my aunt lived there, and wow. then moved to L.A., you know, like seventh, eighth grade. Wow. So how, 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 how was that coaching shot? Because Fucking weird. <laughs> weird as fuck, you okay. know what I mean? For me, could be being able to jump on a bus or a train and, and, and move and... and just being around culture in New York to going to LA and being like just stuck. Wow. Just wow. stuck. And it was slow. And it and, was. And you said from um, what, what part of Queens you just said? Jackson Heights. Oh, Jackson Heights. Oh, okay, damn, damn. That's really, that's really Colombian. That's yeah, the Colombian area. Uh, yeah, and so you go from there to. to play, I, I moved to Bell Gardens. Okay. And it, was, it was pretty much. That's East Los like Angeles? Southeast Los Angeles. South, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, it's like. Um, 99% Mexicans. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. this is a little bit different from Because <laughs> <laughs> in like New York it. at the time, there was no Mexicans yeah, at that time. There right? was no Mexican shit. Only Puerto Ricans. Yeah. Uh, Caribbean, so, more Caribbean, yeah man, Caribbean. Any chance I can get back. So Christmas vacation, I get on the Greyhound and go home. Go back right. to New York. Right. Summer vacation, get on the Greyhound, three days, $99. Right. Go back to New York for the summer. Wow. Every time, just go back. But wow. then, you know, just bringing that culture back. Start bringing mm. the culture back. Bringing the pro heads back and the Lee jeans and the Latigras right. and the do-rags. And then mm. I start bringing, you know, when I met the homies here, like, right. start bringing the records back. Wow. The Rock Kim when he was on Zankia Records and the Bridge, Kim Chi Shan Records. Right. And we was like, what's this shit? Oh, KRS-One yeah. right. Records. I bring yeah. all this shits back. And the records wasn't in L.A. yet. Wow. Nobody had him yet. So wow. we, we There's was no here. internet. Yeah. yeah. We were yeah. ahead. Was man. Man. Yeah. 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 Because of that, yeah. so we were so ahead of the game. So we, we, right. we, we, we had a little a little advantage, you know, wow. as far as I the culture was. Like you know what I mean? And then right. being Sam would fly back to New York with me. His his dad worked for Delta Airlines, so they'd get free mm. flights. Oh. So they'd fly back to New York. They'd stay with me in Queens, and we'd go yeah. hang out, drive down to Philly with Clark Kent. Oh, hang out with Clark. Let's Queens. Go to Crown Heights. You know what I mean? That's all about that. We in the story, baby. We in the story. Yeah, that's that's it. I didn't. I I I maybe I knew him and I forgot. Metal Man Ace is your brother. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. my. Was my, he a part of the group at one point? No, no, no? Not, not, at all? not of this band. Not of this band. Called DVX. Uh, DVX. Yeah. Yeah. The DVX like, thing. Like ten yes. of them. Yeah. Okay. okay. But he had gotten signed before we got on. So you know he had, when Mentirosa and all that came right, out. Right. So he popped off his own thing, and you know, said Mugs and I popped off Cypress Hill. Yeah. Yeah, that's my younger brother, and wow. you know he, he he did his thing, you know he, and uh, had success, and kind of more or less showed us that it was attainable to us as well, right. type of shit, right. and uh, and along the way we learned from you know what he didn't do right or what he did right or whatever, right. and you know we we came up behind that, but 
originally when I first started my first band, I was in like a my first hip hop group. I was like in high school still, and I and Melo was my rhyme partner, and, and uh, it, it was all behind because I saw Run DMC on Soul Train. Wow. You know right. what I mean? And I was like, these are the dudes. We got to be like these guys, you right. know. So we started doing our own thing with uh, DJ Julio G. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And um, and then it led that led to you know. Always somebody in the mix doing something together or apart, or but it was always this crew right here. Right. It, it could have been a combination of me, him, and him, or him, him, or whatever. But right. there was always something in the works. There was never anything, any point where like we were not like actively trying to record or do something. You know what I mean? Right. And it all started from from that point. And that was like a when I first started. It was like 1983. You know what I mean? Mm. I was I was still in high school at that point. That was I was doing my thing. You know, I was just trying to. I knew that there was something there. You get me? Right, you know right, what I'm saying? So that's right. what we that's what we always that's what we always strive for on the block. Right. Well, let me ask y'all all a question real quick because y'all first video was shot in New York, right? No, it wasn't. What, what, what uh, was what was the Funky Phil one, which is the first one, right, was shot the... at downtown LA. Okay. Looked like New York because okay. we did it in an alley that. Sort of look like it could be East okay. Coastish, right? Uh-huh. Um, Kill a Man, which is the second video, that was New York. Okay. That was like in, Kill a man and, hand on the and Hand on the Pump. Okay, okay. Um, Kill a Man, we we went in different locations. We were up in Harlem. We yeah. were on uh, Times Square over there by Astor Astor's place, mm-hmm. and one other spot I can't remember. And then um, Hand on the Pump was Red Hook Brooklyn. Right. So right. I, that's why I, uh, still. When th- it was Red Hook Brooklyn. Yes, yeah, when yeah. it was Red Hook Brooklyn. And, right. and that's another reason right. that people thought we were from. For sure. Yeah, because that, that, that was my next <laughs> question. You had Q-Tip in there, but then Cube yeah. was in there. That was dope. Yeah, Cube yeah. showed up yeah. random. That's that's Cube yeah. was random. And they told me Prodigy and Havoc just got out of school. And they was there. Oh, Young as fuck. You, wow. The UMCs wait, Q-tip were there. And Ice Cube were both random or all? They were all random. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So we didn't know like, any of these dudes, oh, okay. right? Like, no personal relationships no at all. Pers- we had never met Cube. We only knew him. Were y'all him. the same label or something? Nah. nah. So how do we... They, but he knew y'all from LA, though, right? So, he knew that okay, part, at least. So okay, so let's backtrack. Okay. Right. EPMD yeah, let's was go playing back our that. shit yeah. for everybody, okay. Ice Cube being one of them. So he hears about us and, and you know, he becomes a fan according to the story, right? right? And he comes to New York for some promo shit or something he was doing in New York. He heard we were doing a video over, it asked, or by, you know, the Cube, where is that at? Uh-huh. That's Astor's place, right? The Cube that's in- Yeah, Astor's place, downtown. Yeah, uh-huh. downtown. He hears we're there and he comes down, right? Say, um, Q-Tip, he just happened to get off the train and he was walking through, saw it, Came he stayed through. there. UMCs heard about it. They came through, and uh, Tim Dog was the only one I think that was yeah. He was on planned by Sony. They knew we were doing the video, so and they Tim sent Dog him. Tim Dog from New York. Yeah, yeah Tim okay. Dog from New York. So okay. everybody else was just Thank random. You. Wow. Because we didn't know, we didn't have a relationship with any, with any of these guys yet. You know, we, okay. we we were fans of them. You know what I'm saying? But we didn't know them, and they came out and supported. And that that built like the relationship with Q-Tip and Ice Cube and you know and and even the UMCs for a minute. I mean those those were our boys. Whenever we come to the to the East Coast, they was and brand Nubians, but they weren't in the video. But right. I'm just saying, right. the, like our shit was out. out with, right. Our shit was out for six months before we started popping. Yeah, that's but crazy. But everybody knew we was like the underground heroes. Right. But but it took six months before everything just came and together. And it was just word of mouth. It wasn't like word yeah. of mouth. New yeah. York. We was popping in New York. Stretching right. Barbita was playing us. See, you know see, what I mean? This is a beautiful. Let me let me cut you off for one second. This is a beautiful thing because me and EFA we always had this debate. Back then, how New York didn't show love, but this is this is the opposite, <laughs> the opposite. exception of the rule. Yeah. At that right. exception of the rule right, right. now, because we're West Coast, right? Right. And, they, and, and y'all wasn't no way. Y'all got to say it. We did. And that video they didn't know they completely they confused people even more. It's like Cuban there, but Cuban's right. in there. And they was, and like, they was like, New York, in New York. There's a couple of us. Here's the thing, right? You know, as a hip hop group goes from the West Coast, we came unorthodox. People right. expected us to sound like gangster rap, and we sounded nothing like it was gangster. Mm-hmm. But it was not that in that genre. It was mm-hmm. more looked at as hip hop, and because of that East Coast flavor that Muggs brought to the table mm-hmm. in terms of the production, and Send Dog, and I, you know, doing a, a, a hybrid New York slash fucking LA slang on it, no mm-hmm. one could really 
tell, you know what I mean? So we got away with with a good one on motherfuckers. But again, you know, because he was showing us all this music that was coming out that we didn't get on the radio back home. Mm. We were ahead of the game. And so that that all played a part in all that shit. But the shit. East Coast was showing love. Mad yeah. love. Not just New York, because when you get New York, you get the whole, yeah. you get that Philly, yeah. Stretch and Connecticut. Bobito were the yeah. first motherfuckers yeah. to yeah. 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 And then once we shot the Killer Man video, we started getting on MTV Raps like two, three times a week. And you know, that shit was like, the shit, only shit right, to watch, right. you know what I mean? Then the box, and then shit just started taking off. You know you know, what's, you know what's crazy about the Stretch and Bobito shit, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it speaks to this in their documentary. We went up there, and, uh, you know, this is, no one knew us yet. This was like a total promo mm -hmm. run. And they asked us to do a freestyle, and my freestyle was crap, you know? Right. I wasn't ready for right. it. Right. My mind wasn't there, and I was slightly intimidated because I'm in the mecca of hip-hop, right. you know, in New York. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a West Coast kid. Right. Like, I got confidence, but in that moment, I didn't do my best right. work, right? Uh -huh. And so motherfuckers was, like, not feeling us that day. But they said a week later when that Killer Man shit popped, all the motherfuckers that was hating on us start calling in for the fucking record. Right. And that shit sort of, you know, started the kill a man bubble right there. Do you think that, that some of those mysteries that people didn't really know where y'all were from, what, what the background was kind of helped in a way? 100%. 100%. I, I like that. I, I miss the mystery of things because you, you, your mind, when you're creative, you start making up these own things in your head that are bigger right. than life. You know what I'm saying? No, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Even as a young Dude, looking at it, the way I dress, I can still feel that Los Angeles. Although, like, you know, it was like it looked like a New York thing. I could just feel that Los Angeles. It's just like sin shirt. Like you just, you just know. Like I can, I can wear that same shirt. And you wear it in the East <laughs> Coast. But that's you. Like, that's like, 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 you, you know what I'm saying? Not the rest of the country. Maybe you in New York automatically. But like even me, yeah, I'm you're in right. Miami. You're right. And I'm and and you know, first I get Cypress Hill, and it's like, man, I think it's they saying LA stuff. Right. And you know, and then then the Latino aspect too. Like I'm Cuban, right. and at first I just think y'all are just Mexican coming out of LA. I was like, man, this dope group. I right. and then I hear Tres Equis. Hold up, I hear Cuban slang in this shit because right. I didn't even connect Mellow yet to right. you guys. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm like, holy shit, they Cuban too, right. and from Southgate. Oh, my head just blew the fuck up right, right. there. It, it was like what Muggs, Muggs always um, said. Tell this man, you know, better to be mysterious. Because, you know, it makes people want to know you more mm. and, and do the homework on you. It, it, it's, there's that mystery buildup and shit. And back then, that was awesome, you know? It, it, it helped because we didn't show our faces on covers. And we even stopped going to clubs for a minute to be not so accessible to, to be that mystery and shit. Right. And uh, it, made, it made motherfuckers want you more rather than being out all the fucking time and being super accessible and the motherfuckers getting to know your game and how you roll and all that shit and you know sort of at that time that sort of played you out so you know for us it was all about mystery and we saw what the rock and metal heads would do on on their album covers and right. they rarely showed their faces it's always some obscure shit and we that we love that shit right? right so that that became our visuals for you know our album covers which I think is a whole other element that in hip hop I don't think was as strong like the way the imagery, the logo, like all that just made it so much more dope. Well, the record labels wanted to show the faces of the faces they're marketing. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Here, let me show you these fresh fucking faces. This we want you to buy these guys, right? And you know we just didn't do that. We were like we see something else, and that was thanks to Mugs. Yeah, it's just a like Mugs by, by the vibe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. by, by the vibe. That's what we was about. Yeah, by the vibe, not by the faces. Like, a lot of people didn't know what the fuck, who the fuck. And you know, you dress you know? and you're on your cover, and then th that, that, that gear's played out two right, years later. Right, right. And you look at the cover, and the cover looks dated, you know right, what I mean? Right. Should, we, just, we just keep it timeless. And that logo just became iconic. Like, right. it's forever. So let me ask y'all, because, like, you know, we've seen Run DMC and we've seen the Beastie Boys, right? But it was like y'all music, like, like even let's just, just like, Run DMC doesn't have a record called Ha Ha Can Just Kill It Man. Right. Yeah, that's like, that was different, especially. That's hella different. We can yeah. say it now like it's yeah. nothing, but it yeah, was like, different when it came. Like, like, how did y'all have a balance having a record called like Ha Ha Can Just Kill It Man and still be on festivals and on these stages? Like, how the fuck? And no one's offended. Like, you guys are like, well, how can this kill a man? And the white, you, the white people's like, word up! It's crazy. Like, 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 it's crazy because the shit on the radio when we was making music was MC Hammer, Vanilla Ice, wow. Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Wow. And, NWA comes and we come and then when we come with Killer Man, all of a sudden that's on daytime radio right. and Dre's on daytime radio and Snoop's right. on daytime radio. Like for 
about those five years, shit just done flipped up like a motherfucker. Yeah, sometimes when we're playing the song, I think just that. What? Like, how the fuck? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's about killing I mean, a man. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> it's still, it's, it's, it's still just, mine. It's justified how you kill a man in these, these songs, right? Uh, okay. um, it, yeah, it's a trip. Right. You know, I didn't expect that to mm-hmm. be you know what what it became I don't think any of us did we knew we had something but we didn't know what what was gonna hit and you know thanks to the DJs salute to all the DJs that flipped that record and and, and hit that that song because it was a double A side Mm -hmm. Funky Phil one and how I could just kill a man but at the time because we're a you know group that talks about weed and it's hip hop and we're talking about some violent shit they chose they chose to push as in Sony chose to push um Funky Phil one because they figured that was more marketable and mm. it was cool but it wasn't really resonating that's why that first six months no one knew who the fuck we were mm. and then DJs flipped that record and to add on to that you had the Juice soundtrack right that you know it that's makes all. it makes yeah, the what's cut. the time oh, frame Chuck with D that first record? Heard y'all all, yeah right? Chuck D uh, Chuck D soundtrack. Chuck D and the Bomb Squad were doing the score and the music for that they heard how oh. oh, I could just kill a man and they were like that's got to be the main song Motherfucking well, positive shit. ass Chuck D picks <laughs> I'm a bitch killer man I needed to know this story I needed to know this story That's Chuck D That's okay Bye. You know what I mean So like So the combination of the DJs flipping that song and the momentum that was getting on the mix shows right. every day play it wasn't getting rotation play right. but it was getting mix show heavy mix show right. play and then the video starts hitting I mean fuck what was crazy is that we were on tour with Naughty by Nature and right. we hadn't made a video to Kill a Man yet or Hand on the Pump, but the song's starting to go, uh-huh. right? And this is just before, this is before Juice. This is okay. like when the mix shows uh, okay. start playing the shit. They pull us off the road to film those two videos. I think we were in Vir- Virginia or something like that. Wow. And Sony makes the call, pull them off the road. They got to come f- two, two days to film such and such and such and such, Kill a Man and Hand on the Pump. So we knock it out, jump back on the road with Naughty and continue to fucking move. And then eventually this juice thing happens, propels the fucking song. This is like what, like 91, 92? 92. 90, 90, yeah. yeah. 92, yeah, 92, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Because we released in August. So it was, yeah, it was probably early 92, right? Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. Or no, that had to be 91. Like late 91, because it was OPP mm-hmm. that was the big song at that time. Mm. And we were we were opening for them at that time. Like, Tretch was always right. family with us, right. and they wanted us to come on and Google open it. for them. <laughs> Speaking about the Juice soundtrack, did, you, did each of y'all get to meet Pop? Oh, I yeah, knew Pop. Yeah, we knew yeah. Pop. Yeah. We knew Pop from Digital Underground. From Digital yeah. Underground. Yeah. They was our homies. So right. they would come through L.A., they'd call us, we'd roll right. up to the shows, yeah. kick away because, everybody. Because technically Digital Underground isn't from L.A., they're from, they're from California. California. They're from, from the Bay. They're from the Bay. Yeah. They're from yeah. up yeah. north. Yeah. 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 And we, we, we knew them through a guy named Jerry Davis who worked for ASCAP, who was wow. one of the guys that, he was like the first believer in us, I think. So wow. salute to fucking Jerry Davis. But he introduces us to Money B and, and the rest of the guys. So we become friends and like, like Mug said, we'd go to their shows and stuff yeah. like that. And so when we got on, now and then when we'd go up to the bay, you know, Pac would come hang out with us right. and smoke us out. Sometimes right. just to go have our back. I remember one time we were having a show in Berkeley somewhere. Uh-huh. He goes, y'all going to Berkeley? Yeah. All right, boom. He pulls out a big-ass hand cannon and a fucking ounce of some green Bay Area weed. And uh-huh. was like, we, I got your back. I'm like, Psh, all right, let's go. <laughs> Pac himself. Pac himself. Not his homies, himself. No, Pac. He didn't have a bunch of homies with him. He wasn't the Pac that he became. He was the underground. He was a backup dancer at the point. That's right. He was by himself. And he would come hang out with us, and and he was 1,000 about that shit. And, you know, we relate to that. We're like, hell yeah, let's go. (laughs) And uh, shit, I remember one show we did with, um, we were opening for. Third base. I think it was their last tour, their last big mm. tour before they sort of went away. Um, it was us, Tim Dog, and third base, and we were at the DNA Lounge where we filmed, eventually filmed um, Insane in the Brain. Years later, we film it there because it's mm. a historic place to us. Anyway, we're in this venue. Pac shows up, and uh, I remember this one dude getting dragged in a dressing room and beat up by these fools and throwing them right the fuck out. 
it was like real on some so, shit. So, so this, to, to to you guys, did anybody can uh, jump in on this one? Was Pac the same guy from Digital Underground on on, on Death Row, or that was two different individuals? Well, there's a long road before. Well, Death he Road's evolved. Yeah. He definitely yeah. evolved, and he, okay. you know, he he saw things maybe a little bit different, and obviously he was rolling with a cr- crazily different squad at mm-hmm. that point. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I hadn't talked to him in that time when he was rolling with that squad. You mm-hmm. know. Because, I mean, we were constantly gone. Yeah. I mean, the next time I seen him, he was in New York with, with, with the live squad, oh, stretching wow. them. Yeah, stretching them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's I crazy. mean, yeah. The, sometimes when we do the... the do you remember uh, when they would do the Jack the Rappers yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. all those sorts of uh, conventions yeah. and stuff? Impact conventions. We'd yeah. all hang out together then. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. it'd be Tretch, Pac, the Brand Nubians, Busta, um, Tribe, well, Q-Tips, sometimes Fife, you know, and we'd all be up just chilling, smoking blunts. Back when I smoked blunts, uh, all right, all right. and uh, you told you me know. you could roll a blunt with one hand. <laughs> I okay. used to be able to. I, okay. I, mean, I haven't <laughs> tried it in a long time. <laughs> just, when so, you're young. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask y'all. Switching the subject a little bit. Um, how you describe just now? Like you saying, Buster Tribe. Like the way y'all. The, the way it seems like it was. It was in, in this time. There was no East Coast. West Coast, not at all, no, man. Not for us, yo. Okay. Not for us, yo. I right. used to come out to clubs in New York before we were signed. Before right. Buster and them were signed, I'd be at the. I go to the, the Long Island Railroad to catch a train back. Right. They would be there. I, I, I had the Cypress Hill demos. They had the leaders of the New School demos. Right. Oh shit. Sure. Like early days like that. Right. So, so so let me ask y'all from the days going from there to this East Coast to West Coast shit. How, how, how did y'all feel at that time? And y'all it didn't super feel like, accepted. It didn't feel like a beef. I don't, like, I don't think like it was East Coast, beefing, West Coast. Right? Yeah. It was like yeah. th- right. them motherfuckers right yeah, there. We, there was ne- nobody else. Yeah, we never felt the heat of that. You like, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we, you know, we know that we 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 sprung off from the East Coast. If it wasn't right. for the East Coast accepting us first, right. um, we don't get on. It's like that right. old shit that right. they used to say, you know, if you can get on in the East Coast, you right. can get it on anywhere. If right. you can make it there, you can make it anywhere, right? right? right. And that was true for us right. because the West Coast accepted us after right. the East Coast did, because we were not a traditional West Coast group. They just right. weren't going to get it right. unless y'all did. Right. And so that's what happened for us there. Right. Now, that's real. That's real, because um, a lot of us grow up, and that's all they know is this East Coast, West Coast shit. But me just hearing you, you describe that era, it was just like I, was, I just I went to a, 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 a child Man, at that time. we'd be in New York. We'd be in a tunnel. You right. know, out of tunnel oh, yeah, was. Right. we yeah. just yeah. everybody yeah. just be was <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is, is that we kept rooted in, in New York. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, up until the pandemic, we were doing a, a show that we call Haunted Hill there mm. every October for yeah. like 20, how many years, Bobo? Like 22, yeah. 22 20, years. So 22 wow. out of the 30 years. And That's we just crazy. stopped at the pandemic. So we were constantly going back and feeding that mm. that core base that, that was our East Coast family there. You know what I'm saying? Right. So... The, you know, we never f- felt all that shit about the East Coast and West Coast beef. We thought it was ridiculous. It's it was like the media, the media. Yeah, it was that love. magazine print that said East Coast versus West yeah. Coast, right. but it wasn't the people. It only beefing. existed for certain groups that were actually right. beefing. It had nothing right. to do with coast. The only, you know, the only had it was was the proximity. These guys happen to be here. These guys right. happen to be over here. But right. it's got nothing to do with the rest. Right. right. Yeah. But that's, that's but true. but the media perpetuated something different. Yeah. And there's reasons for that, but that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, right? yeah, no, 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 that's crazy. No, but it was so dope to hear y'all speak like that because, um, you know, people forget that times. People forget the times that it, it, it was like, you know, because I remember I was on Def Jam at one point. This is after Biggie d- died. And I would land and they'd just be like, you, 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 it's security, you got to go, because they, they were just so on guard. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because of after uh, oh, what yeah. things happened, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You ever thought it was going to get this serious, though, like when, once they started beefing? Well, you know, when when you got cats that, that, you know, they may not be the ones that are, like, still living that shit, but they got homies around them, it's pro, it's bound to happen, right? right? If, if you got those kind of cats in your circle, because right. somebody's going to stand up for you, right. even when you don't need them to or don't right. want them to and... Don't expect them to, and then that's when shit happens. You can't bring that gangster shit into the music. We're trying right. to get out of right. this situation to get into a better place and inspire motherfuckers to do the right. same thing, right? right? Get out and do something better. And a, a lot of the times, you see motherfuckers. Well, since from 
about 96 or 97 and up, you see a change where it's like more motherfuckers are talking about doing fucked up shit and they're allowing this on the radio and mm -hmm. all this stuff where before they wouldn't allow us to talk right. and, and allow singles like this, you know? So now it's more about mindless shit, right. you know, and uh, less substance. You listen to today's music? Some of it. Yeah. There's some good there's some, shit out there. There's some cool shit. Yeah, there's some cool shit. Hell yeah. I, there's a lot of shit I fuck with. Because, you know, I, I spin too. I learned from DJ Muggs from way back in the day when he was taking those trips back back east. I'd get on his turntables when I'd be watching, you know, the crib. And so, like, I still fuck with records today. I, I still right. spin, so. so. So you gotta, you gotta be hip to what's going yeah, on. Yeah, so like. I'm not that hip. There's, there's some shit I appreciate. <laughs> I'm not that hip. Some of this shit, I'll be like, throw that shit out. Yeah, <laughs> some of it is dope. Like, you can't some take some all of, of it as much. Yeah, 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 think yeah. is, like, Muggs is fucking right. with a lot of new artists that right. are dope as fuck. Right. Yeah, and you stay fresh like that right. because you know what's out there, you know, and I, and I think that's what keeps us all still sharp to this day is that we listen to, to shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Like Muggs told me, and I always say this, you know, if you want to be the best, you got to listen to what the best is out there mm, no right. matter you know how you think you are mm. you know what I'm saying and right. so that you have to keep doing that as you evolve as an artist and you right. you progress so you know we stay up on game like that but there is a lot of garbage right. but there always has been there's a the, lot more artists in there's general there's always been as much yeah. but so we yeah. need the garbage it just makes us sound better right yeah, right. yeah you need the garbage <laughs> so you yeah. know what the good shit is mediocre well, could sound better now I mean though. even even, even yeah, in, in, in our early days in the 90s there was hip hop that was that shit Right. And then right. there was the shit we didn't listen to because it, right. it was slightly wasn't that shit. You know, Kid what I'm Flash. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's plenty of records. Right. I mean, but that that's always the cycle. Right. It, but it's all you know, subjective. It's what you like, right? So there there's some some young artists that I fucks with, and some that I definitely don't. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Well, let me let you know. Pick up to our people, at Cherry, Colorado. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's give these roses. Yeah, yeah, but yes. you know, our show is about Salute giving to the people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Salute Salute to the 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 our, show, our show is about giving people their flowers while they're alive. Giving people their flowers. So we wanted to give each and every one of y'all, yes, sir, y'all own flowers. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. Yes, sir. Where's the flower at? We got that flower. Bring the flower. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is work. tight. Now, you used to be able to roll a joint with one hand? Yeah, before we created the funky fill tips, yeah, with, with that <laughs> okay. tip, yeah, I could, I could roll it with one hand. Okay, a blunt or a joint? Both, because okay. I heard Willie Nelson could do it, so I would practice it. And I eventually got it. It's a bitch, man. Your, your cramp, your hand will cramp the fuck up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can we see it? Can we see it? We're not blocking nothing, right? Gonna roll too long. Gonna roll too long. Joint. What is what is your relationship with High Times? Well, you know, High Times was like. They, they were like, um, you know, they, they heard about this hip hop group that was championing cannabis. Right. And so they wanted us on the cover. And that sort of opened up the bridge between the cannabis community and hip hop right there. And then mm. after that, mm. you know, that, that, uh, that issue did so well. And we, we built a, a strong relationship with, mm. um, with High Times that mm. they had other hip hop groups. So we were mm. the first one there. Yeah, you had a first a lot of things. Yeah. Make some noise for that. Yeah. You had a first a lot of things. I ain't gonna lie. And we did parties with High Times at the Wetlands. Remember that spot? Mm. Like smashing, like off mm. the hook. Like this, I mean, it's a little club, but it was jam packed. Mm. And when we were doing shows uh, for High Times events, like old school High Times events, the small ones with Chef Ra and all those dudes, rest in peace. Um, man, they were fucking awesome shows, awesome parties at Wetlands packed like this mm. and motherfuckers just rocking to, to, to our hip hop set. Like it was just an experience. And that, the, the little things like that sort of built our relationship with High Times and they always lifted us up and they, mm. they found something 
in us, and then they started seeing something in like Red, right. and eventually Meth, right. and eventually Snoop, and, right. and you know the list goes on. The Wiz Khalifa, they start started opening up to hip hop because. Right. Who better to fucking champion cannabis? I mean, you know, we went a from the renegade culture, step a step t child uh, renegade genre, right? Right, that is non apologetic. That's the best platform for cannabis, right? Because right. no one else is doing this for this for this community right now. And so, you know, they embraced us, we embraced them, and I think hip hop did as well. And a lot of hip hop kids that were like just reading the source start fucking with. High Times Magazine now, and vice versa. Right. You know, the, the the alternative kids that listen to, to, you know, rock and different shit like that from the High Times, they start listening to hip-hop. And now you see a shift in a combination of hip-hop kids and alternative kids right. coming to shows and shit like that. You know, it, it, it was like a crazy bridge that it created, and it still exists today. It's, you mentioned Redman, and circling back to... So when you said that EPMD was putting people on to y'all, was that the the reason why Red chose to sample y'all? Could be. For time for some action? Was, oh, was no. It the our, our album was finished, and it was at Columbia Records, and it was circulating for six months before it came out. Mm -hmm. We was like, why the fuck's our record taking six months to come out? Right. You know what I mean? They was trying to set it up. You know, magazines was three months out back then mm -hmm. on all that shit, so they were yeah. setting it all up, but we didn't get it. So at that, that time, motherfuckers was hearing it. It was like an underground mixtape, but the Columbia artists had it. Right. So it was like promo only, and you'd walk into the office and you'd grab it off the desk. You know what I mean? Right. Like, what's this new? Let me get that. Like in the front desk. Like, well, you like, know, like when you go, meet, when you go meet with your A&R or yeah, whoever, yeah. it's on their desk. And wow. they're like, check out this new shit. You right. know what I mean? Wow. And then you end up grabbing this, the, the cassette from them. I think it was a red snippet tape, right? Yeah, it was a red tape. Yeah. Um, so let me ask. I'm searching through the internet. You know, searching everything about you after I watched the documentary. And I'm going to get into the documentary after this. But I see Onyx. <laughs> yeah. And I see Onyx uh, pop up and they go, well, if you want to do a versus, who would you want to do a versus against? And Onyx said, well, the only people we could do it against is Cypress Hill. Right. And at first I was like, nah. <laughs> but then I thought, I was like, maybe. And now I'm like, nah. And then I'm still like, maybe. How do you guys feel about Versus, and would you do Versus against Onyx? Well, Two bar we are doing it. Um, yeah. Yeah, we are doing it. Oh, I didn't know. Did, you, you said something today. No. Yeah. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real that's thing. That's legit. Oh, oh yeah, like, that is honest. Okay, it's, so it's legit. Okay. The, yeah, the way it went down, you know, because as rappers, we get asked this question since Versus started, right? Yes, of you course, get, you of get asked, right, of who course. would you go against or who do you think would be a good one, right? right. I get that, you mm -hmm. get that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Anyone in the business right. pretty much gets that, right? And so whenever they asked me, I thought, you know, it's either Wu Tang or, or Cypress, I mean, or uh, Ice Cube. It's what? the big, you know, it's a that would be fucking awesome, right? right. Um, but, you know, Fredro said something on Vlad TV about it before, okay. you know, I ever said my first shit mm. about any of the verses. Cause I, I, you know, I never saw us going against anybody, but I thought those two would, you know, either. So what you trying to say, you gonna smoke onyx? That's what you're trying to, that feels like <laughs> what you're saying. It feels like that's what you're saying. So, so, <laughs> so then, so, no, no, you're so like, then. You're like, Wu-Tang, I'm not worried, but well, well, uh, well, anybody so, else, that's what, that's what it feels like you're saying. Be no, right. no, I, be honest. listen, I gotta tell you that I am not worried about nobody. We, we, we will match up on anybody. <laughs> Anybody who will match up on them, no doubt. We, we have that kind of confidence. We chop okay. heads, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, we don't go for the tie, right. you know right. what I'm saying? Or the L. But, um, you know... I like this it, type of talk. That it, it, I guess it caught, you know, the ear of Triller, you know, mm -hmm. that he, he said that that would be a good matchup. And I think the, 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 the mindset is this, right? So with Cypress, you know that... We have a hip hop base, but we also have an alternative it's the base. Energy. Mm. So it's the energy. So when they it comes together, there's a lot of mosh pit, stage diving, and all mm. that shit, right? That happens, crowd surfing, mm. and they have this same type of energy, mm -hmm. right? So I think After I thought about it. Remember, I said yes. maybe guys. I thought about. It. I've been on tour with Onyx. It's, they they got that. Oh, they, yeah. They, they got that shit. They definitely bring the energy as right. as we do, and I think that's that's the um, mentality for the matchup. Right. You know what I mean? But uh, like I said, we don't come to be second. Mm. <laughs> but I think, you know, it's a win-win for the people because they're going to get a great show because right. I know they put on a great one. Right. 
You know what I'm right, saying? Yeah. And where would this? Where is this taking place at? At the Forum. In L.A. In L.A. LA. Home court of Wow. Damage. <laughs> Well, you know, oh, I, I, don't, I don't make the, I don't make the call. You I just go. go. It could have been in Madison Square Garden. Yeah. I'd show up the same way. No, but they live, they live in yeah, Cali for a long yeah, time. Yeah, they've been living there for a while. Yeah. And when is this? So the date is already set? May 14th. Okay, I'm off for drinking at that time. I'm going. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have to come and just and just see that. It's it's a crazy format to go have to go up against your homies and shit right, like right, that, you know, because right. those are our homies. We did plenty right. of shows with them, plenty right. of festivals. This is not like Three Six Mafia. And yeah, there's all there's, there's, dogs there's never been a, mics and shit. No, nah, there's yeah. never been a beef <laughs> there. No disrespect. No, nah, no, it's all love. I mean, you yeah. know, um, sh shit. Um, Sticky, Fredo, and I did. Uh, uh, a feature on ASAP Ferg's uh, joint, get the wow. fuck out my face or whatever. Wow. And so, yeah, I mean, we're mad cool. You know, right. this is for the sake of, like, let's give the fans a show. Before the record. Right. Wait, before the, before the record. Before, before the, the record. record. To win? Oh, we already know. <laughs> Stunned. I need you to say it, though. <laughs> Cypress for the win. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Holy shit! But the fans are gonna win more yeah. than more than anyone, cause I mean, I know they're gonna bring it, and we right. are definitely gonna bring it. Now, Sin, you and Flavor Flav had a best man battle, a hype man battle. Where was this at? And how <laughs> drunk was y'all? That footage looked like an ale. Yeah. Like, I was just I was, like, holy yeah. shit, where's Spiff Star? That should be a big <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's 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 in Australia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was in Australia, that's right. It was like in Australia and uh, somewhere in like Sydney or something. And uh, Flay was on a good one, and so was I. And we just, <laughs> we, just we just took over this nightclub and got on the mic and did our thing. And, uh. And then Flavor, the funny thing about it, he tried to emulate the same thing that we did the night before, mm -hmm. the next night on stage with Public Enemy, oh, he invited shit. me up there. Right. And I'm like, coño, bro, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I was fucked up last night. Like, I can't do that shit again right now. You know what I, mean? I you know? remember what I did. Yeah, but it was a good time, and uh, it was a legendary night, and that's when I, I got to know Flav. I already knew him, but that night I really, really got to know him, because... You know, when people are drunk and uh -huh. high and, you know, yeah. shit happens and shit like that. Uh -huh. And you see people's real true heart. Right. And that's Flav. You know he what I mean? He seems like a good dude. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he, he, his intention, I feel, is always right. Right. You know what I mean? He's, he's a down-ass homeboy. But it was a fun-ass night. Right. And weren't you there for that? I was right there. Yeah, he was right there <laughs> with me. You, 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 you wasn't doing it. Man, he was right there, man. <laughs> no, there was, yeah, there was no time. It was just like, you know, trading off raps and this and that and then... I don't know. It turned into some, turned into some other shit. And then we came back to rapping, and it was fun. He was doing the flavor dance. He was doing that. Then you was doing your dance. I mean, it yeah. was it was everything. Wow. The two iconic awesome. dances, popping legendary off at the night. same time. Wow. Wow. Legendary night. And I always looked up to Flav as as part of like, I, and I feel like a, a, a small part of me is comes from him. You know, mm. especially my early send dog right. when it was right. I was more of a hype man dude than right. than an actual rhymer. Right. You know right. what I mean? And and I used to get a lot of that style from him, you know, That's and dope. then put my own, you know, Southgate California on it and, oh, yeah. and combine the styles type of shit. Yeah, I mean we we had a steady diet of public enemy. We uh, loved yeah. that. You know, that they, they were one of our big influences for sure. You guys feel that um you're a part of influencing that that LA Underground that kind of came afterwards with Soul Assassins and bringing hooligans and and and, and even House of Pain, all the affiliates, you know, Funk Dubious, Psycho Realm, and then you know I feel like King T and, and Alcoholics and Liquid they 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 came after and like really solidified that my, that LA Underground. Do you do you feel do you take on that that you inspired that? I I believe we did because uh, you know again beforehand you know. Groups weren't getting signed unless they sounded like, you know, N.W.A. or Compton's Most Wanted or something right. like that. Mm. And we sort of changed the dynamic. Like, there's there's something else here. Right. And, you know, Muggs was a big part of that because the style of production he was giving ourselves in House of Pain and Funk Dubious and, and you know, the inspiration that had on other producers in L.A. Like, okay, we don't have to just do this. We can do hip-hop shit, style right. shit. And... I think that's where you see the influx of that style of production happening in Los Angeles, where now there's a balance of the gangster rap shit and like hip hop. Right. You know? 
Let's now let's talk about the gang culture for a second, right? We all know that that's a um, heavy part of Los Angeles, right? But yeah. at the time, all we heard was Crips and Bloods, right? Mm. That's all we heard. We didn't hear about nothing else. But now here you guys come. This is from East Los Angeles, correct? This is a whole nother side. And then how how, how was that? Like you know, of going into that because I think you got shot. Like well, yeah, I, I going into I, wearing I the wrong colors or something. Well, like no, that? no, I banged with Bloods. And oh wow, yeah, yeah. And, but you know, we grew up around you know most of. Uh, a lot of homies that that gang banged and you know Latino gangs and stuff like right. that. I just happened to right. <laughs> go right. a different route, wow. and so you know I I got caught in the middle of that shit. You know we were in we were in a, a neighborhood that was blood and divided by crip. You know what I mean? And right. anyone that got caught around that area, it could pop off at any minute. You know what I'm saying? And wow. I got caught with my homies in that in that little zone right there and we got caught off guard and that's when I got popped but I was I was banging and uh, you know it's you know that when you're banging this is a possibility so that right. possibility happened right. but you know we did grow up you know on the east side it's like considered what southeast or lower east something like lower that lower east side so, like Southgate uh, right next to Watts Linwood Bell's Bell Gardens, where Muzz grew up at, and then there's at. East LA. And no, past down that, there, it's you know? its own thing. You know what I mean? It's uh, Mexican gangs, it's you know Salvadorian uh, gangs, it's uh, every Latino culture gang that there is. They got a gang for it. You know what I mean? Wow. And it's different than Bloods and Crips. You know what I mean? Yeah, different codes, yeah. everything. Uh, and you have to you have to know that when you go into those into those areas. You know what I mean? Because Growing up as a black Latino, right. you know what I mean? They didn't know what you were. Right. So the first thing they thought was, like, go kick his ass. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And that's, that's think, what we... Thinking you, you're, you're from, like, a, a crip hood or something. Yeah. Or yeah. Until they, you know, until they find out that I couldn't talk English and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's always... That's how they figure out that you're part of them. And then, you know, but that's the that's what we all went through growing up in L.A. Right. Is you never you know... you Cuban, too, right? No, I'm full Cuban. Oh, full Cuban. Yeah. Half Mexican, half Cuban. Yeah. Okay, continue. My bad. And yeah. 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 Right? Yep, Puerto Rican. Italian? Yep. Yeah. yeah, but and then you had to, you know, at some point at, along the way, you have to put your foot in the dirt and say, I'm going to get down with a click because yeah. I'm tired of being, just getting my ass whooped by everybody that thinks, right. you know, I don't roll with nobody. So, I, right. you know, in fifth grade, I got down with my first click. Right. And as soon as I did that, like half the bullshit stopped. Wow. Because you got to roll with somebody, man. Yeah, you got to roll with somebody. In LA, right? And in that's, some yeah, places. Yeah. Well, Not that everywhere, was, but... In a lot of places where, you know, shit pops off, yeah, you got to right. click up. And right. if you don't, you might just get recruited even if you don't want to. Right. You mean that you're from that neighborhood. If you right. live there, oh, they're going to whoop your ass oh, every yeah. day on the way home. Right. They see you until you join their gang. If they feel wow. they mm -hmm. need you and they want you, they're going to put that, you want you want to walk down this block and not get fucked with, you're going to get in this shit over here. Wow. And, 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 and rep for the block. Right. You know what I mean? It doesn't happen with everybody, but like what, if they see something... And you, yeah, they they go come recruit, right. and some choose it, mm -hmm. some choose it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, they ain't got to be there, but they there because right. they 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 crave that lifestyle. Because like you, you know, it's crazy for me coming from the East Coast, and I'm sure mugs you know this. Like um, in Queens, we have a melting pot. So like the Puerto Ricans, the Black people, the Haitians, the Jamaicans, we all live on the same block. It wasn't like till I. Uh, all right, Dominicans All right, too. Dominicans, come on. Dominicans, come on. But, 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 but it wasn't until I kind of went to Los Angeles where I realized, like, it's almost segregated like jail. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the Mexicans is over here, the Cubans is over here, the blacks is over here. And I had never seen that until yeah. I, uh, I traveled. Um, how, 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 how is that? It's it's kind of crazy that it's right. it's separated like that. It, and Cali's so big, it's so fucking spread out that you right. could do that right. where... You know, in, in places not as big of a state, you're sort of mashed together, like the melting pot, as they say, right? Right, right. So, you know, you have that chance to, to click up and, and be unto yourself if that's what you choose. And a lot of motherfuckers do. Shit, I remember uh, when we were, like, 
this shit was a hobby to us and, and we weren't even seriously doing demos yet. Right. We'd go to different parties and one of them, I remember we'd go to the Cuban parties in uh, Southgate at this right. place called the Oguinero, right? Yeah, yeah. my family was a part of that right. too. Oguinero. Oh, you and it was crazy because everybody was clicked up, clicked up there. We have a lifelong friend and one of our boys that rides with uh, the Cypress Hillbillies with Send Dog the Bike Club and stuff. He grew up with us and him and his wife used to go to this spot. So we get invited through them sometimes to go to these fucking to go to the Oguinero. And the minute we'd show up, man, they'd be looking at us like, what the fuck are y'all doing here? Like, that's how clicked up it was. Y'all, y'all we weren't a belong. part of that clique. We didn't oh, look the way right. they did. We weren't, the, we, we didn't look Cuban in the way they did. Because right. they were trying to yeah. maintain I, that tradition. That's what, right. those, that's what those type of social clubs are for. I, yeah. I, I look like something else. Like, you know. The wild man. The big shirts on. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. They yeah. yeah. came in looking like thugs and, you know, everybody's all nice and shit. And so, yeah, we, you know. And so. It's it's very much like that. You can go to another neighborhood party, and it might be all Mexicans. The minute you know, Send Dog shows up till he starts talking. Right. They might be giving him a crazy look, but then when they hear him talk, it's like, oh shit, what's up, Holmes? You know that accepting. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's it's crazy like that. You, you know. You, you want to do great yeah. time or something? Well, no, okay. I want to ask. So going back though, we know the influences that that came when Mugs bringing a lot of the influence from and why, but. Any local LA influences, like was yeah. Frost or any of the guys oh, yeah. that were doing it locally, yeah. influencing you guys? I mean, they didn't influence me, but I was a fan of theirs, like the the LA Dream Team mm-hmm. and shit like yeah. that. But it was a Rock Berry or Rock yeah, Sunset Rock Jam. Yeah. yeah, you know, and there was other guys too, like Egyptian Lover. They did their, all the guys that were on the radio in that first wave of of eighties hip hop. Right. You know, left their mark for the next generation to cling on to and and come up, and I, and that's where. That's where I really started paying attention to is during that era. And um, there was also other cats too involved. Like uh, King T was actually before us. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was before us. And he always had his polished down style with his, you know, with a certain sample, whatever. Yeah. And it sounded in the pocket all the time. And that was King T. Yeah. You know, when he brought a record, it was going to be, everything was going to be nice and proper. That was the first LA rapper I heard that when I was like, oh shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah, right. Before that it was like everybody was trying to make planet rock records. Right. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was trying yeah. to spit. It was like his album like cover. Hop, they called it. Yeah. So. His album cover of him belling down the alley with the sawed off shotgun. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, that shit was ill, ill right? King was, like, yeah. was the shit. Was the For shit. sure. He was definitely like an influence. And WA too, you know what I mean? They're like how could they not be? Of they course, were fucking right. slapping it. Cube. Uh, yeah, Cube was you know, beast like, you know, yeah. they all were. You know what I mean? Um they all had something different and that always motivated us, man. And throughout that, that throughout that whole time, we were just around the scene in the circuit, kinda like, you know, with my brother hanging being signed a delicious vinyl and, you know, we saw Tone Loke spring up and jump mm. up and, and do his thing and then young MC and all that shit. So we were right there in the environment. We were always, you know, huddled around it. So it was only, a, you know, in my opinion, it was only a matter of time before we got a chance to do our thing. Right. You know what I mean, because we were we were always right there. So it just it just flourished from there. Ice T was an influence too. Look, that's my next right. question. Absolutely. Look, 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 look. My next question was. Ice T said, "Y'all sound like crazy Mexicans on dope." <laughs> That's the y'all no, no, He said something else. Angel dope. dust. Angel he said dust. something crazy. Angel I dust. I thought it was dope. It was no, 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 he didn't say dope. I like it's when it's dope. Yeah. Yeah. The guys that sound like Mexican dudes on Angel yeah, Dust. Yeah, that's what he's like. Oh, oh, but it's dope. But okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's big, big the Angel Dust part. Holy oh, shit. So, yeah, describe that, though. Was he all about Angel Dust? Let's be no. 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 <laughs> no, but I, but just get that. I tried it, though. <laughs> we encountered many motherfuckers on it. Because right. <laughs> that was the shit back then. It was wet. Oh, it was totally yeah. wet, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. You would but, see but, motherfuckers, like, freak the fuck out on it. Mm. Um, in but South but insane in the membrane. I ain't gonna front. I would have thought y'all was all wet too. I'm not gonna lie. We were just crazy naturally, right? You know what I mean. But so why Ice T say that? Um, I just think because of the way we sounded, we didn't sound like anything in LA. Even like the 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 dynamic of our voices. My mm. my shit was crazy high pitched and a different style. It wasn't necessarily an LA right. based style, and my sound was was mm. different. 
um, and with Sen doing the psycho beta voice, which is the who, all that mm. on top of it, it was just, I, I think that's where, where he's, he's referencing just because of the sound, the tones mm. were different, sort of like Chuck and Flay. Right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It made sense when he described it that way. Like I understood yeah. what, what he was hearing. Yeah. What made him th- for hearing it for the first time. Yeah. What it would sound like to him. Mm-hmm. What Angel Dust? No, just <laughs> <laughs> like you're tripping. <laughs> <laughs> like am I tripping? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Because I mean, it, it was big back then. It was it was huge back then. Um. So sin. You're in a biker gang. No man, <laughs> there's, no, there's no biker gang at all. There's that's just following you to even describe it like that. Wait, you watch it? It's a club. It's a club. Yeah, it's a biker club. Yeah, you sound like uh, you work for the government. <laughs> yeah. and, and he saw something in our future. Because I seen it, I was I was bugged out. I was like, holy yeah. shit. So how did you get a part of that culture? How did you get a part of that culture? How did Back in the, uh, I bought my first bike in like '95 or something like that. Okay. Right, and that that was like a Cross Rocket Honda, and that led me to Harley Davidson's, mm. you know, scooters, or whatever. Oh. And then now I'm sponsored by the Indian Motorcycle Company. Mm. Right. Um, right. So, and I, I just got into it, and uh, one day I just I had got all my friends into it. Right. And we had like about nine or ten of us. They were all, you know, had bikes. And so I was like, man, why don't we make a little patch? And I've never been about, you know, joining anybody's army. I've always right. been one the type of guy to start my own things. Right. So I started my own thing. Hillbillies, you know I mean? right? Yeah, Cypher it, Sealbillies, yeah. Hillbillies, yeah. yeah. Right? Oh, shit, yes. Right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm scared to death of bikes. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but y'all ride cross country? We have, man. We've done long distance rides and shit like that. And it's, you know, it's... Depending on what time of year you go on, okay, is you know what kind of whooping you're gonna take on that bike. So what, what what's the longest distance you went? Me yeah. personally, the to Arizona from California, from where I lived in Cali, Ooh. all the way to Arizona. It's Eighteen hours. Uh, who's counting? You know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just along to. I'm on the ride till we get there. Right. You know, and then we we'll, we'll when we get there, then you know, then we meet up with other bike clubs, and then. Go to the rally that they invited us to and oh, shit like that. Wow. Now this is with navigation, or you did this without navigation? No, nah, my road captain will have the navigation. Road right? captain. The road captain. Big yeah. words. I don't know what this means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, positioning, man. You know. Right. And then and then we roll out. Right. So that's what it is. The, you know the road I mean? captain is the the guy who's who's orchestrating their movements as they're right. rolling. Kind right. of like a parade yeah. going through. No GPS. No GPS. Well, he might have GPS. He might have GPS now. But he's coordinating everybody's movement. I feel more comfortable if he has his GPS thing going. He's like the road it's manager. A swarm. Yeah. It's a swarm, yeah. basically. Wow. You're basically following him, right? On the road or no? That yeah, is... pretty much. Yeah, he okay. has the coordinates, you know what I mean? So we roll out and and uh, and whatever happens, happens, you know. But it's, it's his responsibility to make sure that we get to the spot we're supposed to get to. Mm. So that's it. Holy moly. And, and if he a- fucks up, they leave him with the scooter and he's got to get back by himself. Yeah, and the, the greatest... <laughs> <laughs> you almost bought that. You almost bought that. I was like, really? Nah. The greatest... It sounds like a decent punishment. <laughs> right? If you fuck it up, you leave him with a scooter and however you get right. back, you get back. Uh, if you want to say something, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say the funnest thing about it is actually when you complete the journey. You know what I mean? Because right. it's a physical thing. You're on, the, right. you're on the machine. It's a physical thing. Right. And when you do it and come back, and there's, there's a, you kind of feel like you went through a kind of threshold kind of thing and you completed something. You know what I mean? Mm. It's kind of a weird feeling like that. Yeah. On Wednesdays, do the woman flash you? Whip out Wednesdays? <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't know what problem is. He was in the joint. That was real. Okay, I that was a real thing. Like you know, we always see. Whip out Wednesday. You know, I'm doing the biker shit. Whip out Wednesday. Hey, no, no. I'm lost here. I'm not sure what he means by that shit. He was hungry. The girls, they do. All right, the girls. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. No, but I can take you to that spot if you like. <laughs> Yo, Nori, that would cause a lot of accidents, Papa. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right, because you want to bite. 
Yeah, you ride the bike? No, 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 fuck no. no. You ride it baby, no, no, ride at all. No, I just, it's just, it's just. No, he got into it. I, yeah. I remember when they both first bought their bikes, like, because Muggs bought one and, right. and Send Dog bought, bought one and a few guys from our crew. All right. And, you know, they got them crotch rockets. I was like, man, y'all are crazy. I, I you know, I, I used to ride dirt bikes as a very young kid and, I, you know, it just wasn't my thing. I got into low riders, so, you know, if it ain't a low low, mm-hmm. I don't go go. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Holy moly, guacamole. So, how is it being the only Puerto Rican? <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's all it's all love, you know. Puerto Ricans and Cubans, they they kind of all blend together. Yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, my you know where I, where I was born, I was born in Hollis, Hollis, Queens. It was always, you know, my mom's best friend was uh, Cuban and right. and everything, and you know my dad. Every, your, your, you know, dad your dad, is a super legend. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. so it was it was always love, you know. So right. you know, I, I felt right at home. You is know, the, is that how you um, found love with music, seeing your dad? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I started with him. You know, I was five years old. My first gig. You know. Wait, what? Time off. Wait a minute. What the fuck did you just say? I was five years old. Five years old. Yeah, it was, the, it was in the documentary. Holy yeah. shit! That shit was crazy. Yeah. So uh, you know, my dad that put me up there. What the fuck? That went over my head. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't rehearse, yeah. right? You no, no, I didn't right rehearse on. at all. You oh, know, wow. my dad just put me up there, up there. You know, I was playing on the pots and pans. You know, before I can even speak. So, you know, my dad recognized, you know, the I had a rhythm. Wow. So put me up there, and then I was doing gigs with him till I, uh, he passed away. I was 15. Oh, and then uh, I took over his band, doing the Latin jazz thing, you know, playing Latin jazz festivals and Playboy Jazz Festivals, Monterey Jazz Festival, oh, keeping keeping that music alive, you know. But that I always loved hip-hop, you know what I mean? And, you know, you know, the early hip-hop always had that... You know, percussion in it. You yeah. know, if you hear like, you know, Grandmaster Flash and you know, all that stuff. So it was, it was there. So I knew that this was something that I wanted to do. And then, you know, shit just came, came for me. You know what I mean? Right. Nah, that's that's beautiful. What made you want to add um, the percussionist? Vibe, yeah. To the to to, to I your saw shows. him one day playing with the Beastie Boys. Right. Right. And I was like, man, he'd be, he sound really cool playing with us. <laughs> <laughs> and you just knew that. Just knew that. So I invited him to a show we was doing at a, a at a El Camino College because uh-huh. my little sister went there. Uh-huh. And uh, the Latino studies people hit me up. I'm like, okay, cool, we'll do that show for you guys. And then, but I also invited him. Right. And you told me you played on one song. I that played night. on one song. I remember him being there the whole show through, <laughs> <laughs> right? But that's where I first saw him with the Beasties, and uh, and I was like, I gotta, I, I love to hear how he would sound with us, with our sound, with Muggs's production and B-Real's vocals, and 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 what I was doing with my secondary vocal. I just had a feeling that it would work, right? You know, and it 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 did. It, it sound, to this day, it sounds great. Right. Was it real estate? Uh, no, it was Latin lingo. Yeah, Latin lingo. Latin lingo. Latin lingo. I mean, also it had, also yeah, has like some yeah, percussion does, in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why I gravitated to it because I'm like, damn, you know, there's percussion in this. Mm-hmm. I can do this. Right. Now, I already yeah. know because Beastie Boys, they were, you know, tinkering around a little bit with the, uh, you know, Latin sounds, but they weren't Latino. You know what right. I mean? Right. But with Cypress, it was a whole different thing. He was rhyming in Spanish. So I, I felt at home. You know, when they came to you to say, leave the beasties and come to us, it was a no-brainer or you had to think about it? Uh, no, it was a uh, no-brainer. Tell that story. Yeah, the documentary tell, seemed like a no-brainer. Story. Well, well, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I don't know <laughs> if I was just, like, approached like that, like, when he said, hey. <laughs> it seemed kind of bad. <laughs> <Sorry, sorry. laughs> like, the beasties are still mad right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. But. Yeah. Listen, we, we absolutely poached him, but I'm saying... <laughs> You openly admit it. No, what, what happened was, you know, I mean, I, for about two and a half, three years, I was flip flopping. I was doing world tours with BCs, and then I go on with Cypress. Right. It was going back and forth up until uh, Woodstock, Woodstock '94. He was getting a lot of pussy. Let's just make some noise for you, Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're really in my notes. That's my next note. What's this? No, what's that? Originally, Cypress was going to play on the Sunday, and that was my day off. I was doing Lollapalooza '94 with Beastie Boys, mm. and somehow it got changed to Saturday. 
So uh, I was like back and forth, man, should I go? And what am I going to do? And everything like that. My mom, last minute, she says, motherfucker, you better go to Woodstock. That's 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 a big yeah. thing. That's the biggest thing right there. So I left a note for Mike D. I put it under his door like about 3 o'clock in the morning and said, I'm going to Woodstock. I'll be back for the show. Mm. And uh, Mike I flew, D is from the Beastie Boys. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I did that. I didn't tell nobody. So then I, I flew to, to to Woodstock. We did the show. I couldn't get out because it started raining and shit. So I was stuck. Was they mosh pitting in the way? Oh, oh man, they were yeah. doing yeah, all kinds sure. of shit. everything in the land. Yeah. And uh, I had to I had to fly here to Miami after that. <laughs> and. Uh, Tour manager was all pissed off. So it's Bobo, fault. <laughs> Bobo, we need to talk to you. You shouldn't have left us. It was very bad. All this kind of Is shit. Is that Leo Cole? <laughs> no, 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 no. But that guy, he was, he was the tour manager way back when for Ozzy Osbourne. This Jesus. guy. He's a legend. So, he's a right? Legend. Yeah, he's a legend. Yeah. All right. So the guys that go ahead and talk to me, you know, everything like that. I figure, well, shit. If I get fired from this gig, I got another one. Right. You know, so uh, they they let me they let me slide. You know, they said Woodstock is you know that was a big thing. But you know, let us know. I said shit, I did. I left a note under the door. <laughs> you, know, <I> said, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, it, that was that was a wild thing. And then that was you know really the beginning of me really being part of the crew. Right. Well, so make some noise for that, goddamn. <laughs> let me ask you something. Where was the moment? Because I mean, to us. I mean, this is hardcore hip hop, but the craziest shit about making someone make someone of making the hardest core hardcore hip hop it crosses over. Yeah, like I, I can never see DMX ever being commercial, but he's like, yeah, he's right. like the it went, right. Where was the moment that y'all started to realize that that is happening to y'all? That, uh, you know, it's I don't know, but it's that energy. You right. got that energy, that rock and roll energy. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? That right. shit translates across them festivals. Right, and you get groups like. Public Enemy, Cypress Hill, right. Run DMC, you know what I mean? Groups and that never cross over. The just because the energy the, the crosses, music is the energy hard, crosses but, them over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. that's that shit. That's sounds like that's that energy they like. But what was the moment that y'all was like, wow, this is really it? Had to be the festivals, like yeah, seeing all those people. I, I think, I think it was it was the Woodstock Festival. Woodstock, right. you know, there was five hundred thousand there. Five hundred thousand right, people. Let's talk, no, let's talk about man. Woodstock. It was five hundred thousand people. That's insane. It was about four eighty four, close to. Five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't even tuck that. I call myself be real without being real. Okay. 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 I respect that. But hold on, you get the call, and it now has hip hop been on Woodstock prior to this? Or no. No. Okay. no, no, no. You guys no, no, are the no. first of this. Okay. Yeah. Well, Salt and Pep was on it too. Okay. They, they was on, on that same, the same show. Show. different stage though. Okay. They were on different, different stage. stage. Okay. Yeah. But it, it was it was around that time that you know like. That hit because of Ozzy Osbourne bit a back. Well, it, no, it wasn't that. <laughs> he was doing it on tour. Right? Yeah, oh, right. Right. Yeah. No, no, what was crazy is it, it like it, it hit me in that moment at Woodstock because when we got invited to that and then seeing like the ocean of fucking people bouncing to our shit and when how I how I could just kill a man comes on, they go ape yeah. shit and it's and it's crazy. You know what I mean and. That that's sort of when it hit, I, like, cause I mean, you know, previous to that, we had played sizable festivals and stuff like that, but nothing that right. that big. And to see five hundred thousand, yeah, that's and, crazy. That shit was so big. We had a you couldn't drive into the show. We had to get a hotel in this other state right here, get in a helicopter and fly into the show. And then the land to fly show. in. Yeah, because because it was like a ten-hour traffic jam. That, well, no, the roadways turned into a fucking parking lot. Like for real, people just got out of their car, fucking walked it, and left their shit where they left it. It was like in the sixties. Like the original Woodstock, yeah. right? Yeah, you know. So the for original Woodstock was 1969, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And some some went in on boat. You know, you had to go where the fucking the boat was, and you right. know, boated in or you helicoptered in. That wow. was only two ways in for artists at man, that point. Man, that was wild, man. Just to see all them people just over there, like, it was it was nuts, man. Yeah, we came in on a helicopter. And then y'all land, and then they say, y'all got to go straight to the stage, or how does it happen? Uh, we were there for, what, 40 minutes before we went on, maybe an and hour? A little bit longer. Hour and a half? Yeah. Yeah. It was when we got off stage that was everything. They kicked us right the fuck out. They're like, we got to make room for the next band flying in. So and y'all killed the stage. Shit. It's not like... Yeah, we killed it. I lost my shoes and socks 
on that show. I didn't bet on nothing but us to win, and I lost my uh, shoes and socks. Well, how do you lose your shoes and socks? Okay, so me and Sen, or Sen and I, for proper grammar's sake. Okay. Um, <laughs> We, you know, from the Beastie Boys shows, we were, you know, jumping in the crowd and that became a thing. Us stage diving and, and doing that, that shit. We did it for a very long time, mm. but uh, it was new to us then. And, you know, Woodstock seemed like the place to do it. So I go in, I get ravaged. My fucking shirt's getting pulled this way, that way. You jumped yeah. in the crowd. Yeah, I jumped in. We both jumped in the crowd. Uh-huh. I, I had to grab my, my collar so that I didn't get choked out by my T-shirt getting pulled this way and do the song because, like, we never stop doing the song. We right. always finish, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And uh, as, I'm, as we're doing the song, first shoot comes off. Second shoot comes off. Sock comes off. See, I can see the shoe. The sock, they literally got like, like, yeah. like, 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 and I came back on stage, and you know, I was barefooted. I was like a hippie up there, you know what right. I'm saying? Trying to do some hip hop <laughs> shit. Mm. Um, but it happened on the last song, because we finished with We Ain't Going Out Like That. That was our finisher for a long time. Um, and at that point, it was new, but like, you know, so that was the last song. I get up on stage. I don't mm-hmm. got, I'm asking for my shit back. Ain't no one throwing my shit back. Mm-hmm. But years later, on, 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 on another tour, I shit, I came across one shoe. Right, a motherfucker. Hey, this from is a previous from show or from that same show? No, no. For like years later, like ten years Gosh. later, <laughs> we're on a tour somewhere with. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, it's probably further than ten years, but it was either with Three Eleven or Sublime with Rome or Slightly Stupid. One of those three tours yeah. we did with those guys. A f- one fan comes up and says, "Hey, yo." This is the shoe from Woodstock. Would you sign it? This is wow. I'm gonna say that, and I'm like, cool. It was my left shoe, <laughs> so I fucking signed it. Right? Get on. About another year later, I'm on. A, we're on another tour. I might have been with Profits <laughs> at this the point. Right shoe. Got the right shoe. He goes, hey yo, man. Give me Murphy. What's the same person? No, it wasn't the same person. Okay. Two different people. I never got the socks though. So <laughs> we're looking for the socks. We're looking for the, the socks. socks. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah. Now you, no, okay, you were saying something. No, 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 no. Now you guys were also the first rappers with a Hollywood hawk. A walk of Fame sign because Colin is getting his yeah, so, um, uh, Monday. Yeah, and I was thinking like how how far has hip hop came? And then I'm looking at the documentary on like the first hip hop group they ever gave one to is you guys. Yeah, it was group, like yeah. Robert De Niro, Ma- Marilyn Monroe, Cypress Hill. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a dope yeah. lineup right there. Right the All right, yeah. I'll, I'll take you that. Too, you went too fast. Hold on, what did you, what did you just say? It's on Hollywood Boulevard. Robert De Niro. Marilyn Monroe, Monroe and Cypress Hill. Let's make some noise for that. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, yo, they be the stars down the road that nobody goes to, but they gonna right. go to those right there. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. does it feel, it, man? It's crazy because you know we'll we'll, we'll get um, tagged in in pictures of fans going to the star right. and like you know smoking up or leaving right. some weed right there and taking pictures and right. all that shit cause M- some stars they be pissing on them so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 that ain't wrong yeah. 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 no I see them violate Donald Trump shit holy shit oh, yeah. you see yeah. what they was doing to Donald Trump shit at one point every day <laughs> I was like, Jesus. <laughs> they will violate this shit. But they don't violate y'all. They, they put they, weed on y'all shit. They celebrate it. They you celebrate know, it. like stoners do. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? You know, and and uh, yeah, we get we get tagged on in a lot. And, and right. it's cool because it's something I know ain't none of us ever talked about or expected. That was right. just... Because I don't think as artists we come in expecting to achieve these, these accolades. things. Yeah, yeah. We're just doing what we're passionate about and trying to win at it. Mm-hmm. And everything else is an extra. So when... They came to us with that shit. I was like, oh, wow. Man. Really? <laughs> it's yeah. crazy to be, you know, I mean, for years, just walking those streets, just, you know, casually. And, can and, see. Then, and then all of a sudden, to have one, that's, that's something else, man. I mean, to see that journey from Kill a Man right. to probably be like, this is just a dope street record. You know, we just want to do it for, for hip-hop, for the culture, to 
doing these festivals and then and then the Hollywood star. That's got to be mind blowing for y'all. It, it was. Like, and, and, and most did y'all smoke weed at y'all's speech? I, did we? Yeah, we were all stoned. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been everybody smoking to this time to go on. You know what I mean? By the time we did this, it was off. You started smoking. I thought about it, you know, but oh, I thought, speech, or yeah, you I, I thought about it, but I knew there was kids there, and you right, know, true. at that, and my daughter was there, so I don't yeah, want yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Um But you know, it, the the cool shit was not not. The, the star in itself was cool, you know what I mean? But the fans that showed up to celebrate it mm -hmm. with us, that was, because, right. so, you know, some star celebrations, not many people show up, and, you know, it depends on who it is, and, and you celebrate your star, and it's all good, and then right. it's fucking over, right? right? But we had a lot of our fans there that I did not expect show up right. and celebrate that with us, and that meant everything. That kind of meant more than the star. Right. And not for nothing... You know, we we buried some weed under that star. Oh. Fine, I would have never thought <laughs> of that. That was fine. You put a time capsule that's It's forever okay. blessed. Yes, yes, Don't yes. go fucking try to, you don't do this. Because it's not good anymore. <laughs> no, it's just in spirit yeah. there. Well, you know what? I want to tell y'all again, congratulations on that. Man. That's a big Thank you. Thank you. That's a big fucking accomplishment, man. That's it's, just, a, it's a legacy that your kids and grandkids yes, will continue yeah, to man. see and visit yep. and read. Whenever they want to, you know what I mean. Right. And it's a, that's the monument. It's there. That's, yeah. what, that's what great granddaddy did. You know, right. it's gonna be same. You know, long time from now. Right. And Hell yeah. Has yeah. to be respected. You know. Now, um, let me. Uh, who's Mac? Mike Miller. Mike Miller was the photographer that um, took the shots for the first album. So he didn't film the whole album cover. Yeah, the whole okay. like all those shots in that time. You know, when you see us on the album cover, where there's uh, we're by the fire. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all looking at different ways so you don't necessarily see our faces and stuff. That was shot mm. at uh, his father's steel mill that was, uh, you, you know it, it's, um, what street is that on? Um? Nate, right before Nadu, it's Santa yeah. Fe Road, Santa Fe yeah. Street or Road. It was that one was steel that mill that looked abandoned right there. Not close to that pig farm thing that, that you know that one that's over there around that area? Yeah. No, no, way before that. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like yeah. right when you're coming out of Southgate on the backside. Right. You would know it if you saw it. Yeah. yeah. But it, like, we didn't know it was his father's shit. I mean, we'd been growing up and seeing that shit forever. And then, you know, he, he says, I want to take you to this spot. And Muggs was very pivotal in that because he was giving him the direction, hey, we want it to look it, like... It, Muggs, you've had that vision from get. Like, sorry to cut you up, but the, the art direction thing was there already. Right, right, yeah, so... We, we had this idea of what we wanted to do. It was a trash can, you know what I mean? A burning trash can, like you staying warm. Uh -huh. It was like, it was it was like August, it was, July, August. It was, it was always warm fun. outside, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we're trying to get the winter feel in LA. So we had jackets on, we had the fire burn. It was like 89 degrees. We was taking the pictures in the steel mill right there in like Southgate. And that, and right that was right. Mike Miller's father's steel mill, so it made mm. it easy. And the funny thing is uh, the guy who was the assistant to Mike Miller was Estevan Orio, director of, of our new, mm -hmm. of our documentary. Which you did a great job on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what made y'all want to do the documentary? Because y'all was, y'all had people filming it from the beginning? And shut up, Massive Pew. I didn't know that they were involved. And it's on yeah. Showtime. Yeah, and Massive Showtime. Pew. No, all, the, Showtime. all the camera shit from the beginning is just us right. buying cameras. You know, when movie cameras started coming out, one of the homies would buy a camera, mm -hmm. the other homie would buy a camera. It just be shooting shit behind the scenes. Right. Documenting Document and everything. It wasn't like live on Instagram, so we had our cameras. You know, we had our own shit. When you when you watch a documentary, do you, like, does what, what, what kind of emotions do you watch? Because I'm looking at it like, man, these guys had a fucking hell of a life. But I didn't live that life. No, it's, it's, but hold up. This is the thing that when I'm watching it, I was watching with my girl last night, actually. Uh -huh. And we're watching it, and there's so much shit that happens, and then it, it cuts to MTV News, and I'm like, Yo, MTV News hasn't been around for so long. Well, well, that well, much well, shit well, happened? Well, like, y'all live like two lifetimes right. and still mad shit happened after that, is what I'm saying. Like, right. so much has happened for you guys. And, and one thing that didn't establish in the, in, in the documentary is why you left the group. Because that was the MTV thing. Sid leaves the group. But I, I, I don't know if, if you ever, like, said why did you leave the group at that time. Uh, I think I was just a scatterbrain. You know what I mean? Like, my... my I couldn't really focus on it on one thing, and I felt like uh, I was more of a, did, like more of a something that was against the group than something that could help the group. For lack of a better term, you was like the ODB. 
I guess, yeah, kind of, you know what I mean? Like, I just, it, it was, uh, I couldn't get my shit together. I couldn't concentrate mm. it. For the first time in my life, I couldn't figure the shit out where I, what I wanted to do, mm. you know? And, that, and the road life is rigorous. Like, that shit is crazy. Yeah, especially yeah. when you're, it's your first time out there, and I'm not going to make any excuses or whatever, but, no. yeah, I went through culture shock and all that shit that, you know, and I would see these guys just raging on fucking tour, right. and I'm like, man, I, I just don't feel that shit. Right. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't. No, yeah. uh, wow. I wasn't having fun. It was the, I don't want to say a burden, you know what I mean? But it was like a heavy shit on me um, to uh, to just stay the whole time out there with them. You know what I mean? Wow. And I had to battle the, the I guess, demons that were trying to tell me, like, fuck these dudes and split, and you know? And, and got, the right yeah. thing, which was telling me, stay right here with your crew. Right. You know what I mean? And that, and that, and I... I didn't always come through with that shit. Right. You know what I mean? So I fuck, I've always uh, felt shitty about that, right. you know, until I figured that shit out and became a constant part of the, of the touring crew. Right. You know what I mean? And you started your own crew as well, right? Your own punk rock band, I yeah. believe it was? Yeah, back in those days, yes. Yeah, I started a band that, uh, that actually helped me stay in music. Okay. You know what I mean? Because my idea... Fucked up as it was, I was like, just, I'm just gonna quit. Right. You know what I mean? But these guys, um, like, we we just need someone to practice with. Can you right. just rap? And I'm like, oh, okay, all right, whatever. And that turned into me staying productive, doing music and this and that. The whole time, be real would not, you know, he'd come over to my house like once or twice a year and be like, hey, nigga, you ready yet? Or, right. and I'd be like, no, I'm not ready yet. You know what I mean? Right. So. When I became, when I decided, okay, I'm gonna go back to the to the crew because thanks to these three cats right here, right. they kept the band, you know, because alive. Those three cats, I think. Yeah. 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 And and they they kept the band going while I took my hiatus. Right. You know what I mean? Until I figured it out and and uh, and and I developed this, you know, who gives a fuck attitude. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and that's you know the same shit that I'm on till today. You know. Cause that's what I was, I was, I was expecting almost. Um, or um, you know, Ice Cube left N.W.A. So I, and and then it was disc records after that, and you know, back and forth. So I was expecting that, you know, when when you left the group, and then like like you said, like um, MTV reporting on it. How come you you guys never took that route? No, but but, but then you see the footage of what you said on stage. Yeah. Had you ever did you ever see that till the documentary? What he was saying on stage? He no, was, no. He was basically saying that. Like, he was bigging him up. He was saying, yeah. look, he's not here anymore, but he's right. still a part of the group. Like, it was more right. supportive words. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's important. our brother. You right. know what I mean? That's the way we look at each other. You know, we're, we're not just bandmates. Right. We're, we're more than that. And that I think that's why it's been able to be what it is, because we understand each other. You know, if one of us is having a bad time, we just back up and let it breathe. And, you know, the rest of us continue to toe the line and, and make it happen. And... You know, he he got me into this shit. This right. guy and this guy right, right here, and and you know, to give him his flowers, mellow. You know, they got me off the street when I was banging. They were already kind of in the game. They could have pushed on without me and figured it out. But you know, they brought me in, and you know, there's there's only a couple different right. paths when you're right. banging, especially in that time when it was crazy heated. And these guys took a chance on me, right? right. So, you know. When Send Dog left, it, we weren't mad at him. We we right. just tried to understand. We were disappointed, but like we carried the line till till he came back. And we, all, you know, Mugs would from time to time check in on him. I would, Bobo yeah. would, right. and in his time, he came back and we accepted it, embraced it, and knew. Fuck, you know, we were back. Yeah, we let him have his time. Right. We let him have his time. You know? I just gotta say that there was no like fucked up treatment from these cats. All right. Beautiful. While I went through my own shit. Because you know most I mean? groups, like, it, it happens like that. Like you, you, you yeah. Like the minute day. you show weakness in the armor or something yeah. like that, they kick your ass out. Oh, uh, it yeah. wasn't that with these guys. You know right, what I mean? Right, no, they we, were just and money could get in the in the way of it too. It, it's like, all oh, okay. He, well, he, he saved my life, so I could never disrespect this guy. You know, right. same as Mugs, same right. as Mello. I, you know, I might have had my problems with Mello in the past, but you know, I always got love for him because that basically saved my life. So. We got to be understanding to one another, you know what I mean? Especially when we've built it up, like, 
at but, that point. But was it difficult, you know, going on tours without him? And, um, you know, especially singing his part. I believe you was, like, singing his part. Yeah, we did around. a few tours where I was doing all his parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, they, they yeah, we, split them between yeah, Bobo and yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the ones that they couldn't do, I would do Send Dogs verses, right. and we just, you know, sort of split it up. It was, you know, we still brought a show. It's right. just that, you know, we had the missing fucking component in right. Send Dog's energy, you know what I mean? And right. his voice, his tone. When you don't have that, it ain't necessarily Cypress Hill, but we gave it to crowds nonetheless, and they accepted it. Right. And when he came back, it was just like even that much more. Better, so, right. Yeah, and, and uh, so in his time, man, and I knew he'd come back. Right. It, was, it was just he needed time to breathe and reset because we were on a crazy pace. Like, right. we didn't see home, but for maybe two, three weeks at a time, and then we were back on the fucking road. We didn't see our families, friends, and, right. and nothing. You yeah, know? it was like and seven, nothing. eight months a year. Yeah, we were on the road but, yeah. for like the first five years. No right. FaceTime. Yeah, no yeah, Skype, no technology, yeah. no right. fucking like, social nothing. But there yeah. was no yeah. social shit. So you had to get out there and get face to face with your fans. Which get out there the, and do shows right. and do in stores. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Visit oh, radio, uh, visit radio stations and morning shows when and I night shows. I used to try to bring my people from the hood, and I used to bring them out. Like, yo, you come with me. I can kid you not. If it was like fifteen of them, seven of them would go home. Hey, within the first couple of years. <laughs> you read my fucking mind. <laughs> you read my fucking mind because I was about to just say that. Right? Is that you can you can. There's some motherfuckers that are built for this right. and some that have to sort of learn and mm -hmm. gradually get into this and some are not built for it at no, all. Because we did the same thing. Right. We, we brought a couple of my homies that I banged right. with right, right. and one of them snapped in for sure. He could live the road life but the thing mm -hmm. is is he got reckless. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? The hood started flashing up in different places mm -hmm. when he would drink too much. In different hoods. Mm -hmm. and right. Different oh, yeah. cities. And, and, and different you politics. Know, <laughs> and that's a liability because right. things could pop off, right? right? And then there's the other homie that we brought on who was a G, you know, mm -hmm. one of my Gs. And he spent a tour, he spent a, a, a full tour with us, but he didn't want to do another one. Another because, one, he never wanted to come he, back. Because all he ever knew was the hood. The, and and he missed so much money in the hood. Yeah, and he, or, or he just missed being around yeah, he missed, that he missed, shit, yeah. and he couldn't disconnect from it. Being on the road was cool, right. but I'd rather be in a comfort zone right. here because I know this shit. And, right. and some get stuck in that mentality, you know what I mean? Not, and Sen wasn't that. Mm -hmm. It was just that it's... We were fucking going so heavy, it just gassed him. Right. You know what I mean? For me, I was like, this is all I got. Right. I'm fucking, we're rolling. Right. And, uh, you know, so it never got, I never got tired of it. I, you know, sometimes now I might, but um, at that point, I was like, fuck, we're on, we got to keep going. And Muggs was the same way, and, and Bobo, and, and I believe that Sen was in this way, but it just eventually, it get. When you're seeing only two weeks at home and then having to do right. another eight week tour, man, that shit right. bears down on you eventually. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. Especially when like you, you said, there, there was no FaceTime back then. No. There was no like they especially probably felt going, like you were disconnected from the world. Yeah. Going 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 overseas where I was about it's to say that. really a culture shock because yeah. it's a whole Before different thing. Before the worldwide thing. cell phones too, you know right? Exactly. I mean? <laughs> and, and you know, different languages, different well, food, beat, different things, then. you know what I mean? Yeah, but imagine the beepers back there. Imagine the international beeping? Oh, yeah. That's, that's annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, hey, what was, what was key, though, for a second is when those uh, next tells came that you could uh -huh. do the walkie-talkie shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, those were the most such yeah. joints. Have y'all ever slowed down on touring, or is, it's been like this from the beginning? There was a couple times, a couple I mean, parts. I said COVID. Yeah, well, yeah, COVID definitely. Mm -hmm. that, that's been... You know, one of the the longest stretches that we didn't touch the road, but there was there was stretch. I was playing paintball, you know, competitive. Yeah, you got a paintball, paintball team and all yeah, that, right? Yeah, and I used to play as well. And I was totally fucking addicted to that shit. And you so, don't do it anymore. You no, don't have the no, team. No, no, no. That, I mean, I could put it back together, but I just, you know, I got what happened was You'll this. You be addicted right? to paintball. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's just, yo, I, was, I almost went pro too. Like, I almost yeah. went pro. Yeah. We, Wait a we were on that. Pro paintball? We, yes. What? Yeah. Million, million dollar cups? Okay, what are you so talking let about? Me, let me explain to you, oh Norman, my God. right? Let me explain to you. There's two styles of paint, two different styles of paintball culture. There's 
the ones where regular folks go in, they play what's called scenario games, right. and they go into a field and they try to shoot each other <clears> out. <throat> That's one. Right. That's not the one that we speed were doing. Ball. We were doing yeah. the one called speedball. Where yeah. let's just say this is the field. It's cut in half. It's you a could, team, and it's like yeah. play like a sport. Like you got your you got obstacles over here, obstacles over there. It's a mirror. Seven guys, seven guys. You're trying to get no, it's, their it's flag. It's addictive, man. Like you get into and it. And you're shooting guns, you know, paintball guns at each other, trying to like communicate and strategize like chess with guns. You know yeah. how to get these dudes out. You wanted to play paintball. I, we hey, talked about it a couple times. That, that's that's <laughs> I needed that because that yeah. was my my time off right there. Mm, like, yeah. you know, Send Dog took his time. When I took my time, we all had to take a pause because, right, right. you know, it's a little bit different, right? right? So I took that three years and I didn't realize I was taking that three years. I was just having fun doing that shit because competitive paintball takes you touring to different and, and places. Yeah, no, you're so you get paid for this. If you win. If you win. If but you there's win. big, but you're paying big bags. This is like golf. It's in. very expensive oh. to play, but if you win. You yeah, there's get, big bags yeah. if you win. Yes. Um, and sponsorships, uh, we, yeah, yeah, like you get real sponsorships. We did, we did decent. We were, we were a pretty good team, but like, what happened was this on my last tournament um, <laughs> on my last tournament in San Diego that I played that we played as a team um, you know this this dude comes up and we did horribly bad in that that tournament like we weren't communicating we were just playing like shit and we got we got cheated all this shit was happening it was just a bad day and this fan comes up right he goes yo be real man it's good to see you out here with the people like this man you know like fucking down to earth shit and playing paintball ambassadorship. Yeah, man. <laughs> Can I ask you something? I'm like, yeah. And thanks. He goes, when are you going to make a new album and get back on tour? And I was like, so that clicks for you. <laughs> oh, shit. Right. But this is, this is a little <laughs> thing. Like, he's making you up. He's saying you're a great paintball. He basically told me, hey, man, I'm a great paintball. Yeah. Hey, he snapped me in because, like, after that, I, you know, I put out three mixtapes. You know, Right. Um, the Gunslinger series. I wish you could try this. Um, <laughs> then, then we eventually work on Rise Up, and we right. get back on tour. We start touring heavy again, but it was those three years, and it was that yeah. dude in that tournament who gave me the reality check, like I should be working. Right. You know, like enough of, of well, having fun. Shout out fun. to that dude. Right. Yeah, shout out to you, bro, because like right. you snapped me back in. I know, motherfuckers, right. like what the fuck is wrong with him? All right. We got, you know what I'm saying? And thank you for understanding that, guys. Yeah, we, we never that. even, you know, oh, so got he, it he's him. He's on a hiatus. He's playing paintball. Y'all going crazy. You no, know, this happened at different just, times. We do oh, different times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm thinking this is the same time. I'm like, y'all going crazy. Because, Bugs, you never we, really we, we, all, we, all, we all got shit to do. Like, right. we all got fucking about 20 things to do. So whenever, you signed Alchemist, right? No, he was in the little he homie. Was, he was in the homie. Yeah, he came like, up under uh, us. Look on this, um, on the not to interrupt, but on the footage of uh, Woodstock, uh, I believe that's his footage, right? Alchemist was there. No, was it's, it's my footage. Oh, it's your footage. Boy, he shot it on my camera. On your camera, yeah. Really? Alchemist with the Alchemist with been down that long. That long. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. Years no, yeah. What the fuck? Shout out to Alchemist. He's a little bit of Alchemist. Yeah. Yeah. They'll make some noise for Alchemist. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna take a beat, so you take a, anybody got to go to the bathroom yeah. break? Yeah. Oh, let's take no, it. Fuck it. We're gonna take a bathroom yeah. break. Play the game. So, quick time with slime. It's gonna give you two names, two groups. You gotta pick one or the other. If you pick both or neither, which is the politically correct answer, we drinking. Everybody's drinking though. We drinking with you. We all drinking. We all taking a shot. Okay. Oh shit! So you oh, pick one, nobody drinks. Right. You pick both or neither of them, we all drinking. And then, Sonny, you drinking yeah, for Nori, right? Yeah. Where's Sonny at? Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. Nori's on a cleanse right now. Let's go. Yo, I need somebody yeah, to drink for me. Yeah. 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 Yo, we're going to 
over here. <laughs> so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna ask y'all two. Uh, I'm gonna ask y'all two a question, and he's gonna ask y'all two a question, and oh, then it'll be the same type of thing. You sent it to me, Haz? Yes, you did. All right, so cool. You ready? I think so. Quick time of slide, big up to my people from Cherry, Colorado. Uh huh. My folks. It's family. Kid Frost or Mellow Man Ace? Mellow Man Ace. Mellow Man Ace. All right. So that's. All right. Y'all two. House of Pain or Funk Dubious? House of Pain. House of Pain. Wow. They together. Oh, they're they're looking at each other. Jesus. 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 What the fuck do y'all? Okay. Ice Cube or Scarface? Ice Cube. Mm. Ice Cube. All right. I'm glad I didn't have to answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> Dre or Puff? Dre. Dre. Be real. I want to see if y'all can answer like how they answer. This is my team. This is my team. It's good. Come on, come on, be real. That's the rhythm section. Yeah. 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 Tribe Called Quest or Souls of Mischief? Tribe, Tribe Called Quest. Ooh. <laughs> Jesus, man. Yo. All right. Now, this is going to fuck y'all up. I'm sure. <laughs> All right. I'm sure. <laughs> we can tell y'all tour a lot together, man. <laughs> Busta Rhymes or Eminem? Busta, Busta Rhymes. <laughs> Go on, yeah. All right. Okay. Snoop or Game? Snoop. Snoop. Jesus. We need better okay. questions, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. We're not drinking. We haven't drank yet. Hold on, hold on a little bit. Take a <laughs> shot. Cool. All right. I don't have tequila, dude. Okay. You got the, oh, the right there, right there. This is tequila. All right, we ready? Hold on, let's let them let them fill up. You took the you take a shot. You gotta take a shot. Oh, you yeah. gotta take a shot. Take a shot. Yeah. We just gotta take a yeah. shot. Take yeah. a shot. Yeah. 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 No, take it again, though. We didn't see you. Oh, yeah. oh, I know that tequila yeah. was burning. My whole and mugs is crumbled. How'd you like it, my whole? How'd you like it? It's cold, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It tastes good. Yeah. I, got okay. I dropped the plug. Right okay, this one, I'm pretty sure we're going to go with this one. But I got, I got to ask anyway. Tupac or Nipsey Hussle? Tupac. Tupac. Okay. Big pun or Biggie? Biggie. Biggie. Jeez, man. We're not catching them at all. <laughs> DJ Quick or Battle Cat? DJ Quick. DJ Quick. All right. Outcast or UGK? UGK. Wait. I was going to say Outcast. All right, you can say it. We can drink it. We're taking a drink. We all got a drink. We're not going to drink it. 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 No, no, no. When they disagree, I got to drink it. No, no, no. They disagree. We all got to drink it. They got to drink it. Especially in the way they've been at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't going to lie. I'm ready to start hip-hop Hollywood squares the way they've been at it. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Okay. Nice. He said no. It's on me, right? Uh-huh. Ooh, 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 it's a good one. <laughs> NWA or Wu Tang Clan? NWA. NWA. Damn, it's not a good one. Oh, These guys uh, definitely uh, work uh, together. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is a weird one. Who put this one together? All right, Fat Joe or E40? Damn. I mean, this is the one that's probably going to make us drink. Fat Joe. Fat Joe, yeah. Oh, my God. Gotcha. All right. You didn't want to drink, huh? Podcast no. or radio? <laughs> Podcast. Podcast. Radio. Oh! Yeah. 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 Wait a minute, I answered that wrong. I'm not doing that wrong. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. Yeah. You know you got to drink too, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, cool. Damn, Mug is going heavy with this shot. Hey, okay. he, he did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to drink. Let's make some noise. Who wanted to drink? Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm, you, it's on you. Uh, oh man. Oh, this is a good one. This let me see. One. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see what's going on here. Oh. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. American me or blood in or blood out. Ooh. American me. Ooh. American me. Ooh. Don't look at me, little puppet. <laughs> Don't look at me. Don't look at me, little puppet. I was scared of that movie. <laughs> Both of them. The other one. Yeah. 
Legit, it's a legit story. No, yeah. America, me and him. Blood and blood. That's when the white guy. He, they're he they're both over. based in the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Right. He, that's ill. That's ill. Okay. The Chronic or All Eyes on Me? The Chronic. Chronic. Kush or Sour? Kush. Kush. Jesus. You, you got to start answering at the same time. I'm not believing <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Remember, you, you got you got <laughs> it. <laughs> 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 no, I know. I know. I <laughs> The Beat Nuts or Souls of Mischief? No, beat Nuts. Uh, that wasn't it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, Souls of Mischief. You got an answer. You got an answer. <laughs> you <laughs> you, you drunk without drinking? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't want to use Alchemist. That just didn't, didn't go together. No, 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 no. Beat Nuts is a group more than production. I, mean, I think of Beat Nuts, I think of both. Nah, Beat Nuts or Alchemist? That was the real one. Oh, that was the real one. That was the real one. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> The question was asked already. Uh, <laughs> we follow Cypress Hill really fucking it up right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. What? <laughs> no, bro, relax. Um, MOP Mob Deep. MOP. Mob Deep. We drinking. We drinking. Now they get the boy. Salute to both. Salute to both. Yes, sir. What's up, I got? Right I'll wait for Sen. Yeah. They're getting smaller and yeah, smaller you're going, now. You're going crazy, man. Yeah. Wow. You need a shot glass. You know? I'm, I'm, I'm a beer head. Shot, I don't you need know. a shot glass in your life, just because that's a yeah. little wild. Beer and tequila goes right together. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. All right. Y'all ready? Boys in the hood or Minister of Society? Boys, Boys in, in the, the hood. hood. Man. Rock him or Karis one? Karis one. Yeah, Karis one. Okay, you ready? Cool G rap or Big L? Cool G rap. Cool G rap. I like this one, man. This is stupid. New York or Miami? New York. New York. See, I don't like that one. Man. <laughs> <laughs> two New Yorkers. <laughs> EPMD or Gangstar? EPMD. EPMD. Jesus. Bucket hats, baby. Mm. But I love them both. Yes. All right. Brand Nubian or Tribe Called Quest? Tribe. Y'all double on Tribe. I, I, I said Tribe. Okay, we drinking. Let's go. I think I make some noise for that. That's, that's <laughs> real. Mama my Wheezy, baby. Mm. This one, I don't know what y'all going to pick. And I need to know why you do pick this. Your own TV raps or video music box? Your own TV raps. Um... Video music box. Okay, I need the explanation for both of y'all. Your MTV raps because um, I, they held it down through those early those years of hip hop when we really needed that show, mm -hmm. and I felt that um, that whole that whole thing that they did and they spotlighted hip hop and then some of the greatest hip hoppers of all time mm -hmm. were on that show. I, I, I Video think. music box because they showed MTV the way. Jeez. Oh, Killed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a beautiful answer. And you, and you next after that. Hmm. Uh, well, I'm gonna change it up though. Okay. Um, big boy or the Baker boys? Ooh, big boy, big boy. Primo or Pete Rock? Primo. Primo. Damn. Moni Love or Yo-Yo? Moni, Moni Love. Moni Love. Yo, yo, the right. hint this, and this is the last the one. The you might as well answer this all, all four of y'all. <laughs> Loyalty or respect? And let's, let's go one by one. Loyalty or respect? Loyalty. Respect. Loyalty. Loyalty. Break it down. If, if, if wow. each, yeah, you can take a shot for it. Fuck it. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't all, it wasn't the same. Yeah, we got to take the shot either. I'll explain it. Explain it, yes. You want some more Mama Wheezy? Ooh, loyalty. I Louis. Well, you know, loyalty. Mm -hmm. Because one person can't do it all by themselves. You need a team, and you mm. got to be loyal to each other, and with loyalty comes the respect. Mm. Without it, there is no respect. Mm. Mm. That's real. And I agree with the brother's thoughts on what he said, but for me, you know, 
Respect is everything. Right. I don't care if you don't even like me, but when you when I come around, right. you show that respect. Mm. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Right. That's real. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, I did. There's different levels of respect, uh, but loyalty. Uh, you know, if you're you're true, you stay loyal. You know, no matter what. Oh man, so if a motherfucker's um, loyal to you, he might not even agree with you, but he ain't gonna wanna kill you because he's loyal to you, you know what I mean? But I could have respect for you, and I don't like what you're thinking and all that shit, and I'm gonna kill you, motherfucker, because I ain't loyal to you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That was profound. That was official and profound. Now, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you guys love more, making the record or performing the record? It's both. It's 50-50. Really? You can't have one without the other, mm -hmm. especially in hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to love both. I mean, some are only good at one. Yeah. You know. I mean, the, the energy's different, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you make a record, and you're in the fucking studio, and you're smoking with the homies, and then the beat's there, and then you, you, the song's done, you're like, God damn, and you listen to that shit, and the fucking speaker's on high, and the, the, that shit's banging, you're like, yeah. And then when you do a show, and you got, you know, 100,000 motherfuckers right there, and you rocking that shit, you're like, ooh. And it's just, it's, it's two different worlds, it's two right. different energies, you know what I mean? Right. It's two different ways of just living as an artist, too. Right. It's like it's some like are better at one and not not better at the other, but some can coexist and just keep killing it and killing it. It's right. like connecting a piece to a puzzle, right? right? If you come to see that song live, you as much as ener the, the energy that you put into making that song, performing it is everything because you win people over in that performance. Like right. if you like your song and you're having fun to it, right. it becomes infectious if it's a good song. You know what I mean? So, like, you got to want to do both. You can't be good at one and not the other. And some of us start good in the studio and we're shit live, but mm. then if you work on it, you can become better at it. Like, for me, I could say, you know, our first years, I was... Like, my energy was yeah, great. You know, but, but, but longevity my, is... I'm sorry, dog. Sorry. Uh, longevity as an artist and to, like, keep your ecosystem, like, right. circulating and keep everything moving... Right. Do your records, do your shows, do your records, do your shows, do your, yeah. do, just keep going. And the more stop. shows you do, you get better at it. Right, right. right. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, again, I was shit in the beginning. My energy was there, but my control and all that. So the that exercise, like you learning. Right, it came with time and doing it. You right. know what I mean? So you got to have love for both. You got to love hitting that stage and performing that song as much as you did created, create, creating it and recording but, but it. But once you already get it on the performance level, it's got to be... So fulfilling though Because something that's subjective In the studio That you think is dope Within the studio right. level And you take it out to the world right. And that world gives you That energy back Yeah That's gotta be something it's, special it's Right there other energies In the studio You're creating something From nothing Right There's right. nothing there You walk in the day And you come out With that motherfucking right. song Right Like oh We just made that shit show But then the tour is fun But, but it's the same shit Every night Right The now, same shit The traveling's the hardest part The shows are the fun part Right, right. And you're doing that every night But that's a different energy You get from the crowd but it ain't the same shit as making the records. Right, right. How about you? Being, being a you being well. part of a, a, a being a musician, you know, I love the stage. Mm -hmm. I love to perform in front of people. You know, that's but, a jazz motherfucker since he was five at the Playboy Jazz Festival. You know, <laughs> yo, cool. but, what the but, fuck? But, but you know, I eighties at five. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What was Jack. it? Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> what about Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah. Five years old. I mean, I mean, I, I knew I knew about the stage before uh, recording, but wow. the energy in recording and creating something is in, incredible. You right. know that energy, but I can't wait to get up on the stage and just like blow it up kill it and just get that same reception or any kind of reception from you know that big energy from the crowd that's that's real fulfilling for me yeah for me it's a it's a 50 50 thing i mean i love being around the brothers in the studio smoking joints hitting uh, the, the bong and all that shit and recording jams and all that shit and then um we get a chance to tour around the world and have people trip out on what the fuck we just did, you know, six months earlier. So it, it all goes together. You, you, if, you, you, if you don't record, you can't tour. So record to tour, you know what I mean? And, and that's what it's all about. When you come down to talking about being a musician and uh, actively, you know, 
uh, you know, hip hop band that, that we do our thing, you know, there's not one without the other. You know, you got to have them both. You got and you got to figure out that w that balance in the process of your band blowing the fuck up and becoming world big time famous. Right. You know what I mean? And remember that it's all about the recording, and then you got to go do this fun shit. Right. Yeah. And the fun shit isn't always so fun as it is work, like Mug just mentioned. You know what I mean? Make some noise for that. And you also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Later, Vanna White. So, well, speaking of going on tour, how different was it going on tour with Limp Biscuit? It, the it was different in the sense of okay, well, let's start with you know from back in the days when we were doing just strictly hip hop shows, and then we come across this Lollapalooza thing, right? right? And then everything switched from there. Right. So from 1992, late 1992, we saw people walking on top of each other, <laughs> flipping backwards off the stage and things like, like crowd that. crowd surfing and shit. Yeah, right. we saw that. <laughs> so when, when, when Biscuit came around um, and the, the size of their production and the things, the outrageous things they were doing, because Biscuit was always outrageous. Right. You know what I mean? So when we seen that shit, I'm like, okay, we just got to go up there and just be ourselves. Mm. No matter what they do, which I give respect to, you know, we just had to go out there and represent, you know, B, Sam, Bobo, and Muggs, mm. and be and do what we do because right. that's what people came to watch us for. Mm. Not, not for, not what they're gonna do is what we're gonna do. Mm. And we always figured out a way to, you know, scratching that, you know, marking that motherfucking stage that we were on and leaving it, leaving that mark on there forever. Mm. Yeah. We was always competitive, too, about right. it. You know, like, we were either going to steal your... this was Biscuit's tour, or this was your... your well, that was Biscuit's tour. It was their tour. Oh, okay. uh, it was called Maps the Tour. Yeah. Maps the Tour. Yeah, that's right. Maps the Tour was, right. the, was the first year. Yeah, free, 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 free concert. Free concert, first time Which is crazy. Ever, the first time ever when it was like, we're going to give your music, Nori, the shit you worked hard for, right. away for free. And just shut up and sit back and go have a seat. Oh. Were you conflicted <laughs> about that? But they Originally, were paying y'all for the tour, obviously. No, I knew there was a future. You, you knew that you that was the fight, future? You can't fight technology. Right, right. right. And technology is the realest shit yeah, ever. The, there was the horse, and then there was the car. And the horse motherfuckers was like, well, look at that stupid fucking metal thing you're driving down the street. Which Metallica was fighting in. They technology were, yeah. never loses. So like, you know, the record companies, record companies were behind on that uh, shit. You know, they right. didn't fall in the way they could have and you know put a big dent in the game but we saw something different so we went on that tour with Biscuit right. and uh, yeah you know it was it was fun I mean like yeah their production is crazy but they, right. they scaled it down for that one because it was significantly smaller venues than they were playing at the time uh, all the shows was free for the fans yeah so nobody wow. paid you just got in line and whoever got in a was in the show <laughs> and then the, the door was locked not for That's nothing crazy. Right. not for nothing we gave we gave it a hell of a run though you know what I mean those fans were there for it like when right. we went on and we played our set it was significant impact you know what I mean like they were going crazy it was explosive that was what, what was the cool thing about touring with Limp Biscuit is that you know their fans and our fans you know mixed together well yeah. and it made it for a great tour you know what I mean um, they brought it we brought it and it was a win win but you know, at the time, because we were on this Napster tour, you know, it wasn't very popular to be doing that shit. But, right. you know, we're always like, well, fuck. Because Napster seemed like at that time, especially like the, the, the industry devil, like this is the right. people that's, yeah, yeah. Right, but right. they kind of saw where the industry was going to go. Right. right. Even if they didn't really so fully know they this. Were they, they, their time. they were ahead of their time. They were ahead of You got to skate where the puck's about to go, not right. where the puck's at. Yeah, you know and, what I mean? And for us, it was like, okay, Limp Bizkit's asking us to, to play support role here. You know, I imagine some great money, and we're like looking at it like, yeah, it was all right. right. Um, it was, it was more the fact that we were going to get it out in front of these fans and like possibly win. You some guys of them obviously, over. sorry to cut you, but but it seemed like you guys always understood the investment well, in you, getting in front of the people. Because you know what happens, like you might not get the show money that night, but your merch is going to pop. Mm. Right, thirty percent. Your publishing checks that are already crazy are gonna pop another twenty, thirty percent right. because of that shit. You might have lost like a little bit of something for them shows for the intermediate, but for the long run, your shit's about to. You gain you passive income yeah, for, yes. forever. Mailbox money just just right. there because you you sacrifice a little bit there. You know what I mean? So you you gotta understand. You gotta look at your whole thing. What you're doing is an ecosystem, and just like. And 
invest your time and energy where it's where it's the best for you to create the energy to right. get the you know what I mean. And and the other thing was you know the competitive nature of it, right? Being a hip hop group, going with this this band that's very aggressive and holding ours within it. You know what I mean? Like we carry it, right. and because uh, that's important to us. Like we can we you can put us in any fucking scenario. Yeah. And we're gonna rip shit. We right. there's been shows that we did where it's like all metal, right. and we're the only hip hop on there. And this is right. before we started kind of doing the fusion type shit right. and just still playing hip hop. Right. And we're opening for or playing support for Metallica in a fucking metal metal festival in mm. fucking Germany. Wow. There's Biohazard. There's Fear Factory. There's the Deftones. There's Corn. There's all these different groups there, and we're in there, right? And as representative of hip hop's, we're hip hop. <laughs> we're fucking killing it in the middle of all these fucking metal groups who you know a lot yeah. of these cats came to see and and converting them into Cypress Hill fans. And that that's been one of the gifts that we've had that competitive spirit in us that we're gonna go out there and we're gonna make it hard for whoever's coming on yeah. after yeah. us. Like for me, there was all these motherfuckers that they started, like they couldn't rap. So they started getting making rock bands and they was rapping on rock shit, and they, but they couldn't rap. So we was like, oh, check this out. I'm gonna show you how to do this shit real quick. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> uh, we never had to have a big production, you know, all these crazy things on stage and everything props like and that shit, and right. props. We never had to do that, you know, and a lot of- But rock, at one point you did, you had like the, the, the skull. Buddha. The Buddha. Well, you know, the Buddha. Yeah, 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 we yeah. had the skull on the backdrop for a right. long time and, and we, we tried to keep it like really like about our energy, right? Mm. And then there was the time we would take Buddha out with us and put him in front of the backdrop and holding that big ass leaf. Right. And you know, that was probably like the the biggest stage figure that we ever had on stage next along with the king. We had a king that blew up and he was sitting on the throne right. with a big ass joint or spliff or whatever. And um, those, you know, those were the biggest sort of visuals that we ever had on stage with us because for us it was all about our energy. If we can't if we can't move the crowd on our energy alone and and not have all the fucking bells and whistles that you right. see a lot of groups spend a lot of production money on then what the fuck are we doing? If I can't rock a small, if we can't rock a small club or a huge fucking house without all that shit, mm. then what are we doing? And so we've always relied on our energy and all that other shit is just, you know, a, a visual to like be extra. So, you know, we really, we, we really focused on light shows for a minute because we knew a lot of our fans pop shrooms before our show and would, mm watched the show so we gave him something to right. see you know what I mean but most of it is you know his energy on the turntables his yeah, energy that, on the that mic that early shit it was before electronic music like it was we, we, we got the inspiration from psychedelic rock you know what I mean from mm. the 60s right that, that, that electronic music was weird for us growing up it was motherfuckers was like had high heels and some vaporizers on their nose eyeliner like, and the, shit like, the, the electronic <laughs> culture we never that shit was weird we was like that shit's over there you know what's crazy about um, the group is I could go to an all hardcore hip hop party they'll play Cypress Hill. Right. Absolutely. I could go to a soft party they'll play Cypress Hill. I could go to an all white party where literally it's only white people there they're playing Cypress Hill. I could go to any like you guys are a universal group. Was that something that was calculated or was that something that was done by mistake? Organic. Organic. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Not by Organic. mistake, excuse me. Organic. Organic. Mm -hmm. we, we just did whatever the vibe was, you know, like, you know, it's, it's, it's like painting pictures, you know, mugs would make the beats and be like, yo, I hear this on this shit. So I would try to write what that was. And then, you know, same, you know, as we're constructing this shit, it's just working towards that goal of, of painting that fucking picture. You right, know what I'm tapestry. Saying? Let, let me ask you, how important, was it even important to to represent Latinos when you came out? Like, I always tell Nori, when he when CNN came on the scene, just him flipping those couple of Spanish words was a was a, like a like a Big. beacon for Latinos out there, yeah, hip hop heads, you know. It's it's very important. To you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we. But the thing is, is that 
what I try to explain to people is like, we never Latinos are a part of hip hop culture right. since day one. Yeah. But you know, the DJs, the graffiti arts, the b boys, everything, we mm. were never as much in the forefront, right? For whatever reasons. Mm. And so, for groups like you to come out, right. like, did you guys know what you were doing? Like, how much, like, what it could do for Latinos in hip hop? Not right away. You know what I mean? Like, we, uh, as far as me speaking, mm. and I. I think that we we were just more concentrated on being a, a solid hip hop band, and and since my brother had already done the Latino thing and and Frost and these these were all guys that we rolled with, you know what I mean? And I I kind of felt like uh, we needed to be we needed to separate, right? But at the same time, um, it was coming it was showing through it was coming through in the vocals. Right. You know, and you could tell it wasn't kind of, overt, which is what, right. what made yeah. it dope. It, exactly. Well, exactly. You know. And 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 when I look back at it, I think it was a very important move to, you know, to be on there on that level because in, it opened up to not just America or whatever. It opened up to the whole. Well, right. what's crazy is that you know we got signed from an all Spanish song that. Um, Send Dog had done right. Not called, Latin lingo. No, it's called Caliente, Cosa okay. Caliente, or something Caliente. like this, right? It was whack. And uh, you know that's <laughs> what God is saying. But it got It's not that whack, buddy. And, 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 it was good. It was never, good. Obviously, we didn't end up using it, but like you know, they they saw the potential in a in a Latino hip hop group, which there wasn't at the time, and we right. happened to be Latinos. And then, yeah. You know what I mean? And so they thought, we're going to lean on that. And we were like, nah, don't put us in that box. Right. We're going to sprinkle our shit. Mm -hmm. We're going to sprinkle our shit. Like Muggs would say, you know, we're going to just sprinkle little pieces of it. Because realistically, there's no market for that. And we're going to be stuck. Man, the real shit was, you know what I mean? Like, you came out and like you marketed yourself as Latino. Yeah. And then like, let's make dope music. You don't even need to know what we look like. We're gonna do our shit like this. Hence the mystery. Hear the fucking music. Right. Organic we don't even need shit. to be in the pictures. Here's the music. You know what I mean? Boom. And, and we sprinkled it with Latin shit because it it is a part of who we are. You right. know what I mean? But you don't you don't lean on it like this is my my, right, my thing. Right. It's, it's not my a gimmick. Image, my it's gimmick. not a gimmick. Because right. at that it time, it's boring. Right. You know I mean? Because at that time, if you were Latino, you were expected to sound like either Frost or Mellow, and right. we. Weren't that? Yeah, and we for us. Gonna, yeah, and we weren't gonna allow anyone to box us in like that because yeah. we were we were trying to make hip hop music, not Latino hip hop, and in doing that and saying you know don't market us this way, market us as a hip hop group. We opened the doors for other Latinos because we showed what Latinos can do just without a fucking label. All right. Just being a hip hop group, you know, and that's a label in itself, but it was representing hip hop. Because you weren't overtly trying to be Latino. That's right. the thing. Like we were just right. being hip hop, being right. Latino, which right. is a big difference. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know right. What I'm saying? And and we never really we never really played to it heavy. It was just sprinkles. It was like the weed songs. It wasn't like shit like we planned it. You know, it was like whatever mugs gave me, if it spoke to me this way, this is the way I'm going, right? right. So that's that's the way the Latino shit was. Oh, this shit sounds like we yeah. should. Back then, you know, we like, come from a different he, part of nice, LA. Right? He's we're, nice for a Latino. That's, they used to say things like that. Like, I'm nice for a Latino. Yeah, like I'm saying, like, period. They used to oh. be like, oh, like, he's nice, but he's nice for a Latino. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. they used to say shit like that. Yeah. And, um, I think I think you right, guys right. transcended that, and I think what what deaded it all was pun. Pun, yes. killed it. No, yeah, pun. You yeah, guys he, transcended he, that, he, and then when he, pun he came, he was the nail on the yeah, sure. it all. Hey, because my man right there, and Joe as well. Yes, yeah. that yeah. Joe. Yes. And, but but you know, and salute to Joe, man. Flowers to my man. Yeah. That's Before been, I walked in, Joe called me. I forget what he called me about. This was crazy because I was so studying y'all and I was like trying to get him out. He was like, and I said, yeah, I'm, I'm about to um, interview Cypress Hills. He said, well, those are the only guys I look up to. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Joe is my man. He's, he's all, we've always been locked in, man. Right. You know, he asked me to get on a, on a record with him punning Cool G rap and yeah, that was wow. like, wow. Yeah, it's oh, it's it's called, of, wishful thinking. Yeah, yeah, it's the B side of that joint. Of right. the, the still not a player joint. Yeah. yeah. yeah and this is where but, part is coming up. Yes, yes, but, yes. but, you know, it's, so salute to my man man Joe and it's much respect but pun was a different animal mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. in terms of being an MC and a writer and a stylist mm -hmm. like a lot of motherfuckers are not doing shit unless they heard his style right and you know I fucks with pun in that way like cause he was a stylist like his flippage his burbage and just he was 
Rest in peace, man. He was one. He was one of the best. He don't get enough flowers. One of the best. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Hold on, hold on. Mo was saying something. Do you remember what you were gonna say? Hmm. You were gonna say something. You were saying something. I don't remember. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 All that pun, right? You got, you got anything to oh, say about that? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And you know, um, on on the Latino thing, I think it kind of also hit when we went to like places like South America, <laughs> and they love hip hop. But Cypress Hill gave them something that they can relate to. Yeah, they can understand. Hearing. They they, right. were, they can understand and they can they can uh, relate. And doing like when we did this the the Spanish album, that was like uh, for them it was like oh my god they're really like listening to us. Mm -hmm. You know that this is for us. Mm -hmm. And when we do like uh, want to get high in Spanish, right. they're singing the hook. Right. I mean B doesn't even have to <clears throat> B doesn't even have to sing the hook. Are you about to cry? I got emotional. No, no, but but they don't. You know, they they sing the hook because it's it's like something like wow. You know, they 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 got it. You know, because a lot of them they're not speaking in English, but they love hip hop. Yeah, it was crazy seeing that. Like you know, before we even did our Spanish um, album or EP, whatever you want to call it, to go in in these uh, Spanish speaking countries. And them, you know, singing the songs all in English. They don't know what the fuck, or maybe they got some sort of translation on it, right. but it's a lot of slang. So, how do you properly translate that, right? But mm -hmm. to see them singing the songs, and, you know, for us, that album, that Spanish album, Grandes, Grandes Exitos, right? That was, uh, that was our play in saying, you know what? We know we got a, a Latino fan base. We're going to fucking smash one for them, right? To them. Yeah, and uh, we didn't really know how it would be well received. That, yeah, well, right. it would be received because, like, the way that Send, I, Send Dog and I flip in Spanish in Los Angeles, it's a different sort of like dialect. Puerto Puerto it's a style. hybrid, right? You know what I mean? So, like, everywhere, ha like anywhere, it has but, different slang. But it slang. didn't matter because everybody's just gonna right. It's, it's, it's representative of them, right? So we didn't know that. Right. We were just doing the shit. And when it hit in South America and it hit in Spain and it, 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 you know, in Central America, man, we were like, oh, shit. And then you like, it's a whole nother career that just opened up. It wasn't there yesterday. Like, right. there it, it is. It, if that, yeah. It fucking birthed like reggaeton and all that, like you and it, us. And I, you know, I was about to say that. You. I was about to say that because you know I used to I always take advantage. I thought I did reggaeton, and I would like we would go to like uh, hip hop spots, and then I would notice Spanish people were in the building. I'm like, I'm taking full advantage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm taking full advantage of the crowd. Nobody else can do this shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember I had um, I remember one year um, I had the Puerto Rican Day Parade, and. Um, I had, it was me, Jada Kiss, and, so, and somebody else. And I brought out, so it was a Puerto Rican parade, so I brought out Nina Sky, Daddy Avey, Fat Joe. Oh, you I just brought out every fucking Latino <laughs> that I knew. And in. I just threw the bike at everybody, like, your turn. <laughs> 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 and I was like, fuck you. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I take full advantage. I, I remember, you know, I, I did some shit with, with Tony Touch, salute to my man, yeah. Tony yeah. Thought. You got the oh, mixtape. You ain't seen the mixtape yeah. documentary? I wonder if we, seen I wonder we made the cut. He, we did interviews for I've it. Been, I've been, I've been I don't know if we made the cut, but I've seen people post it. Props to him for that release, man. Mixtape documentary. Tony Touch, but yeah. Salute to my man, Thought. You know what I'm saying? So I've done many collaborations with Toka, you know what I mean? That's one of my good friends right. to you, motherfucker. He's a great you know dude, man. And, uh, you know, so I did this joint with him and Nina Sky. And, you know, he wanted to film a video for it. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. He's all fly to, you know, to, to New York, Papi. You know what I'm saying? I got you. So I go out there and we do it. And it's for... Puerto Rican Day Parade. Oh, you and have to experience that? Yeah, it was. That hey, shit is wild, man. We don't have that shit in LA. So, like, it was just another experience. It's like when. You don't have the Cuban Day Parade out there? No, man. It's not the Cuban Day Parade. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. The Cuban Festival, remember that? They don't do Ray Marcos in LA? It's not the same thing. I don't remember that. It's not the same thing. And, you know, Muggs would give me experiences and shit like this, but, like, Tony asked me to come out to do the video for for that shit. And, you know, it was fucking amazing. And then Fat Joe comes through on his float. He got yeah. the flyest fucking float yeah. Yeah. in the fucking Puerto Rican Day yeah. Parade. It was yeah. like nothing, man. You know, like, that's that's the cool thing about New York, man, is it has like, 
<laughs> they, they, they party the fuck out. They, 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 they all got culture. Uh, they, they, they all got mad yeah. culture. Says so every culture is thick and celebrated. You, you know what's funny about the Peru de Peru? My father used to make me ride the train, and I used to sit on this a uh, cooler, and he's made me don't get off the cooler. And then I would sit on the cooler, and then we would make it to, to the actual Puerto Rican Parade, but you gotta get there early to get a spot. So you gotta get there like around 7, 7, uh, 30, 7 38. So I would open up the cooler, and my father <laughs> would have me selling beers. I swear to God. <laughs> seven years old. Hey, Such a Puerto Rican you know thing. I <laughs> never saw nothing wrong with this until I had children of my own. How much for them beers? How much for Back in the five bucks. Five bucks. Five bucks. Five bucks back then. 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 back then. Five bucks back then. back then. Five bucks 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 I think the history of it all is important, you know what I mean? Because we were the the kids, we were we were the kids that everybody had caught it out, you know what I mean? No, not, yeah. not from our point of view. We, no, I'm talking about from the original inception. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Kids in general, like, like being right. kids. He was off, you know, doing some hardcore gang banging stuff. Right. I was working warehouses, I hadn't met Bobo yet. Muggs was always the, the driven one, trying to, you know, you know, go get him. You know, we need him for these for these vocals. Muggs had a group gonna before Cypress. Right. He was already well, doing things. Well, we knew Muggs before yeah. that group. Yeah, and yeah. and you know, so that but that group was the the entry into the game. Right. You know what I mean? And because uh, we were already boys before then. Mm -hmm. You know, Julio G. Salute to him. Yeah, he introduced yeah, us to Muggs. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know, we were like minded individuals, all of us. The the type of shit we listened to, aside from hip hop before hip hop. And hip hop, you know, th this is like something we all had in common, and and uh, you know that's how we met. Mugs was was through Julio and shit like that. So let's talk about Julio for a second. Like, um, like how did you how did you hook up with Julio? Uh, I big was, up Julio G. By yeah, the way. big up Julio yeah, G. Yeah. Legend. Yeah. Um, I had a homeboy in in Bell Gardens that had a cousin that knew Julio, and I was DJing some hip hop shit. But he was on the radio. No, no, he wasn't on the radio. He wasn't on the radio. But yeah. 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 LA was about some freestyle shit, and it, it was all Latino. You know, all the neighborhoods was Latino. Where we was, was freestyle music. Freestyle music. Freestyle music. Freestyle yeah, like, music. Like TK and hip hop was like you could play Planet Rock. You could play Planet Rock at the party, and that was the hip hop you played. So. I was I, I was on some hip hop shit. And he was like, "Yo, my, my my cousin's homie's on some hip hop shit." So I went to this club. With, it was a Capri, Capri right? Capri, yeah. This club called a Capri, right there, but right, 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 right where they lived and shit. So I went over there, met Julio, and then kicked it with Julio for about a year DJing. And then one day he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna bring these dudes over. We need to make a cassette, cool." And I was like, "Pull up." And then B came, your brother came. How did y'all go with Julio then? Well, Julio was, you know, he went to Southgate High with. Mm. Uh, did he? Yeah, with with Send Dog's brother. Yeah. Uh -huh. And and so we knew Julio through, and he was, you know, in the b boy circles over there. Man, he was nice on the floor, but so was Bugs. Bugs is a beast on the motherfucking floor. My oh, you know, uh, different know. story, <laughs> but you know, we knew Julio through through uh, through Mello, you mm. know, and they were both into the the hip hop. Shit, you know, b boying and all that stuff before mm. we got into rapping. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, so that's how we knew Julio. And Julio eventually transitioned out of the b boy shit into the turntables. Mm. You know what I mean? And and um, you know that's when these two guys met when they both transi transitioned out of the b boy shit into you know getting on the turntables and doing shit. And so we knew Julio for a while. You know what I mean? Um, we saw him go from you know. Doing doing breakdance shit into going to turntables and eventually going to K Day, which was the hip hop station yeah, yeah, in yeah. LA at the time. On AM. Became, it's like man. you know how there's yeah. a certain clubs and a certain parties in that right. neighborhood, right? And we right. all go into those clubs and parties, and you see motherfuckers like going through their stages right. and shit. Right. And and you know, so Julio, we saw him go through all that, and uh, you know when we were just sort of doing this shit at a, as a hobby. He, you know, them them two met. 
And where's Felly Fell at this time? Is he, is he, we, didn't is know, we didn't know who, who, who no, he was. No, he was too young at that time. No, he was okay. too young. He wasn't yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, this was like in, what, 87? 86. 86. Yeah. I was 16 years old right. at the so time. So we, we was kicking it in 86, and our first record came out in 91. Wow. I mean, so we was kicking it. Yeah. Wow. The, 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 the Mellow Man and Julio right actually went to high school together. Wow. Right? So... So we we were always aware of his of of him in, in the area, right? Mm. So when we first started, you know, doing the rap thing, the only other guy in Southgate High School that DJed was Julio G. Yeah, and wow. Julio was Melo's DJ when he got on with Mentirosa and all that. Like for his most it, Melo's run, it was Julio G. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, and as he, his DJ. Yeah, as his wow. DJ, and wow. and Tony G was, you know. His his like the guy that that um, Julio was like yeah. a, apprentice to, you know what I mean? Like Tony was like the master at the fucking time. We all looked up to Tony G, and you know Julio G came from Tony. Right, you right. know what I'm saying? So, and we it, you know we went that far back with Julio, you know, and that's why he even spent time on tour with us, like DJing. Wow, you know what I'm saying? Um, so salute to Julio G yes. out there. Yes. 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 If it wasn't for Julio, we don't meet mugs, and there's no fucking Cypress Hill. Yeah, there's that, there's that connection that all of a sudden happened one year, and yeah, and, and, and brought. It was Julio from the neighborhood. Julio was from Linwood. Yeah, yeah. he's from Linwood. He's I was from, from Linwood. Lawrence. They was from Southgate. Yeah, Julio's from Linwood. And and it's all close in proximity. We, was, yeah. kicking yeah. we was kicking it, and then one day, we had a homeboy named Eli. He was like, "Yo, I met these two dudes from New York, called Brett and Sean from Seven Eight Three." It was my these, these two kids from um, East New York, from Linden Projects in East mm. New York, and they were signed with Ice T. Mm. And then I got down with them. And, they were signed uh, Ice T. You said they were signed Ice T. Okay, cool. And then we was throwing a party in mm. East LA, and they came. And um, it was like, hey, you want to do a show with us? We throwing a party in East LA, and they came. And then um, eventually, I got with them, put out a record with them on Colors, the Colors soundtrack. Colors soundtrack, yeah. yeah. And then um, we went out and. Um, Put out an album and shit, and you know, and um, those are some of the homies too. Wow, he was down with Rap Syndicate at one point, right? Rhyme Syndicate, yeah. Rhyme Syndicate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice T, yeah. Rhyme Syndicate. Um, right. That group Seven Eight Three was down with Rhyme Syndicate. Right. So um, we we we, we was down with Ice T. He was like a little, little, little older homie, you know what I mean? Putting us up on game, talking shit, letting us know what's up. He's like, you want to fucking be in this rap game? Y'all want to hang out and like flex in front of these bitches and shit? You know what I mean? Yeah, y'all motherfuckers don't even put in the motherfucking work. You know what I mean? <laughs> put in the motherfucking work, homie. You got to show up to this shit eight hours a fucking day like a fucking job if you think you're gonna get money this off this motherfucking shit. This, yeah. In like '87. In '87. And I was I was a little kid like. Hey man, we gotta put in this fucking work, yo. If we're gonna get this shit, you oh, know what I mean? It up. You, 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 this ain't like okay. a little a little hobby or some right. shit. If we're gonna do this shit, we're gonna do it right. We need to put the fucking work in, like it's a nine to five. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then he was always closest to the sources, so we'd oh. absorb from him. I see. No, oh, mugs, okay, because okay. he'd be with right. like Ice and them. Right. You know what I mean? Absorbing. Yeah, this was a big deal. Yeah, but the time. music industry was small right. back then, yo. There was nothing. There was like there was no access to a record label. You had to know a homie, either I knew a homie or I knew you that knew somebody at the label, but that was it. There wasn't, there wasn't a shortcut to the label. And I got to big up Brett B., you know what I'm saying? Because yep. he actually taught me how to write a song. I went, you know, I was writing raps before and I was pretty good at writing. But like, I didn't know shit about writing songs and he, he knew that. You know, and, back then in, in rap, there wasn't hooks yet. Motherfuckers right. was rapping, so it was like hooks. Right. Like bridges, yeah, making songs, making records. Like yeah. in other in other music genres, they were doing that, you know. But in hip hop, it wasn't so prevalent, right? So, you know, the one thing about Brett is he showed me how to break those pieces down. You know what I mean? Because like I didn't know how to write a song up until, you know, we. I think it was. Um, I think maybe hand on the pump, like was like yeah. the key in where I I was like, oh, I get it now. Right. You know what I mean? In our demos, in our in all our demos, like we did a lot. There's shit that you know people would trip out on because we don't even sound like us at that point. But you know, at a point where we snapped in, right? Hand on the pump was one of the songs where Brett, like we we co-wrote that song. He mm -hmm. took lead, but I co-wrote it. Yeah. 
and that sort of gave me the 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 oh this is how you write a fucking like structure it right yeah. and so I started structuring structuring all my writing after this right. and uh, man if it wasn't for that experience with fucking Brett right. I wouldn't have never never learned how to write a fucking song so salute to you Brett salute to Brett. Salute to Brett you know what I'm saying so um you guys marketed yourself as like the the rap Chi Chi Chong right. I, I, I don't know if I pronounced it. Chi Chong. Chi Chong. Chi Chong. But how dope was it for them to embrace y'all? Like, because. Yeah, seeing them on the dock was. Yeah, yeah. like, like see, at the beginning, they, they had jokes on y'all and everything. Oh, yeah. It wasn't like, yeah. like, you could tell y'all friends. Yeah, they yeah. discovered like, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I broke into their house. <laughs> <laughs> they told me I should be practicing. <laughs> As a so, kid growing up, you know, Chi yeah. Chong movies were everything. Of course, yeah. Right. For us, kids in Southgate. Right. And. Wanted to be like them, led right. to all this shit here. Right. <laughs> so it's kind of very. Uh, I received it very well, and I was very grateful. You know? Right. You know, for me, it wasn't more like not necessarily being like them because we're not right. like them. You know what I mean? But but they, but, you know, but the but weed. The, the it was representing yeah. the way they did, right. unapologetically right. rebellious style, mm -hmm. and they didn't really care what people thought. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So. We said, "Fuck it, we're going to be that because this is who it is who we are." And right. you know, they were definitely an inspiration because yeah. we all grew up to their movies. Yeah, yeah. We, we was like on the corner drinking, smoking, doing whatever right there. You know what I mean? Then we was like, "Let's just go in the studio and do the same shit." All right. And start making records. And, and we was like, "Oh, the money's better right here." Yeah. <laughs> and, and meeting right. Cheech and Chong, I mean, I think yeah, we. I'm saying they embrace y'all. That's what. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the part because you know people could have been like, "Well, uh, these kids are kind of like kind of trying to be like us." Fuck them, but they didn't do that. They actually no. embraced y'all. Yeah, that, they that's, that's what's dope about. It. They were actually on two of our albums. They they did right. um, intro pieces or like you know transition pieces or in, you know sketches wow. or whatever. And like I remember the first time we did some shit with them, I I couldn't keep it together. I was laughing the whole fucking time, and I right. blew the session because Chong was hilariously funny. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I know that's redundant, but he right. was. Right. Um, right. But having them say yes, right? right? Well, we've been praising them the whole time and, you know, sort of referencing them in lines and that, like, you know, Red and everybody else did after that. Um, you know, it was everything to have them come and do sketches for us right. and be funny for us and then develop a relationship with them because I did meet and greets with Chong and, you know, sat with both of them in, in different places and we've all done that with them and, and they really embraced us, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, to have, like, guys that influenced us be right. like that, it, you know, fuck, man. I mean, there's, there's no words that can really describe that. It's sort of like Chuck D. I mean, we grew up fucking right. with Public Enemy. Like, it was one of our biggest influences. And to be able to work with him and so him embrace in a group with him. And do it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's surreal. But with Cheech and Chong, I mean, they... They were one of the biggest influences in terms of the cannabis representation. So right. for them to embrace us right. and say, yeah, these motherfuckers are the guys. We fuck with them. Right. Everybody else that was in that industry fucked with us at that, you know, at that point. Did... Y'all ever have a smoke off with them? Who smokes more? A smoke off. We That's did. a versus that needs to happen. Maybe back in their <laughs> younger days they smoked a lot, but like I, I think... You One know. of them don't smoke no more. One of them. Yeah. Well, they 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 sort of sort of smoke. Nobody can outsmoke be real. Come but on, man. Who's gonna outsmoke? Ain't nobody me? fucking with me. Man. I got my money on anybody. I okay. put the house okay. on Snoop anybody. Dog? I put the house oh, on be real. Right. You know. He smokes a lot. I, know, I might have to get <laughs> the beats in the hood over here. Like he's so yeah. fucked up. He all, don't even know. All the guys <laughs> that we know as the big smokers smoke a lot, right? Right. Either they smoke a lot of joints. Right. Or they smoke a lot of blunts, right. or might one might do a lot of dab hits, or this or that, right? I do it all. Right. So Wait. like, you know, in the realm of 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 the homies where right. we all smoke heavy, I mean, we can all smoke flour together, like right. you know, and hang, you know, right. as many joints as I can smoke. Burner and Snoop could smoke as many. Smoke right. Dizza, Currency, all Just, the guys, yeah, right? right. They're all pros. It would just be one big smoke session. Right. But the guys who could do everything. That's, that's, that's everything. That's, that's Wiz and myself. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We, we do it all. Like, so if it's edibles, we fuck with that. If it's, if it's the, the dabs, we do that. If it's the flower smoking, we do all that. So really, you know, Wiz is like a fucking monster like I am. 
I don't do all of that. I you do all that. Micro dose the other day was Styles P on Dream Champs. Oh, oh, no, that was oh, that was that that's that's true. Shrooms. That was that's different. That's that's shrooms. Shrooms. We used to do shrooms we on stage. That. Yeah. On yeah. stage. But that wasn't shrooms. raw shrooms. I like raw shrooms. That was chocolate. Yeah. 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 No, I love my process and all that. I like. But this crew right here, we used to do shrooms on stage. We'd pop like maybe an eighth of shrooms and fucking go on stage. Was y'all hallucinating? Would y'all feel? Yeah. You didn't hear the story in the in the documentary with Seth? And the hat? <laughs> he got offended by the hat. Oh, hey, yeah, the guy bothered hey, him, right? Hey, and yeah. we, were, we were doing... <laughs> this um, is hilarious. We were doing this place I'll called... I out. Hey, mm. we, we were doing this place called Casa Camino Real, right? And, mm. and it's a it's a spot that was legendary in, in early hip-hop in Los Angeles. Sounds like a lot of tequila was in there. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> okay, cool. Right? <laughs> Gang bangers yeah, and yeah, everything, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. And I remember we got this purple unicorn acid. Remember that shit? <laughs> Poop, it, it, purple unicorn yeah, acid? Yes, somebody got it at a Grateful like Dead. Go Somebody got it at a Grateful Dead concert. Wow. Even and, worse. <laughs> and we fucking popped it. Do you remember that? No, I don't. Do you <laughs> Why would you remember that? No, no, no. No, you, you fucking definitely popped the shit with me. We were like, or no, no, you weren't there. No. Maybe I was the only one that popped it. <laughs> you were the only unicorn that day. It was the only unicorn. <laughs> and I swear to God, dog, I popped this shit and... and uh, you know, like we're doing the show and everything got crazy, like in the middle of the show. Like I'm walking on stage and I'm feeling like I'm walking in quicksand. All right. right. That's one. All right. And then, you know, this is at the time where the new style of lighting is coming on with those fucking beams that switch right. colors. They're like a stream. The neon beam of, Yeah. Okay. And I'm like in the middle of the show and we, I start peeking and... I, I catch eye with that fucking beam and I'm just looking up at the light doing my verse like totally concentrating on the light show that's happening above me mm. and I don't know what these guys were doing in the middle of that but I was just totally fucking snapped into that fucking light show and that was the type of shit <laughs> that would happen while we were fucking doing psychedelics on stage because most that's, of this, that's what mushrooms is called psychedelics well, well we would do it, mushrooms well, it is a psychedelic. on that <laughs> night I did acid but most, mo a lot of other times we were doing mushrooms. A mushroom yeah. considered psychedelic? Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I, I took a mess tab one night and I was on a seesaw, but I was by myself. <laughs> And not and even was, on a seesaw. It was going up and down. <laughs> you just take an ounce of mushrooms and put them in a coffee grinder and grind them up to dust and then put them in some honey. That part. Mix oh, it man. up and then just take a little Scott spoon. Scott gave me a Just um, take a little um, spoon. Is that mushroom tea? Or no? Like That's all day. Mushroom tea? Yeah, you could take that honey. Wait, you could do mushroom in coffee? Oh, bobo. No, you just put it in the Bobo was the king of mushroom tea. Mm. All that shit's easy. <laughs> Scott Storch was doing the mushroom tea. Yeah, mushroom tea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that hits you quick and it hits you hard. It's light and it just like turns you. Well, if you take too much, it's not light. Yeah, and we, y'all ever we, got too hot? Did you we never before? did microdose back in those, uh, those days. You never no, microdose. You, you, you macrodose. You didn't macrodose. It was all macro. <laughs> you overdosed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The other one time I did so much. There was no microdose back in 1992. <laughs> we know. Everything was overdosed. I did some mushroom tea. Uh, we were doing Smoking Grooves uh, mm. tour. Mm. And uh, uh, it, it was in Colorado. Mm. And some homies came, you know, and they, they brought some mushroom tea and everything. They, t they said, only take a little bit. I did, like, the whole damn cup. You did a lot of bit. He did a lot of bit. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. whatever anybody tell y'all to do, y'all do the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> it's the punk rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, and uh, within minutes, I was I was done. I was done. leaking all over, man. I only knew this fool's phone number, I mean, on the hotel phone, uh -huh. you know, room. And, uh -huh. and uh, first thing I says. I can't think. It was. It's like some horror movie shit. I'm like Bobo, and he's like, "Help me!" <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, "I can't think." <laughs> yeah, yeah. He well, was a, this was on the show day. He can't think. This, this was, was on the show day. On his birthday. Well, oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I don't remember that show, but I somehow made it to the stage, and I couldn't play. For the first time in my life, I could not play. Right. I somehow got up on the stage, 
and I was playing some crazy <laughs> rhythms. He up was there. in a multiverse, <laughs> playing some other rhythm that we did not understand <laughs> yet. Yeah, yeah, he had, he had, a, he had the homies. Sample that because that might yeah. be the future. He had the homies like cut me off the stage and put me in the bunk. Like, yo, get this fool off the stage, you know. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no mushroom tea for him. <laughs> what, what's your favorite place to perform at? That's tough because everywhere, you know, we get a, a pretty goddamn good reception. Mm. New York's always been crazy with our annual, you know, show down there. Mm. Nuts. But I would say in the last, like, big shows that we did, like festival style, France. France. Them motherfuckers went off for some Cypress Hill shit. Mm. Right? They get live. Incredible. Live. When it's done properly, um, you know, and it, it goes off correctly, you know, Los Angeles, California, is, I always mm. like to perform my own backyard yep. and, and, and flex my style. Right. <laughs> Southgate, nigga. Mm. Y'all just showed in Southgate? Like, no. in recent no. years? No, no okay. never. Because that could right now be chaotic. They don't no, want us there. They're, they're, they don't want us down there. Wow. It, it, the it, city or the people? Would be chaotic. Oh, oh, okay. oh, you mean the no, city? No, the city. The city doesn't want yeah. us down there. Right. Not, not, not the, because the, they hate us, you know. Um, it's because it would, it would probably be chaotic. And I don't know if they're ready for that. Right. You know, done properly. But what, what better example than you guys for... The kids and the youth in Southgate. I'm just waiting for them to call him for the Christmas Day float where he goes down the street in a whip and, you know, <laughs> does the, you know what I'm saying? The paper wave? Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. Right. Did you guys ever feel at any point that you weren't doing, like, you weren't a part of hip-hop anymore? Because this is the one thing that I think about that's ill about Cypress Hill, is that regardless of how many, like, if you went into the rock realm or whatever... It felt like you guys always kept it hip hop, a hundred percent hip hop, no matter where you guys ventured off into whatever festivals, whatever realm, and it, and it shows with also the people you collaborated with. Like as you kept moving forward, the Cypress, I mean the 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 Wu Tangs, the, the the Fuji joint, which mind you, the Fuji joint in a whole other realm. That's a whole other conversation because of the Haitian Cuban thing, right. which in Miami it, it was a big deal for us, right? You know, but it feels like. You've always kept it hip hop, regardless of where you guys ventured off into. That's our roots, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think others thought we were venturing away and trying to do something different, but we were just being, you know, creative and experimental. You know, the the hybrid shit with the rock stuff that happened on Skull and Bones. I mean, you know, we had done a lot of a lot of rap songs, a lot of hip hop songs. You know what I mean? I think we were. What at thirty deep or some shit, right? That's like the fifth album, I think. Yeah, is that that's what you're talking about? Like the, the yeah. fifth album when we started yeah. adding the rock, it was like the right, fifth album. Right, right. Yeah, and and it it was because we were ahead of schedule and we had so many fucking hip hop songs and Send Dog was sort of into the that that scene at that point. Mug said, "Hey, let we're gonna do some different shit right here and add this sort of feel." And so you know, like we always do. We threw caution to the fucking wind and just started 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 experimenting with the shit and uh, you know because we knew we had a base of fans that fucked with that right you know what I mean they they weren't necessarily hip hop fans because all through our shit we'd go on tour and motherfuckers would come up hey I don't necessarily his listen to hip hop but I fuck with you guys right and so you know we knew we had fans out there like that. So, you know, we said, well, let's take a chance. Send Dog likes this sort of direction. Fuck it. We're going to go. And uh, that sort of became the thing for a second. And we even, you know, to, to, to double stack on that, you know, we brought a band out on, on tour with us. You know, we created our band and, you know, put them back there and played some of the songs that we created for Skull and Bones that were like, you know, the hybrid shit. And uh, people accepted it. They, I mean, fuck, people were going nuts for that shit. I mean, like the Beastie Boys would flip between instruments and go you know, into their like, shit. Yeah, and it's like 10 years of rocking shit, rocking shows. It's right. like, okay, right. we, we want some new shit to do live. We're going to keep doing what we do, but then the show's going to flip with the band. You know what I mean? So it kept, it kept live fun, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You guys all live in the same apartment at one point? Well, you know, Muggs lived in these apartments on on Kingsley mm -hmm. in Hollywood and most of the fucking uh, what's the, the fucking syndicate were up in, in this apartment building right. right and so that's where we would always be at Muggs' spot cause 
He did Buster Rhymes live in this complex too? No. Nah. Oh, like, okay. I heard Dave something about Funk and Klein, um, Whip Whip, 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 Whip. You said Cindy, you mean Rhyme Cindy Cast? Oh, okay, yeah. Ice T's crew. Yeah, like, Lasha K. Okay, okay. Like, Grandmaster Cast. Grandmaster, like everybody. Wow, Grandmaster a lot of people live in this building. Yeah, Grandmaster. It was cheap. It was like eight hundred dollars for like a two bedroom. <laughs> Yeah, wow. a, lot, a lot of the guys that, 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 that I mean, there's some hood spots in Hollywood. A lot of the guys are hood. A lot of the guys that were in a lot of the guys that were in Rhyme Syndicate, they lived in this particular apartment. Which building. Everlast was a part of Rhyme Syndicate right. as well, right? He didn't necessarily live there. He lived in the valley at this point, but you know, guys like Muggs and Aladdin lived together in this building. Um, yeah, from low profile, building, bro. so we knew we knew Dub C before you know Aladdin from NWA. No, Aladdin. He he was uh, from a group called Low Profile with okay, WC. Okay. So we'd be and in my apartment. Right. He'd be with WC and Coolio and yeah. Aladdin, and then me. What a crazy ass all, apartment all complex. Yeah. It, There'd be no furniture. There was like milk crates. The TV was on the milk crate. And what was crazy? Popcorn. It, that was it. And what was crazy is all the motherfuckers that, that he would bring records back to to us to listen to. You know, like the old school crews. They, some of them were living in this fucking apartment complex, like Cass. Oh, the records he's bringing to y'all. Yes, like Cass, like right. Prince Whip a Whip, and fucking you know guys like that, and um, they were all in this fucking apartment building, and you know we were fucking just all like a little community right there. Yeah, we're man. taking game from like the likes of Cass though, because that's ill. That to have someone like Cass. Well, he was around, you know what I'm saying? But like you know, it was just the folks we were around, like some of the guys that like we were. Was listening to their shit and right and, just to see that around, yeah, you guys, just right. to see that around, and, you know, because a lot of those dudes from the East Coast at that time, the old school cats moved over here to get down with Ice T because he was creating the Rhyme Syndicate and right. he was embracing a lot of those mm. old school cats. And Shout put, out to Ice T, yeah, man. and uh, you know, a lot of them embraced us. They embraced Mugs first, mm -hmm. then eventually myself and Send Dog, and and you know, so salute to them, motherfuckers, man. You know, um, that was like. They were the first real click in Los Angeles. Rhyme Syndicate. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's like 88. You know what I mean? Like 88 out here. Wow. Yeah, Rhyme Syndicate. They were like the real first click. We go Ice-T, that's the homie. Yeah, oh, Ice-T, yeah. yeah. That yeah that's, little, that's the godfather. Yeah. Um, um, we have Wack on here, and Wack said that Ice-T is originally from New Jersey. Did, did, right? He might have been born there, yeah, right. but like, you know, that's he's... True. That's true. No, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, no, no, that, it no, is true. That, I heard that before. Yeah. No, no, it, it, that's a fact. You know, he was born there, much like Bobo was born in fucking Hollis. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. But, you know, where you're raised, right. that's yeah. a different Come deal. Come on, man, I'm raised in Miami. Yeah. Born in L.A. Yeah, that, 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 that's kind of where you're from, you know what right. I mean? Right. That's where you at. Right. Now, um, in 1992, the Billboard Awards, I believe you guys won an award, and then you said legalize it. Yeah. 1992. What year is this right now? 2022. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. It's still not officially legalized. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we made some fucking gains. You know yes. what I mean? We made some strides. <laughs> There's 37 states that have legal is it legal cannabis or medicinal cannabis. And that's a big step for. And when you say medicinal, we you talk about medical use. Yes. Okay. Continue. It's and, decriminalizing on a lot of levels. Yeah, so. and it's decriminalized right. in a lot of these places. Um, yeah, you know, we're still working towards federal, and it's, you know, maybe within the next five, ten years, but it's going in that direction. Right. And, you know, if you ask us, does that happen? Like, if you ask us in 91, hey, does this happen? You know, we might say, yeah, we're working towards that. We, you know, you don't know the fucking future, but we know what we're working towards. Right. You know what I'm saying? We know the possibilities. We were looking at places like what, you know, how Amsterdam was going down. Mm. And we're like, that. well, that's possible for us here. I'm sorry to cut you off for one second, but let me let you know how bad the weed laws used to be. I, I, one time I was sitting on my block. Police drives by on the other side of the street. I'm smoking. He makes the U-turn. As he's starting to make the U-turn, I throw the bud. There's no way he can find it. And he arrested me. Mm. For seeing me smoke. He never found the joint. Just saw you. Just saw me and smelt it. I had <laughs> nothing on me. I went through the system in New York. And then for me to be walking down there now, just smoking, I'm like, well, I want my charges back. Yeah. <laughs> I want them to drop my shit. They need to do that. Drop it. They, they need, need to, to do that. Yes. Yeah. But that's... I know, they, I know they were supposed to do that here, right? In Florida. 
do what? A drop like charges when they I mean, change they, the laws here. I right? don't know. I think it, uh, they the, probably didn't yet. I don't think they're going to do that yet. Oh, the, man. The medic- they need to go past medicinal for that yeah. to happen. Well, you know, hey. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but that needs to, to happen to, nationally. The people can work toward that shit because really yeah. that's where it comes from. It doesn't come from fucking them right. because they got votes to fucking worry about. And like if someone's too progressive, you might not get those fucking votes that you traditionally need, right? So... Mm-hmm. It's it's up to the people to go make this a thing, like like always. The well, real change happens from the people. That's a good thing about I think, and I don't even smoke, but I think that's a good thing about cannabis is that I think it, it crosses all those party lines. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it could change. The laws could change because of that. You know what I'm saying? Easily. Now is that the green thumb all of y'all's thing? Or? It's it's me. It's you by yeah. yourself, and yeah. you got your own strand too. Or are you thinking about doing something like that? I I've, I've done things here and there. You know what I mean? But I. I have a a brand, whatever, but it's not a. I feel like you should come it, out with your own mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I was, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Mushrooms aren't legal. Mushrooms, know, are they? Yeah, mushrooms is legal in, in Colorado for sure. They are. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. oh, you need to come out with your own shrooms. Since that last time, I haven't done any. Central. <laughs> you don't have to do it. To just come yeah. out with yeah. it. That story yeah. goes. You can sell it forever. Yeah. Story, yeah. Yeah. No. The we, he has the B has the Dr. Green Thumb right. stores. And and I have a, a thing called Hill House. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, as as far as I, I, I'm Hill not House, a, that's flower. What is that? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but it's not like the he had the Dr. Green thing is like a how many stores do you have? Six. Wow. Um, you know, these oh, actual Dr. Green Thumb stores? Dispensaries. Yes, dispensaries, dispensaries in oh, California. Oh. Um, That's dope, man. You know, the thing is, we definitely want to do that with Cypress Hill. You know, we, right. it's always just very picky about what we do because you know we don't ever want to rush to do it wrong and stuff like that so you know there, there's been opportunities for us to do shit but like for us it's always like if it's going to be the the right thing not the right, right look the right thing and so you know one of the one of the goals is to eventually open up some stores under cypress hill as well as, you know, my green thumb stores right. that exist and stuff like that. Because realistically, Cypress Hill is the root of all of it. Right. If there's no Cypress Hill, there's no green thumb. Right, you know right, what I right. mean? So um, we, it's, it's something we definitely want to do in the future and shit. So, you know, that's on the agenda. What's your relationship with cookies? It. Oh, well, you know, Burn is, is my boy. You know, we've done albums together. We've done four projects together. So we, we sort of push each other's brand and stuff like that. He's got cookies. I got green thumb, and and uh, you know we celebrate each other. You know what I mean? And and we do this music together for the cannabis culture and, and for music. You know what I'm saying? But um, it, it's it's been it's been great working with them, man. The right. sessions are like you know just a great vibe. You know what I mean? And smoky as fuck. I mean, we smoke that studio the fuck <laughs> out. Right. Like, he burns the way I burn, you know what I mean? Like, we both smoke up, we'll match each other joint for joint. But it's about the work. Mm-hmm. It's not about the smoke. That shit is, you know, just a part of the vibe. It's about the work. Like, we get in there and we do, we do work. And, and uh, we got another one um, in the chamber that uh, Scott Storch produced. Oh, wow. They were about to, you know, pop off later on. Um, Burner and will um, yeah, produce, fully produced by Scott Storch. Fully produced by Scott Storch. In the past, you know, we used other producers, but for this one, you know, I sort of wanted to do what we do with, with Cypress and, mm. you know, lock in with one producer and, and, and make a sound. And Scott definitely did that. So, you know, when people hear it, they'll, you know, they'll feel it. So, it, you know, Burn and I, you know, that's my boy. So, salute to Big Burn. Oh, shit, big, big up Burner. So, Sam, what's, 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 your, what's, your fa- what's your part of the game that you can't live without? Like, the part of what? Part of the game that you can't live without. Like, like even when you left the group, like what was the part that you was missing? The stage, man. The stage. I, yeah. I, I knew you was going to say that for some reason. Yeah. And I, it all came down to one day I was, I saw them perform on a MTV or something. All right. They were like in Canada. All right. And uh, I, I, I was watching the whole shit at home. And from like when... When I saw that, I, I could almost smell the concert. So it was legit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what happened, yeah, yeah. for real. Yeah, yeah. Down, that actually went down, yeah. yeah. And I, that's when I knew, like, I had to have it back in my life. You know what I mean? Like, that had to be part of me. And I always knew that. I kind of felt like I always knew that. 
Um, but there's just that one time when it slaps you in the face that you should be out there. And then I think like a couple of days later, Muggs called me up. And I'm like, hey, Muggs, what's up, man? He's like, where you at? I'm like, he, goes, he said, uh, I'm on tour where you should be. <laughs> and that was like another mm. thing, like, okay. Mm. And then we went, we went around to fixing that whole thing and, and I got back into it and everything. And, you know, it was, it was on from there. But I mean, it's, sometimes you got to go through that bullshit to yeah, you, figure out what it is that you had to, yeah. you know, to regather 30, it all 30, back. 30 you know. motherfucking years, you know what I mean? She's right. going to go through some She's shit, crazy. you know what yeah. I mean? Hey. It's like a real organic family going through life, you know what I mean? And, and we're right here. Happens, yeah. We're right here, you know what I mean? Love you is up, love. Yeah. And, and then being in front of the, those type of crowds that we were in front of, I mean, that's fucking addicting. Because it's right. a lot of control at your fucking fingertips right there. Right. You're making the crowd move through your music and, and, and you see the impact happening. That's hard to let go of. That's why rappers never retire, especially right. they got right. when they got a good run popping off. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? You right. don't want to let that go because you know the control you have there. And uh, it's great <coughs> seeing it. There's no high or no feeling like that. Better than ripping a crowd. Yes. You tearing that shit down? Yes. You know what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we do this thing, right, um, at, at, at the end of our show, where we, we, we pay um, tribute and celebration to our homies, you know, House of Pain, right. with doing Jump Around at the end mm. at the show. Like, it, it's not our song, but fuck it. We, you know, it's in the family. It's Soul Assassins. You produced the record, right? Yeah. Which one? Uh, Jump Around. Yeah. Okay. Just, just, and, you know, so it's all in the family. So we, you, you know, what we do at the end is, is we save that for the fucking very end, and we make everybody get down to the ground like in a squat position, right? And then we pop it off. The horns come on, and then it goes, and you see everybody explode. And that's, you know, there's no feeling than say like I, 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 I felt what House of Pain felt when that fucking mm. song popped mm. off. Everywhere you hear it at every sporting event, it's the pop off at any given time. You could cover it at the mm. end of your show, mm. and motherfuckers, that'd be the highlight of the show. Cause guess what? That's my man right here, and Everlast created one of the greatest pop off songs of all time. I put that shit against anything. Yeah, because I've seen the result well, of it, and they could co-sign on this. I've done this shit on my solo shit. With Prophets of Rage and with Cypress, there is no bigger song to pop off on, right? So we get everybody. And think about you're seeing 70,000 to 100,000 to 150,000 people all squatted down. And when that shit pops off, boom, explosion, overpowering. Right. You know what I'm saying? Wow. It's, it's the craziest feeling. There's no high that you could get better than that. It's crazy. Salute to you, motherfucker, because you created that. Yeah. 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 Hold on, hold on. And real quick, though, I just want to say, like, and not real quick, real long, actually. Um, the the production, the the sound that that you brought, Mugs, to to Cypress and to everything you touched, Soul Assassins abroad, it changed so much in the game. I don't think it's acknowledged as much as it should be. You know what I'm saying you're you're one of the top tier hip hop producers of all time, right. and and I think it's it's amazing what you guys have done, man. What you've oh, done. Thank you, bro. I appreciate yeah. that. That's real talk. Let's make some noise. Guess what? Thank Go ahead, you. Papa. I was about to say, you're going to go topless? What? It's, it's, it's a little bit wet. Yeah. Yo, let me, let me, so, so let me ask Cheers, you. Bro. Cheers, bro. Um, if you could say something to your younger self, what would it be? Ah, uh, shit. That's a good one, man. Fuck. Uh, I would say, you know, believe in yourself and believe in your friends. Mm. That's fire. That's it? That's fire. Wow. Um, you know, don't be afraid to dream. You know, the dreams can come true. I, I remember being a little kid and, and making uh, like uh, these, these toys I had and these musicians. And I put all my army men out like they were the audience. And I just imagined like a big 
a big uh, you know field of people. And when Woodstock happened, I said that was that, that was that was it. So you know, believe in yourself, believe in your dreams. Wow. Well, you I, I, I would have thought of Ben, don't drink that mushroom tea. Oh. Oh. <laughs> don't the, drink the question it. was, what would you say to your younger self? If you got to meet your younger self, what would you say? Oh, just be patient, man. Mm -hmm. Just be patient, you know what I mean? And, and just stay focused and stay calm and, and don't get emotionally attached to any of this shit. And just stay calm and stay patient. Everything That's will fine. figure itself out. That's why. I'll <laughs> I would I would say to myself what what Send Dog's mom said to me was have faith, don't hope, have faith mm -hmm. in what we're doing and in yourself, and work towards it. Mm. So you know it would have been redundant, but that's what you know his mother told me. I would have told myself that shit. Mm. That's real. Let's make some noise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You say it too. What would you say to your younger self? Watch out now. <laughs> <laughs> I was quoted the Beat Nuts record. Man. Um, but um, I know this is a cliche type type of question. But did you ever think that hip hop would make it this far? <laughs> I always yes. knew for sure. Uh, yeah, since yeah. the moment I heard it, I knew that this was the next wave of rock and roll, whatever you want to call it. It was a new the culture. That took over the yeah, world. That's what yeah, I exactly. thought about. You said, and I because I, I, like them, like I was a skater. I was into punk rock. I was into counterculture music, like the, the scene. You had a mohawk? No, definitely okay. didn't have a mohawk. Um, <laughs> okay. And so when hip hop came on, that actually spoke more to me. All right. And it was counterculture right. as well. So that it, it, I felt right in line with that. And you said yeah. you knew it was going to be big from the beginning. Yeah, from the beginning. Right. From the time I heard uh, Blondie doing Rapture and, wow. and all that shit, I knew this was the next big when thing that was going to take like, over. There was music, but there was no hip hop. Then all of a sudden, there was a music called hip hop, and you're like, oh shit, what's that? And you're right. watching the shit, and you're like, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You're like, oh, that's that shit right there. Right. Right. Well, not everybody, like, this is the thing. We all didn't know it was hip hop. We were listening to rap music. We were just, yeah. And there was a point where I realized, holy shit, this is hip hop culture. Like, it was dawned on me that someone, another person, yo, this is what it is. You're already break dancing, you're already writing graffiti. You, you want DJ There's a culture And that shit Is what blew my mind About it Yeah I, I didn't know Where it was gonna go I just wanted to be Part of it You know that That's The passion was there From the minute I fucking heard it Cause I mean You know I, I was listening to A lot of different shit Before I knew hip What hip hop was You right. know what I mean And the minute I heard Run DMC I was like Oh uh. That shit right there uh. um, And then Rockbox from Run mm. DMC, most most definitely, that shit kind of flipped me right there. I was like, I fucks with this right here. That. Now let's talk about rap superstar. Yes, yes. you were on that. Oh, yeah. So let's get a salute hey. to Dory. Hey. 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 You remember the day you recorded that shit? Absolutely not. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> man, I saw the video. Yeah, but, I, but let me just say something. Um, very proud to be a part of that record. I definitely need my plaque. Yes, we got to come on. So yeah, you can order it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, listening to that today, you know, um, driving here, going through this discography after um, uh, watching the documentary, just just soaking up all the game. Well, and then I'm listening to the lyrics of Rap Superstar. And I'm like, whoa, this shit is relevant right now. Like, this shit is not an old, old record. Like, how the fuck did y'all think of that shit? Like, you know, it's living it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and what people's expectations and perceptions are outside of it, mm -hmm. right? You know, they think it's all gravy once you get a deal and, and mm -hmm. you know, you're rich and famous off the top, but they don't know the road to that if you should be lucky enough right. to get it. Right. And that was like, you know, us being in the game and, and absorbing all the positive and negative energy from it and us just being like, boom, this is what it is. You mm. know what I'm saying? And to be this, these mm -hmm. are the sacrifices that we make. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was a very real fucking song. You know, I, I think... Um, the, and, and, and salute to my man Muggs on this because, like, the way that I look at the, that song is like, it's it's like our cashmere. Like, mm. if, you're, if you're a rock fan... 
Led Zeppelin's Cashmere is a big fucking song for Led Zeppelin. It's like, you know, it's just so fucking different. Um, and that was our Cashmere as Cypress mm. Hill, rock superstar, because it was very much what we were living at the mm. time and just the fucking musical backdrop that he gave me to tell that story because I had that idea in my head for like a number of years, you know, mm. because we had been soaking up what this game really is and... All, all the shit and you know people's false perception of what it is to be in this in this business or rap star or a rock star yeah, or whatever. Much the same thing. And I held that idea for a long time until he came up with that beat that mm. became the fucking song. And I was like, this is it right here. And uh, you know, I did not know it would resonate the way that it did. I thought it would just be a great album song. It was a great idea, but I didn't know it would be one of our like so-called comeback joints. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, yeah, that 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 song was 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 huge. But I was telling people what the game is right. for us. Right. 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 It's, still, it's still the same game. Yeah. Like I, like I said, I was listening to it today. I listened to it the other day. I was like, damn, this shit is so relevant still right now. Like, like um, that shit is a, um, a, amazing. Um, and he had Eminem a part of it as yeah, well. Yeah, Eminem was on it. Mm. Um, Everlast was on one. Chino Moreno from uh, the Deftones was on the rock mm. version. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, you know, y'all blessed us, man. Right. And, and uh, you know, we was always like, Psh, these are our brothers for, right. you know, because y'all saw what the shit was. Right, right. And, um, you know, that meant everything to us mm. to have you on it, to right. have M on it, right. you know, and because everybody wanted M at, at that right. point, right? My only record I've ever been on with Eminem. Yeah. Is y'all records. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of two I've been on. <laughs> one of two. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, to have Everlast, who is our family, right. and, and Chino, who, you know, the right. Deftones, Tones, you know, we all mm -hmm. love the Deftones Tones and shit like that. So mm -hmm. to have. To have those four guys with us, you know, that that was everything. So right. salute to them. It, right. it, it's Because so, they gave their background on what the game soaked up from them. Right. And that was that was, that was was tight because that's what that song was about. But it's interesting to hear you say comeback record because, you know, us as fans or us as, you know, people that are observers, we never felt like you guys ever left anywhere. So why would you say? It's facts, yeah. Yeah. So why would you say come back? Right because here? the mentality is is you know when you're on a major label, mm -hmm. they're that's, always that's what it is the yeah. major label mentality. This me and him is, is the big guy. Yes, thing. they're always weighing your last shit against the shit right. you're doing right now. Big and, and better, bigger and better, bigger mm -hmm. and better. Right. Come on, baby, you can do mm -hmm. it. Let's go. Let's and, right. go. <laughs> and at the time, you know, like it had been a minute since we had dropped one, and you know, this is our fifth outing, and our fourth outing was okay, but it wasn't like like one, two, and three, you know, so they thought we were fucking done, kind of, but they still, you know, like Donnie Einer, salute to my man, he was mm. the chief up there, right. he had faith in us, and he had faith in mugs, and, you know, every now and then he would suggest shit that was helpful, and he would push our line, and he had that belief in us in, in this particular instant, because, mm. you know, we did the, all this dope hip-hop shit, and then we did this hybrid shit, which was cool, because it we were doing something no one else was doing at the time, right? And he saw it and, you know, some of his suggestions helped push that particular album and showing like that we never left. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because our mentality was we never left. What the fuck are y'all talking about? Right, but, right, you right. know, we were always the underdogs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like they, you know, like when motherfuckers talked about us, it was like, well, I don't know, because, you know, we were representing cannabis, and it was just slightly different, right. and, uh, you know, we were out to prove everybody fucking wrong. Right. Let's make some noise for that guy. <laughs> Mark, have you ever felt out of love with the game? Oh, yeah, you know, there was a few years where I got, just start handling my other businesses, you know what I mean? Right whatever they are, just doing that shit and having, like, a passion for other things at the time. But the, the game was right there, but, like, the levels of the energy that I want to give to the game, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. versus what I'm going to get out, like, th th those have switched up throughout the years. Is, is it the business that, when, once you start it's learning the, the it's business? The, it's the business side, you know what I mean? For the creativity side and kicking with the homies and making music and having a good time, that's always, always fun. But that yeah. other shit, after a while, you know, sometimes you just want to leave that shit, just get that part of the world out of your life. Right, because we heard like Pete Rock just say that he did an album 22 years ago, 
and still haven't got paid on certain things. Is this something mm. that you experienced as a, as a producer? No, I haven't had that that uh, that problem. But um, you know, just other other things. You know what I mean? It's just it, I think it becomes like when you're young, you're trying to figure out the balance of your success and your family and like and everything. You're right. Trying to fig- figure, figure all the balance of everything right. out. You know, make everything work, feed everything, give it some sunshine, some love. You know what I mean? Water it and. Then, um, you figure it out and you're like, all right, cool. But through 30 years, you know, you can have a few years here and there where you, I'm going to get into, I'm going to paintball for three years, you know what right. I mean? I'm going <laughs> to stay, stay in the studio for five years and not go tour with them. Right, right, right. right. You know, I'm going to go you pick f- it and do some punk rock for a few uh, years. So. That's where the yeah, balance starts. But, but it's a real natural life, you know what I mean? Right. Like, we've known each other so long, we just let everybody flow and go through go through life, life's just fucking changes, you know what I mean? Fig- figure that shit out and shit, so we're still right here. How about you? You ever fall out of love with the game Boricua? Um, I did for a minute uh, when my father passed. You know, oh, it was a big, it was a big blow, and I had a lot of, you know, pressure because of what my father had accomplished and trying to keep that legacy going on, and almost having a little bit of self doubt if I can I can do this and continue on, and how am I going to make my own way. So uh, I had to go, I, I took a break. I, I went to school, um, studied there, and but something was always calling me back. And when I did leave school, my mom said, well, you leaving school, you got, a, you got a year. You got a year to get your shit together or else you're gonna have to go back to school. And within that year, my whole life changed and music, you know, Got got me back in. That's when I started out with the BC Boys. It's, I met I met the guys here, and you know I knew that you know this is what I was supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. you know. But it's very easy to get you know uh, a little nervous about you know the future when you're unsure about you know where you got to go in your life, and sometimes you do have to take a break and reevaluate and reset, you know. But I'm glad that I didn't stop. We glad you didn't stop neither, brother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and have you ever, but, but besides, you know, you you know, leaving the group, if it hasn't been a time prior to that where you felt like, fuck this business, fuck this game. Don, nah, never prior to that, or, or never, after. never at all during, except during that point. Okay. When I, you know, the source was talking shit about us and, you know, trying Force to magazine. Cl- yeah, trying okay. to clown us and. In their articles and this and that. Really? I don't know if you remember that shit. Yeah, of course I they remember. They were talking that. shit, you know, and I kind of just <laughs> felt like, is this what I worked, you know, all mm. my, my ass off for so this motherfucker could talk shit about us or whatever? Uh. And I kind of just like, uh, around that same time, I, I kind of like turned off from, you know, the, the business of hip hop right. and looked to somewhere else to get that, that freedom and creativity out. Mm-hmm. And uh, I definitely felt that, that that part of me that wasn't in love with hip-hop at that point. Right. But luckily, I was able to find it again, you know what I mean? And, uh, and, and, and attach myself to it again and, and come strong with it. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's nothing that once you love something, like, you know, hip-hop, you just can't just turn your back right. on it. Right. And even if you do forever, you're going to have that regret. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I didn't want that regret. Right. You know what I mean? I didn't want right. to. What if I would have stood with these dudes or some shit right. like that? I, you know, it was very important to come back to it and and recenter myself and and refocus myself and go strong as strong as that I can. That you know that I could you know go you know go hard hardcore with these dudes again. Do you mess with the internet? Uh, here and there. <laughs> right. So you don't you don't mess with Twitter? No Instagram? Twitter? Yeah. Twitter? No, I don't fuck with Twitter. I have a uh, S E N D O G send dog with the blue check by that motherfucker. That's Instagram. That's no, that's the real. That's the real. Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Yeah, and there's send dog or Cypress Hill on Facebook. Right. And uh, that's as deep as I go. I ain't. Yeah. That I mean, I still rely on uh, you know, your your own persona, right. you know, being bigger than life type of thing. Right. No matter what the Instagram does, whatever. And I know what it's worth. Don't, right. don't think I'm stupid or ignorant. Right. Right. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is? Because um, I think a lot of us um, didn't adapt that, that that way of life. Because yeah. I hear you saying that, you know, the source was talking shit about you. And then that's what's crazy is the internet makes me... <laughs> 
It's terrible to say. The internet makes me like adapted to say someone's one person gonna say something bad. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, but that was now, now these days, yeah. 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 I'm talking about that. Right. 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 You, the, I talk about that. You know, the the sources voice their opinion. Okay, right. I'm a young buck, 27 year old in the game, right. and all that for a long time all we had was glorification of the Cypress Hill group, right? Right. right. And when our second album came out. They didn't feel that way, right. kind of. Right. Well, you know right. what I mean? And they there voiced their opinion and they so. said it. And I kind of felt like upon myself like to talk shit back. Well, there was and, a reason for this, right? Um, I mean, we were all, you know, kind of friends with uh, James Bernard, who was senior editor at The Source, right? And, and uh, he came and did the first interview with Cypress on the Cypress block. Right. And we were cool with them, all good. You know what I mean? Like, they celebrated us on the first album, and then Black Sunday, they gave us a great review and the whole shit. But then the very next, um, the very next write-up was, you know, it was negative. And the reason was we were at an MTV party and uh, or an MTV after party for a, a MTV Awards when we used to go, right? And, uh, you know, we're sitting there shooting shit with everybody that, that we recognize and that recognize us. You know how it goes, right? right? right. And so I'm having a conversation with uh, James Bernard about, like, the TLC cover. Mm. And, you know, I was like, well, you know, like, you're... Because you, there was... I don't know if you know. I, of course you know. And I know you know. But there was, like, a, a criteria that had to be... To get a source cover. To get a source yeah. cover. Yeah, 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 of course. And they didn't meet the criteria at the time. And I expressed that to him. And as I expressed that to him, Joe the Butcher, who, you know, of one of the owners of Rough House Records, who was... Yeah, I just yeah. seen that. He, well, yeah. In the documentary, you've seen y'all's documentary, yeah, he, right? Well, yeah, he was the one that got, you know, that signed us. He knew Muggs. Right, you know, okay. He kind of interrupts in that conversation unknowing of what the conversation was. He was like, yo, B, I got to talk to you about something real quick and I said yo James let's <laughs> let's pick Table this up at a different right. time right. and he took it personal that like he didn't get his rebuttal on right. you know at that point like as to why T but he didn't have to fucking explain to me I was just giving him an opinion like you right. know cause they held they held our shit so close like we only got but one cover and we met the criteria times 10 right you know what I mean right. but we never really complained about anything we just he asked me an opinion. I gave it to him. He didn't like it. So then everything else that came after that was all negative about Cypress Hill. So then we said, well, fuck the source then. And we started burning that shit, oh, shit. <laughs> on stage, you know, like going at him. You in know what England. I mean? Everywhere. everywhere. Not, 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 not just it. England. Everywhere. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and, and it, it made people go crazy when we did that. And so, salute to the source because we, you know, we... Squashed our shit since then, but it started with James Bernard, in my opinion, of that TLC cover. And TLC are legends, yeah. you know, and salute and respect to them. But yeah. he was asking me my opinion about that, and right. I gave him a At real one. At that time point. Because, because again, people can't understand that, that time point. Right, we were purists. Because you can't yeah. see TLC later. Yes. And you got to see that specific moment. Right, we were purists. Had to be hardcore right. hip hop on the source cover. That's who we were yeah, he was time. like we asked him one time can we get on the cover of the source he's like no it has to be a second album and then all of a sudden TLC was on there on their first album uh, see, you know what I mean and we, he was like right. yo what's up with that shit right yeah and, and I just like, again come on, bro. my name can't be be real if I'm not being one fucking thousand and I was uh -huh. one thousand with him and he didn't like that and so the campaign against us begun hence the shit talking that Send Dog was talking about cause they were celebrating the fuck out of us before then Right. After that, nah, fuck Cypress Hill, they fuck Soul Assassins. Where, where they told Send Dog, they said, next time you burn a source on stage, watch out you don't burn your green card. Ooh. And they wrote that shit in the source. Remember that shit? And we kept burning them. Show now. <laughs> and we kept burning them. I remember that. Wow. <laughs> we kept burning them. Wow. But again, you know, eventually, you know, we sat down with Dave Mays, salute to Dave Mays. Salute and, to Dave, Dave Mays. And we squashed that shit out. Because, I mean, it was, you know, <laughs> sorry. It was over nothing, you know what I mean? Right. It was like, you know, over an opinion. And, you know, at the time, James Bernard, and he jumped ship to XXL magazine after a while. So, and then we had beef with them. 
Because <laughs> Wait, he, the fuck? We're double <laughs> yeah. because he, jumped over, he jumped over and took the beef we had with him over there. The writers, oh, the writers okay. used to think like they was gangster writing articles about you. You know right. what I mean? Like, right. uh, like motherfucker, like beef, just man. write about what the fuck we do and shut the fuck up. Wow. <laughs> wow. We forgive you, James Bernard. Yeah. We forgive you. You know what's fucked up about them is was like. You go write an article in like January, and the shit won't come out till like March. And you oh, guys yeah, gonna yeah. fucking you squash, squash the beef. You guys gonna <laughs> mad yeah, at him? Yeah. Yeah. You see, you see what the fuck he was talking about. You're like, oh, I want to fuck him up now. Like, like, like it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Um, that's why I asked you about the internet because the internet. I remember, you know, I remember literally when my uh my 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 first solo album, second group, a uh, second album, but my first solo album, and. We would drop it, and I had to literally go to these countries. Like we, they couldn't send the records. Like I had to go there, I had to go to yeah. London perform. I had to go, and then right now you can just send this shit to Japan. It's just in Japan, like nothing. This. Yeah. But like, 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 is, is streaming something you guys? And I know you guys did the Napster thing. Is streaming something that you embracing, or you, you know? have to embrace? I think every kind of technology right. that comes along, you know, yeah. you, you know, the road of your adventure, mm. and. If, I mean, if you don't, then that's just a certain amount of numbers that you're going to lose, in my opinion. You get with it. Yeah, <laughs> right, you have to right. get whatever they change. However the game changes, a certain amount of you have to change with it and go with that new certain platform. All right. You know what I mean? Because that's just the new platform and it's just how it goes. And you adapt with the times or you don't. Right. You know, if you adapt with the times, I think you live on longer than if you don't adapt with what's going on technology-wise. Yeah, I mean, you know, and you got to look at it as it's a broader platform. It could get out to to bigger numbers there. instantly too. Yeah, if you know, if it goes yeah. quote unquote viral, right? You know what I'm saying? But it depends on the work you put into it and how you promote it and how you market the shit and like how much you how hard you go to get it out there. Because we've done live streams. I mean, I've I've been doing that shit for you know 12 years now. Mm. Like with my Be Real TV platform And mm. I realized that 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 was like a platform Because I used right. to do radio in Los Angeles Bobo and myself And we realized having a platform is everything right. You know, so, you know If you wanted to do performances If you wanted to market your new shit or whatever mm. Creating a platform is everything So, you know If you have it at your fingertips, you do it And we've tried to utilize it in every aspect the internet possible. We talk about. Yeah, 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 you know, because realistically, you know, that's the one way you get out to everybody. Right. And, you know, like, so, for instance, with the pandemic, right? Yeah, um, that's crazy. I we, to ask you. we were all shut down at that point. We weren't doing any live shows at, at this point, like getting in front of people, but we were fortunate enough to be still doing shit and be busy well, that was happening via these streams, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because we would put out live stream performances or, you know, things like that. And uh, so it could be your friend if you if you use right. it right. right. Um, so, you know, we've, we've always tried to, like, utilize the, the tools that, that we have in front of us. So that's definitely one of them. Right. Now, both of you, Sin and Be Real, y'all both got, like, very unique voices. Like... There's no, like, when I hear your voice, I know that's you. When I hear your voice, I know that's you. There's not a lot of people who have distinct voices like that. Who's someone who's, both of you guys, who's someone that has a unique voice that you guys are fans of? Chuck D. Mm. That's a good one. Chuck D's unique. Okay. Rakim. Okay. Unique. Ad Rock. Mm-hmm. Mm. Unique. Q-Tip. Mm. Q-Tip's a good one. Unique. Buster Rhymes, mm. unique. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like these these guys got voices that cut through anything, right? And and so you know we wanted we wanted that for us, so we developed our shit. Like my rap voice wasn't what it what it was on records before we figured it out, right? You know what I mean? It, it was very, <laughs> it was fucking whack, to be honest with what, you. What, your voice? <clears throat> yes, my... Get the fuck out of my, it's like, Just like the young demos, you know what yeah. I mean? That's okay. what I was trying to figure it out, what the fuck we doing. Right. And then I, and then I figured out my voice from, a re, from again, a Ram LZ record. Mm. Ram LZ used to pitch his voice. He'd, you know, start off with the low tone, and then he'd flip to a fucking high tone out of nowhere randomly in a, in a rap song. And that's what gave me the idea to do my shit like that because my, my voice wasn't cutting through. 
and we all knew at that point, you know, like Send Dog, I mean, Send Dog, Mugs, and myself, this is before Bobo, we knew that, like, got to be distinct and it's got to cut through. So me pitching my voice was an idea I had to, you know, f- f- to cut through because my voice, my writing was good, but my voice was just not there. And mm. when that happened, it became a little bit more interesting and the songs became a little bit more interesting and they had more color in it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, having, you know, a distinct voice is, I mean, you know, like where you recognize it off the top. Oh, that's like Jay Z. Right. Distinct voice. Yours. You wanted to be distinguished, yeah. right? But there's, there's people who, who, who bit Jay Z. Yeah, but like, they can't sound like him. Just okay, like people I, yeah, can't yeah. sound like you. You can't be the right, original, right? right. Yeah. yeah, it's true. It's true. It's like true. there's been many motherfuckers trying to sound like Busta. And sound like you too. Uh, they come close. Who's somebody you like? Um, um, a voice tones. Uh, uh, King DMC. Wow. From the Hollis Crew. Oh. You know what I mean? Wow. That's one of the dudes. One of my original, like dudes that I look up to as like a, because he wasn't on. He wasn't even the primary rhymer on all the stuff. Right. He was a secondary rhymer, right. and I respect that kind of shit. Right. You know what I mean? So I looked at him as a, as a like a. Like a inspiration, and then also Say G from Ultra Magnetic. Mm. Am I taking you back now? Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Ultra. I was always Cool Keith come up and, with, and the, with the lyrical I mean, danger ass shit, and Ultra. then Say G come up. Uh, you know what I mean? And and follow that up with a with a certain punch, and that always impressed me. You know what I mean? It wasn't always the, you know, the it, it, it's all production thing. Like so. The primary dude is, is all good and great, but I want to hear what the next guy coming, how he's going to add to the song right. and how he's going to uplift it and, this thing, and that kind of thing. And then, uh, you know, Muggs picked up on that as I was doing the whole, you know, kill a man shit. Right. And he's like, let's elevate That's that classic. to make that, That's let's make that a more of a prominent secondary role. Uh. You know what I mean? So that's the kind of dudes that I would look up to. It wasn't always the primary cat. Right. It was, you know, sometimes I would look at the, the you know, like a, the second dude or even sometimes even the third dude, right. you know what I mean? And I would find inspiration in that kind of thing. Right. That's, that's, that's crazy. Like Lost, Lost Boys was Freaky Ty, right? right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's all like, about the, yeah. what you layer it with. The right. state. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. But then, you needed that. Like that wasn't something that you could go without. That, that added right. to what the group was. Like even Flav, like even Flav, like no, like, you can't, like, have, you like, can't yeah. public enemy without Flav. No, also, like Eric true, Sermon, true, indeed. Shit. Also, yeah. like Eric Sermon. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Eric Sermon's voice was very oh, distinct. Oh, voice, okay, yes. of course, of okay. course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he had that slight lisp. I mean, you know, what was that? <laughs> like the EPMD shit. That was like we had major run with that shit. Like right. that and PE was always in the system, and, and you know, like. Eric Sermon's voice always cut through, it's in a, just in a different way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And, and um, that, that in hip hop at that point, that's what you needed—that distinction and your own sound. That's what we was listening to, like '89. That's right. Was yeah. PMD, Public Enemy, Ultra Magnetic. You had to be mad different than anything yeah, that was out there. It wasn't just needed; it, it was a must. Yeah, that was you a requirement. You had to be creatively different from everybody else. Yeah, yeah. and, and I don't know that it's so, so much of yeah. a of a of a thing today. But back in our day, you know what I mean. That's no, how you, you could sound yeah. like a motherfucker. You couldn't sound like Ghostface. Like like you couldn't like sound so like, like Dre. You couldn't right. sound like Kim Wong. Five miles. Yeah, you had to come with your own original fucking sound. Yep. And that's what set you apart from the field. Right. It's yeah. That's the truth of it, though. Absolutely. You ever did a show where at a place where they they don't um allow to smoke marijuana? Yes. Where. Everywhere. Anywhere in Texas. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. There was no, like, when we started Dang smoking God. on stage, there was no order. Because yeah, you was getting arrested and shit like no, that. No, we right? were not. A word? I don't, l- listen, here's the thing. Either they had mad love for us and they gave us a pass, or right. they didn't think we had the audacity to be smoking real weed up on stage. Right. That had to be fake. You know right. what I'm saying? I don't know what it is. I can't answer it for them, but, like, we got away with it in places that you normally shouldn't. And wouldn't get away with it. We we were blessed. God right. blessed right. Right. the fuck right. out of us right. in right. some way that we got away with smoking in places that you don't or you're not supposed to. And the Bible Belt. 
Yeah, wow. most definitely. That, and that we took our crazy. chances. Wow. But I'll say this, for, for some for some spots they would warn us. And in those spots we were like, okay, cool. They would warn you? Yeah, some okay. like if you light up on stage, you're going to jail. Right. Yeah. They're waiting for you. Like back <laughs> in the day in Texas. Right. If they were fans, they'd come and warn us and you know, give us the heads up, like, hey listen, we're fans. But you can't smoke that shit on stage. Otherwise, we got to arrest you. And that's us doing our job. Right. Do what you want to do. But guess, you know, just know that we have to take you in if you fucking go. Right. So when they gave us the heads up. Yeah. We were inclined to be smart enough to listen to that advice. If they didn't tell us, we would just take it upon ourselves to right. be like, we're going to do this shit. And that's it. Because I feel like y'all and Snoop got like the ultimate smoke pass. weed anywhere pass. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Close, like, yeah, close. I feel, like, I, feel like, I feel like as soon as y'all check into the hotel, they're supposed to be like, Cypress Hill's here, let's fuck it. No, I'll tell you <laughs> what. I, do, I, do, I like, took a lot of fines oh. in my time in hotels because my room is church when it comes to smoking 250 weed. 250 a night. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's 250. Are you smoking almost, to get in there tomorrow, right? So 250 to be real room to smoke. Yes, my, okay. I'm, my, my room pretty is pretty much the, like my room. It's okay. the temple, it's the church. <laughs> so, right. you know, we blow my room up and I get the charges. But you smoking <laughs> inside or you going on the balcony? If we got a balcony, we go on the balcony. If not, we blow this not fucking room. Balconies these days. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! We cover in the smoke detector and we blowing that shit up. That's yeah. what we did with the first Snoop episode. We had yeah. to put the, the towels on the smoke detectors, yeah. take them out. Like shower cap, drugs. poppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shower yeah. cap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the weed that I mean, back in the days, you used to put you know a towel under the door and have some ozium spray. That shit don't work. Yeah, that shit don't work. Yeah, we predate yeah, ozium. Yeah, we yeah, predate yeah, that shit. Yeah, it's, 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 it's ozium don't I work. I got to no have me a balcony room. Got that yeah. cap on a smoke alarm. <laughs> yeah, that shit don't work. <laughs> no, that shit works, man. Holy moly, guacamole, man. Man, Jesus, man, this has been so great, man. Like I said, man, um, when we started this show, we wanted to give people. You know, they flowers, they they roses while they're alive. You know, so many people, you in this game Beautiful. 10 years, and they want to say, you know, you washed up. And it's like that word don't exist in any other genre of music but hip-hop. True It's that. like, and, and the thing is, we know this is a young man sport. We get it. We get it. We know this is a young it man is sport. It is. But it's also the OGs who taught us. We looked up to OGs, and now that we're the OGs, I don't want to just... Bow out like that. We still, this is still our game. You it's know a, what I'm it's a creative sport. Let's just say listen, that. Listen, yeah. Listen to the young, old, to the young boys coming up, and y- y'all on the radio. We give it to y'all. We love y'all, but you cannot take away from what we we mm, laid down. Never. Like, cause there'll never be another Cypress Hills. You know what I'm oh, saying? Absolutely. Like, like there'll never be another Cypress Hills. So I want to give y'all y'all love to y'all face. Well, th- well, thank you know what I'm you. saying? To y'all, you know, we love y'all for real. Like y'all open the door for not only. You know, not West Coast rap, you know, not only Latinos, but just for great music and music that you just want to just, 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 and, and all of you brothers, I know all of you brothers individually, all of you brothers are fucking great people. I just want to say that to your face, Thank you know you what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I gotta give you mine. Okay. I got you guys here. I mean, you stop my clap. Can we just clap? No, 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 Okay. Now, real talk though, it's crazy for me to be right here sitting yes. down with y'all. Absolutely, and I'm telling you this as a as a Cuban kid, born in LA, to Cuban exiles, raised in Southgate to a young age, and then moved to Miami and be a Cuban kid in Miami. Didn't understand being a Cuban kid in Miami because I'm an LA kid, and then y'all come out, and how important that was to someone like myself. You know what I'm saying? To understand, like, oh shit, there's roots there. There's something I can identify with, and I'm and I'm I'm already a hip hop head, and it, and it and it and it inspires me, and that might not get me here sitting down right now. Just letting you know that, and it's just so inspirational, man. I want to thank y'all. Y'all the biggest thing to me, and, and to a lot of my crazy hood crew that's here. Like we love y'all, man. Like y'all, hey, thank, you, us, thank, man. You. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Now you gotta make no, you exempt. So I just want to say this, right, to that, to that this is the young man's game shit, right? Mm-hmm. That's a narrative 
that is, you know, perpetuated by record companies and radio stations. Absolutely. And, that, and that's because both don't know how to reach out to the folks that grew up with this shit. They don't know how to market and promote to the to the folks that grew up with our shit who now are parents and they got mortgages and fucking leases or whatever the fucking bills to pay that they're not like tuned in to the Friday and Tuesday new music drops. Right. The, the record companies forget about them. They grew up with you and they're always fucking with you, but they're not as aware as they were when they were teens. News is dropping on Fridays now. Well, Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah, Tuesdays on our on our that was on, on our, our, on yeah, our yeah, calendar. Yeah, Fridays school, that we old school. Yeah, that was Fridays. Tuesdays and Fridays. Let's just say it like that, right? <laughs> okay, but Fridays, yeah, <laughs> right. So they don't know how to get to like the the people past thirty something into right. their fifties who mm. grew up with this music mm. who still fuck with it, right. Right. but they don't find it like they used to because mm. they got real life. Things that they're dealing with, as opposed to when you're a teen, mm -hmm. I'm waiting on this day mm -hmm. for the new shit, mm -hmm. right? Different responsibilities, right? And the, the record companies and the radio stations ain't geared towards finding them. Mm -hmm. They're like, this shit right here is what we've been doing, geared towards the teens. Right. How do you connect 50 year old, 30, 30 year old bands, 50 year old rappers, right. 30 year old bands to teens, like right. 18 to 34? How do you connect that? They don't got the formula. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of times groups in our time, we don't get rotation from these radio stations. You can go up there for the interview and all that shit, right. and they're going to play it that one time. And mm -hmm. when you leave, fuck you, mm -hmm. cool, it was good having them up here, but they're not rotating the record mm -hmm. because they don't know how to connect with that base. But guess what? It's out there. Right. It's out there because we who grew up to hip hop still listen to hip hop. New shit and old shit alike. It's just these motherfuckers ain't figured out how to connect that together. So this is a young man's game. That's bullshit. As long as you have it in you and you still have Absolutely. the passion, right. this is your game for as long as you want to fuck with it. Look at KRS-One and... Oh, yeah, it's a creative man's there game. There it is. Or woman. Right. right. So, you know, all that young man's game shit is a false narrative. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, I, I agree with you. Now, the mainstream industry is what we're talking about. That's right. the young man's game. Right, right. right. But, but that's it. But, the, but, that's but we've it. already, that's obsolete. That industry is obsolete. It's been obsolete. Yeah. When you guys did the Napster tour, it's the beginning of how that's obsolete. Right. They, they say it's two things you should never worship, money and youth, because they all come and go. True that. That was deep. That I got Facts. deep. You got real deep. deep on that. <laughs> fuck me up. That fuck me up right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit deep right there. <laughs> so, um, what's next? What's next? You know, new experiences. You know what I mean? Like. Musically, we're going to keep doing our thing, but we're trying to, you know, develop a new experience for people rather than just traditional albums. Because, I mean, you know, hey. It doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense anymore. So, you know, we've been talking about a different experience. So, you know, we're, we might do one last traditional album and then the rest is like... NFTs? Uh, who knows? What? Um, could be NFTs, could be immersive, it could be some just something different, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because, I mean, we've been in this game a long time, and, like, how do we stay interested, right? Mm -hmm. There's got to be, and we're always trying to be out of the box. Mm -hmm. So it's like challenging ourselves. What, what can we do different to give to people than this traditional album shit? But you know what's important is that you guys have the opportunity to take advantage of the investment you put into the fans... To, to be able to play with that right. world, that new world of that, how do we do this? Because the fans will follow you. Right. And that's an example that needs to be understood to anybody doing this in, in this industry. Like, yeah. you need to invest in your fans. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And I think that what you guys have done, you invested in yourselves. That's right. And, and you know, salute to our fans out there because they've held us up with new records and without. They've come to the shows and they've represented and they've been, you know, the ones who like hold us up, you know, when other motherfuckers count us out, you know right. what I mean? Our fans, who we do it for, you know, we're vessels of our creativity. Boom, it goes to the fans, they receive it and they hold us up. Mm. Now, why did you stop smoking blunts? You know, it was it was fucking with my voice a little bit. You know, we we had a run where we were doing a whole lot of Jack Daniels and blunts 
after Jack before Daniels before and before and after show. It's a winning combination. You <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. really have to try. It's a winning combination. Yeah. 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 We were the Jack Daniels crew, and wow. you know we were smoking blunts at the time. But every show, I was like fucking up. My voice would come back, and it'd be hoarse. And like doing the next show, my voice would get worse and worse and worse. And and partially it was the blunts and, and the fucking whiskey, you know. Mm. And I and I changed up a lot of shit to to keep my voice similar to what we do on the albums because like that always bothered me as a fan. Like if I went to see someone. And they, they're screaming all over the fucking place and they don't got no control and they don't sound shit like they do on the album. That bothers me. So right. I thought, like, if I was coming to see us, I want to hear me the way I am on the fucking album. So I, like, mm. tried to get control of that. Blunts was one of those things. And drinking the whiskey before the show was... I want to blame was, the whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> No, because I gotta blame. Blunt. I gotta blame the blunts you too. You gotta blame the blunts. Yeah, it's a combination no, of. I gotta blame the blunts. Right Rihanna now, is a singer, singer. Rihanna? Yes, she smokes blunts. Oh, I was like, she where does this come into play? Yeah, look, look, but, at, look at her. But, uh, uh, her shit is blunts. There's no joints. But singing is different. You're, 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 it is, it's different. You're, sus- on, you're yes, listen. Hold on, now. Uh, you, want, I you want me to break it down for you? I would like to hear the breakdown. Okay, so they're sustaining notes, right? They're sustaining notes, lesser phrase, right? In other words, lesser words in their phrases. Their verses are are they just in R and B are sh- one verse, one so word. So our sixteen bars for a rap verse is their eight bar. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Understand me? So, like when they do their shit, it's 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 not necessarily this, that it's less work. It's not. It's absolute work. They got to stay in key. They got to hold that pocket in what they do. But we are <laughs> rapping. 16 fucking bars. You know how many words are in 16 bars? Mm. And then the breath pockets within those fucking bars, it's slightly a little more difficult. Now, we don't got to necessarily stay in key the way singers mm. do, but yeah. we got to stay on that beat. And he got a great argument. And we got to keep yeah, and, and we got to <laughs> and we got to keep our tone because mm. like anyone can write a song and then like you know Put it out a certain way, but when you go performing, do you sound like that? Mm. And the blunts were Especially fucking working. Blunts, yes, yes, and blunts were working against that for me. It mm. kept on fucking cutting my voice, scratchy, you know, raspy. I was starting to sound like Busta Rhymes out there, dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, That's not the way I sound on yeah, yeah. records. No, so I'm gonna blame the whiskey, man. Both. <laughs> I gotta say both. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> So, take so, a shot to that. Yeah, take, take a, a shot. shot. All right, I'll take a shot to that. Fuck it. And what is that? That's beer? Okay. You put no, beer I'm in the cup? I'm no, no, I'm doing the other one. Oh, oh, yeah, this is beer. Okay, 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 okay. Holy shit, man. This is great. This Got is it. fucking great. And, and you know, no. <laughs> I fucking yeah. love this shit, man. I love this shit, man. I love this shit, man. I, I we love, are one. <laughs> yes, yes. I love, I love, um, you guys are always positive. Why you, why you even got a little bit of negative juice? Because oh, hey, the negativity uh, has never scarred me as as bad as some people would would think it has. I mean, since me and my brothers here, you know, we we built the thing up and it became successful. Um, it's kind of hard to be sour behind success. You know what I mean? You have to enjoy it, what you guys have built and what we've made with our lives and everything. And now. Our families, you know, get to live, you know, a good life behind us. So, I have no, mm. I have no fucking sarcasm or anything like that with the with shit that we have done, right. because there's no need for that. You know, we right. we get to make good money and tour around the world and mm. do what we love as teenagers. What we talked about, right, right, and then continue on forward. Mm. So, I don't, I don't really have like a negative side to this. Right. Past my my younger <laughs> self, mm-hmm. right. My adult self is completely fine. Right. I mean, I'll, I'll say this: ninety-six be real as opposed to twenty twenty-two be real. Two different <laughs> be real. They don't like each other. You think they no, like no, they, they they fucks with each other. But you know, <laughs> they kind of hang out sometimes. I, yeah, they they hung out a couple 96 times. Ninety-six be real in two thousand. Yeah, I was I was B-Real. pretty much mad at the world at that. I don't point. fuck with young and old. In ninety-six, I don't I, fuck I, with I, him. I don't answer yeah. his calls. Yeah. No, no. Like it, you know, we were working on temp- Temple of Boom at this time, and we were fucking mad at the world at that point. Like, you know, shit, people counted us out on the third record. Mm -hmm. They thought we was done, and, you know, 
shit with Sony was kind of weird and management was kind of weird. And that was kind of at the time where Send Dog sort of, you know, dipped for a minute. You know what I mean? And so it was it was a crazy time. And I was like, <laughs> Bobo could tell you, I was I was that guy. I, you know, asshole, asshole. Damn, <laughs> oh, you asshole. <laughs> with everybody, hey, with everybody, I could own that. Like not the fans, but mm-hmm. like you know, I, yeah, man. I was just like on some fuck everybody shit at that point. But, but I, not cocky, but just no, 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 okay. no, no, not just that. Tremendo yeah. como pinga. Yeah, you know, like because what the business is, you know, like when you get in, you don't know what the fuck it is. You're like, oh shit, I'm in. Right. And then as you learn what it is, and you learn it from turns some you off. Manage, managers, right. agents, fucking record company right. motherfuckers, and shit like that, and and just the game, and you know, it could fucking get to you in the in the. In the realm of like, you know, fuck this shit. This shit is fucking bullshit right it's here. It's fake, it's bullshit. It's, it's not yeah. what right, motherfuckers right, right. think it is. Hence, mm-hmm. rock superstar. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And in 96, I was like, man, fuck all that. And I was drinking a lot of whiskey at that point mm. and smoking the blunts. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just did not give a fuck at that point. And, you know, I... I it wasn't that I was terrible to people because I know I wasn't to fans, but like I was terrible in my fucking head. Mm. It was crazy, but we were doing well, better than a lot of motherfuckers thought. You know, with that Temple of Boom album, as is, is pissed off as I was in that time, that shit was well received. You know, when people thought we were gonna fucking fall off, we were playing that. Classic that album. We were playing that music on on Smoking Grooves tour and salute to Kara Lewis for putting us on that tour at the time. Um, we were playing that music before anybody had heard it, right. and this was not something that you did in hip hop when you were established. We were on that tour playing Temples of Boom music before anybody fucking heard it, mm. and the reaction that we were getting was fucking awesome right was it temple of boom right yes. it was temple of boom and you know that was that was satisfying to see people move into shit they didn't even know right but in that time we were fucking pissed off so the, or i was definitely so seeing the people embrace that shit and that be one of the favorite albums when i was so pissed off writing in that fucking time um that was that was satisfying because people connected to that album. You know, a lot of people when they come up to us, they say that's their favorite album, Temples of Boom. And that, was, and that was at my height of fuck everything. Mm. You know, but not out of cockiness, out of like, you know, tired of what, what the game actually was. Right. You guys been on plenty of labels. What what was the favorite label you guys ever worked with? Start with you, Mox. Oh, I think we was Cypress is on one label. Yeah, oh, really? pretty Columbia, much our, right? our whole first our whole first run. I think we put the last record out with us like a second label, but for the first fifteen years, I think it was just Columbia. Yeah, it, it was Columbia for sixteen. Columbia seven, Rough House, Rough House, Columbia. Columbia, Columbia yeah. Well, it was Rough House Columbia for okay. the first uh, four albums, and then I think when Rough House dissolved, we were just on Sony Columbia. Right. For that time, then we finished our contract, which a lot of Tommy Matolo at that time, or Tommy and Hanna? Tommy and Donnie, okay. both of them, and we we finished out our contract there, which a lot of motherfuckers don't do, mm. and we we uh, we did uh, one album on EMI, which was Rise Up. Snoop wanted to sign that, so we you know signed it with him. But he was president over there, right? Mm-hmm. And so we did that, and so and the next one was more like on on an independent <laughs> label, which was uh, Elephants on Nelson. <laughs> so three labels. Okay. Pretty much, but most of our career on Sony, Rough House, Sony Would Columbia. y'all pick Sony as your favorite? Oh, yeah. Okay. I would. Okay. I, you I, know. I respect that. Because realistically, they could have tried to mold us in, in, into what they thought we should be, but they allowed us to be us. You know what I mean? Sure, you know, they tried to make suggestions here and there, and, you know, Muggs would be like, yeah, that's cool for you. Right. <laughs> We're going to do this. Right. And, you know, he stood his ground on the creativity of it, and they allowed it. You know, they didn't try to, you know, twist was, our arm. Was Rough House a big part of that, yeah. though? Yeah, yeah, they were. Because they, they, they had a lot of dope groups yeah, I think signed had, to Rough House. Fuji, Chris, Nas, Chris right? and Joe were big advocates for us, you know, when it came to dealing with Sony. And, uh, you know, Joe was like, he got it, man. I mean, Joe and Chris, they both got it, and salute to them because... Realistically, you know, we we shopped the album around for a minute, and we were getting turned down by labels on the West Coast. 
uh, and we and we uh, we were talking to Funk and Klein, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Who was at the time with Hollywood Basic, and they were interested, but they kept asking for demo after demo. I think we gave them like six, seven demos. Oh, different uh, demos, like you, you yeah, 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 shit that didn't make the album, but right. you know they kept asking for more shit. And Roughhouse or Chris and Joe were like, "We're ready now. We'll fucking take it as it mm. is." And uh, Send Dog called that shot and said, "You know what? We're going with Joe and Chris." And, and they're in a Philly, like yeah, and they were they were Which a Philly based label. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and I really liked their their whole approach to 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 our group because there was like just do whatever you want, say whatever you want. That's I like dope. I have I felt like we had someone that was willing to like have our back no matter what he said on the mic or anything like that. Right. So I I really those those first couple of years that it was just Cypress and Roughhouse were, you know, a special time for me myself personally. Um Is there any plans of like starting Cypress Hills record company and you guys trying to go like find another Cypress Hills? It's always possible. I mean, Muggs is constantly on on the works. Yeah. You know what I mean through through Soul Assassins. Right. So you know, there's always diamonds in the rough out there, man. You right. know what I mean. We were that once upon a time, and uh, you know if you follow the direction of the producer. Right, fact, because yeah. some of us as rappers have tr like egos and be like, ah, who, like I'll just let, do uh, let me do me. Right. But if you follow the fucking direction, right, you might come up with something significant. I always followed the direction of mugs, mm. and 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 I, I learned through mugs to follow directions of other producers. Now, mm. if they're letting me paint the picture and going. On, at, at my pace Then sure I know how to take That shit over Because again I learned from this man Right here mm. You know what I'm saying And uh, You know So It's important You put your ego aside You know Because a lot of us Will love our own shit Like that Right But we learn not to do that early You know what I mean Like if Muggs Gave us this beat And We took that fucking beat home with us and fucking listened to it a thousand times. Send Dog and myself might fall in love with that shit. And then when Muggs changes something, we might be like, oh, man, why'd you change that? Mm. And then it creates a fucking dynamic that's there's tension and then chemistry's broken there. You know what I'm saying? Right. But if we give trust into Muggs saying, like, his name's on it, he's got the same the same want of it being fire as we do, he's not going to put his name on something that's whack or shit. Right. So mm. let's follow the direction and, and, and like create something special, you know? So I learned to do that with mugs and I did it with other producers if they had direction. If they didn't, I painted the canvas, you know what I'm saying? And I think an artist, if they're, if they're being 1000 with themselves, Follow the producer when the producer fucking mm. gives you a fucking direction. Right. You know, like that made it easy for me to be creative when he had an idea for something. I hear this. Okay. Mm. Let me paint that. Mm. That's dope. Right. You got something to add on to that? No, I think that was great. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let me ask y'all. Uh, Mount Westmore, right? Uh, I believe it's Ice Cube, Snoop, Too Short, And E40. E40, yeah. Right? They say they're doing an album, but then now they're saying that they're doing a tour. Right. Is there talks about including you guys in this tour? Not that I've heard of. Because that's what I heard. I heard that that... That, that would be cool as fuck, I could tell you, <laughs> yeah, you know, if what, we went on with that them. That would be dope. Those that's what I heard. I heard that they, they adding y'all exhibit. What? Oh, shit. Damn, Nori got the, the plug. You got the plug, son. <laughs> yeah. That's I, I, real. I, I, I swear to God. I, I think I, I, exclusive drink champs <laughs> right now. Exclusive. Yeah, that's, 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 what I, that's what I heard. Air horn. Air horn. Air horn. Is that something you guys be interested in? It's not a good air horn if it's not true. Because, no, I'm just saying. Let's just think like, about that. Mount Westmore, because all four of those guys can do their four set. Right, absolutely. But then, you know, That'd be amazing. That like all the West Coast, like uh, that, I think that would be just crazy. Yeah, I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah, me neither. I just, but, I, I read it somewhere. But I would, I would say that that would 
that would be a fucking enormous show. Right? And it would right. make sense. Yeah, because right. you be got Titans you. as that right. group right, right. there. Right. The, the Mount Westmore. I mean, everybody is everybody. And, you know, we fuck with all of them. You know, those are our right. brothers right there and shit. Right. So, you know, if we were called upon to play support right. for our bros, yeah, of course we would do that. If if that rumor is true, hey, right. celebrate it, cause let's yeah. let's make that let's make that rumor true, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I love about that? I love, I love uh, about you guys is I love OGs being OGs. Like I don't like when you know people you know try to copy the new si- sound, right. the new style. I like us being you know us acting our own age. Like you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. why I love That's what's up. this. I love right. this, and that we can be cool at the ages we at. Like I don't right. I don't gotta be you know. I don't gotta be two steps. Yeah. I don't gotta be doing that new dance. You see that new dance? What's the new word? Maybe Skywalker yeah. in it. All that shit. You don't touch the floor. Like, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. I know I can't do that. My, my knees is fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I'm glad I, you know, we have our own platforms. Big up to uh, Rock the Bells. Right. Also, uh, uh-huh. um, we, we, we could be ourselves. We don't have to, you know, try to cater to this That's new the generation. That's evolution of hip hop right now. You know what I'm right saying? Um, it, 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 I, I feel like we started it from Drink Chance, but you know, part what I'm saying? of it, definitely I'm a part, part of it. it. Um, and I just want to uh, salute y'all one more time, man. Hey, thank you guys you. are living legends, uh, and in a lot of ways, you know, uh, you paved the way for both of us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Us getting to see like you know, thank Latinos, you guys, man. Because because it was crazy, you know, me being born and raised in New York City. I only thought it was Puerto Ricans. Right. I didn't know they was like uh, I thought it was Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. I never even knew. I was like, what? Yeah. There's fucking Cubans and there's fucking uh, Mexicans. And then to see people on 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 TV on, on my video music box, and to see it, and and, and then and you know you guys spit in the you guys speak about Latin lingo, but um. Uh, I mean, you, you guys, you know, saying the Spanish, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, holy shit, this is ill, there's Latinos everywhere. And I had not known that, that, that was crazy. Y'all was like my geographical map back then. <laughs> like, 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 you know, I didn't know how to read a map, but I'm saying, I was like, wow, these people could be from over there, too. And, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like, we're not just in fucking Queens. He's like, 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 they could be over there. Like, they could be over there. Like, it was, it was, McDonald's. <laughs> I'm just saying, as a yeah. young kid, I was just like, yeah. I just thought it was my block. Like they, they literally called me Poppy because I was the only Latino there. Yeah, we, so yeah. I was, you know, it's, it's racist, by the way. Just be real. Yeah, that was a racist. Yeah. 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 Poppy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Where you at? <laughs> like, and, and then I realized, and I want to say that to y'all, you know, um, and I think we yesterday end on one more shot. But uh, let's do it. Yeah, let's, yeah, go. let's go. But I want to say to y'all, man, that was a big inspiration. Um, that was big motivation. It was. It's so it was dope. everything, man. It's it's so dope. And like, like I said, it wasn't. It's not only that, you know, for 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 me to look up to you guys, but me to meet you guys, and you guys be the same exact way. You guys be real as fuck. You guys be. You know what I'm saying? Like, like just always being uh, 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 the figure that I, I seen because I used to meet people that I used to look up to, and then I meet them. I'm like, ah, fuck, this guy's a prick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Guy, and you guys are really that. You guys are really. And you guys held it down together 30 years, man. You know what I'm saying? That's something to really be proud of. That's something to really, and we want to salute you. We want to give you our flowers. Please, yeah. And we got your shirt. We got your shirt. My, my yeah, wife got that. your shirt too. Yeah, yeah. every one of y'all got a shirt. All you know, right. from the Juicy Juice Ball. But listen, I want to tell y'all, man, thank y'all for what y'all did. Thank y'all for what y'all sacrificed. Thank y'all for leading yeah, the way. Thank y'all for being leaders. Thank y'all for motherfucking being who the fuck y'all are. And, you know, one time for your mind, two time for your soul. Like my man, you know, motherfucking FC Shan said. Thank you, Shan. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, motherfucking Shan. Thank you, 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 Shan.